Boston Opera House, a place of magnificence, where art and history meld into one. Its ornate architecture is a testament to bygone eras, and its walls have witnessed countless tales of passion, tragedy, and triumph. But there's one story that remains largely untold, hidden amidst the applause and standing ovations. It began on a night like any other. I was attending a performance of Swan Lake, a favorite of mine. As the ballet progressed, I became entranced by a dancer who wasn't listed in the program. Her movements were graceful, transcending the bounds of the stage, almost ethereal. Every pirouette and leap seemed to defy gravity. During the intermission, I inquired about her, but to my surprise, no one else seemed to have noticed her. They attributed my query to being captivated by the main performers, but I was certain of what I had seen. The ballet resumed, but she was nowhere in sight. That was until the final act. As the curtain slowly descended, she appeared at the edge of the stage, bathed in a single spotlight, dancing a melancholic solo. As her dance reached its climax, she vanished, leaving only echoing silence behind. Intrigued, I decided to delve into the history of the opera house. Buried in the archives, I found a tragic story from the 1920s. Lillian, a prodigious ballerina, was set to debut her solo performance. But on the eve of her premiere, she mysteriously vanished, never to be seen again. The lore goes that on some nights, when the moon is just right and the stars align, Lillian returns to the stage she never got to grace, dancing her heart out for an audience she never had. Returning to the opera house weeks later, I managed to find an elderly usher who had been working there for decades. When I mentioned Lillian, his eyes clouded with a mix of fear and sadness. He whispered to me that over the years, select attendees, especially those deeply passionate about ballet, have reported seeing a mysterious dancer, always during Swan Lake, always dancing a solo during the curtain call. Lillian's spirit, it seems, is forever intertwined with the opera house, her passion and dedication transcending time. She remains a silent testament to the artists of yesteryear, a reminder that art, in its purest form, is eternal. Now, every time I visit the Boston Opera House, I find a seat in the balcony, gazing at the stage, hoping to catch a glimpse of the timeless dancer, forever trapped between the world of the living and the embrace of the arts. We bought a house intending to use it as our second home, but after just a few months, we decided to sell it after some unusual experiences. Long story short, we're pretty sure it's haunted. Our real estate salesperson and the person who bought the home are both aware of the claims and have made an informed decision to purchase it anyway. They probably think I'm nuts. The home is not an old one. It was built in 2019 and we are the third owners. We've gotten an air quality test done in the home, and both my husband and I have both received physical examinations. Nothing is out of the ordinary. We bought our winter home last year. Originally, we're from Canada, but we've spent the majority of the last couple of years between the United States and, more recently, Costa Rica. My first experience there was while I was taking a shower. The house has an ensuite washroom, when you enter the room, if you go to the left, you'll go toward the bathroom. If you go to the right, you'll end up in the bedroom. From the shower, you can see the entrance to the bedroom. One afternoon, while I was showering, I watched my husband walk into the bedroom with a glass of lemonade. I then turned around to wash the soap off my face, 
and turned back toward the door to rinse the shampoo out of my hair. That's when I saw my husband enter the room again with the same glass of lemonade. When I exited the shower, I asked him if he had re-entered the room a couple of times, and he said no. He'd only ever come into the bedroom once and that he'd been there the majority of my shower. My husband had a similar experience. He was in the backyard looking into the kitchen. He claimed that he saw me leave the kitchen and walk toward the mudroom. He was very confused when he entered the house to find it empty. I had been out for a couple of hours. On multiple occasions, I've heard the sound of my husband's car scraping on the driveway. We have the steepest driveway on the block, and every time he parks the car, you can hear this distinct dragging sound of metal on the driveway. Whenever I hear this, I usually unlock the garage door. There have been multiple times where I've heard this sound, unlocked the door, and he isn't home. We've both heard whistling sounds that we can't explain, that stop once we acknowledge it. I guess it could just be the vents, but for the last three weeks, our thermostat hasn't been working, and we still hear it. There have been other trivial occurrences. Once I woke up in the middle of the night because the fridge door alarm was going off. We also have one of those annoying automatic toilets where the lid lifts when it detects motion. Well, those keep going off on their own too and opening up. I understand that with modern upgrades, there are going to be some malfunctions. So I put those experiences under the questionable category, but there's still been quite a lot of them. We've spent the past week packing our things. We're one of those people that just don't store anything in the garage other than our vehicles. The only other thing that we have in there is the water softener tank and that's it. So one night the car alarm goes off on both vehicles. Convinced that we're being robbed, we call the police and of course, the neighborhood security also comes by just to see that our cars are perfectly in the garage with no signs of an intruder. We officially moved out of that house three days before closing. We couldn't bear another day there. The neighbor texted me to ask what all the commotion was at our house. I told her that I had no idea what she was talking about because we don't even live there. I know this sounds insane, but we have lived in so many houses and we've never experienced anything like this. Even though our house was built in 2019, it was a teardown. There was another house on the same property that was built somewhere in the 60s, I think. So who knows what we might have inherited from that. At the tender age of 15, my family and I transitioned from my childhood home into a rental house. My brother and I each selected our rooms, and I opted for the one boasting a larger closet to accommodate my extensive clothing collection. Initially, everything seemed normal. However, as time passed, a disturbing pattern began to emerge. Almost every night, a dark silhouette would appear in my room giving me this overwhelming sensation of dread and terror that seemed to permeate the entire room. I found solace in prayer, invoking the name of Jesus, until the menacing presence abruptly disappeared, leaving me to sleep in peace. However, this disturbing routine was exclusive to my room. If I slept anywhere else in the house, the nights were uneventful. This resulted in me spending over a month in my mom's room after we had guests stay over for a week. I never returned to my room for an extended period, even after they left. The visitors never mentioned any unsettling experiences, though I doubt they would have even if they had encountered something peculiar. Even during the daytime though, a sinister presence just lingered around my room. I would often catch sight of a dark figure out of the corner of my eye, or somewhat directly as I walked past my room, which was located adjacent to the bathroom. The figure would disappear the moment I turned to look at it directly. Years later, when I finally confided in my dad about these hauntings, 
His response was one of regret. Why didn't you tell me earlier? He asked. We could have had your room cleansed and blessed. Although I've always held an interest in the paranormal, I've remained largely skeptical, favoring evidence-based explanations. I enjoy watching ghost hunting videos on YouTube and browsing through paranormal-themed subreddits. I have visited many supposedly haunted locations in the United States, such as the Omni Parker House in Boston, the Molly Brown House in Denver, the Whaley House in San Diego, Alcatraz at night, and the Winchester House on multiple occasions. Despite all this, I have never encountered any tangible evidence, leaving me to oscillate between curiosity and skepticism. That was until a few months ago. I had arranged a surprise party and weekend getaway for my girlfriend's 30th birthday. She wanted to go skiing, and so I organized the trip well in advance, inviting some of her closest friends. We ended up staying in a large Airbnb cabin in Tahoe, California, nestled amidst numerous similar cabins. It had enough rooms to accommodate all of us, a basement level with two beds, a room on the first floor, and three rooms upstairs. As it was her birthday, my girlfriend and I took the master bedroom upstairs. On the first night, we celebrated with drinks and games. Balloons that we'd set up in the living room kept popping at strange intervals. Someone suggested it was the heater vents causing the pops, but I was doubtful. Yet, I didn't want to stir up any unease, so I simply observed. Later that night, we could still hear balloons popping downstairs intermittently between 2 and 3.30 in the morning. On the second night, after a day out in the snow, the strange occurrences intensified. As we were all quite tired, we decided to call it a night earlier than before. It was then that I had my first eerie experience. It was so cold, so I went downstairs to adjust the thermostat. As I walked down the dark stairwell, I heard the floor creaking behind me, like someone was following me. The noises continued until I reached the thermostat, then stopped abruptly. I felt watched and called out to who I thought was my friend. Turning around, I found no one there. I was a bit unnerved, but kept it to myself and returned upstairs. About half an hour later, I decided to crank up the thermostat again. As I went downstairs, the only creaks I heard this time were from my own steps. However, as I was adjusting the thermostat, I heard the ball from the foosball table nearby roll across its surface and hit the side wall. Startled and unable to explain the phenomenon, I hurriedly returned to bed. On our drive back home the following morning, the topic of the popping balloons came up. Seeing an opportunity, I shared my experiences. As I finished, my girlfriend's friend, who had been staying across the hall from us, turned pale. She revealed that the previous night, she'd seen a shadowy figure at the foot of her bed. Upon waking her boyfriend, the figure had vanished. My girlfriend's cousin, who stayed in the next room, then admitted that she'd heard what sounded like breathing in her room. Alone, these incidents could perhaps be rationally explained, but when considered together, it was hard to deny that something unusual had been happening. This experience has turned me from a skeptic into a cautious believer. As for future encounters with the paranormal, I'd prefer if this was my first and last. This happened when I was around nine or 10. I was staying the night at my friend Catherine's for the first time. We met the summer before and we'd been inseparable ever since. Cat lived in this old two-story house, surrounded by woods and dirt road. 
The house itself gave me an uneasy feeling when I first saw it. The shutters were falling off. The paint on the house seemed to be fading. It was an old piece of crap now that I think about it, but at the time, I was excited. I remember walking in after staring at the house for what seemed like 20 minutes. Surprisingly, the inside was a lot nicer than the outside, so I pushed that uneasy feeling down and just shrugged it off as nerves. I remember the smell of the house. I can't pinpoint it, but it was different, like walking into a musty room. I started to walk around, just to explore my surroundings, but I noticed Kat's mom watching me. I simply smiled and waved, but she just stood there, staring at me, wide-eyed. I had never met her before, but why was she staring at me like that? Suddenly, Kat flew around the corner and tackled me. We both fell and started to giggle. I noticed Kat's mom out of the corner of my eye start to turn around and walk off, and she was gone. Fast forward a couple of hours, Kat and I are laying on a bean bag in her room watching Children of the Corn, which, by the way, was one of my favorite movies at the time. I grew up watching horror movies, mostly Stephen King or any movie that my mom was watching at the time. Not her decision, but mine, because I love the feeling that a good horror movie gives you. She felt the same way, and that's why we clicked so much. Anyway, we were sitting here watching this movie, and suddenly the door opposite us slams closed. We both jumped and giggled and brushed it off because, well, we were kids. Until the second time, when it creaked open and slammed again, not seconds after the first time. Now I'm sitting there staring at this door, trying to figure out how in the world it's opening and closing by itself. In the midst of all that, the only other person in this house is Kat's mom, which I figured out earlier in the day was also just a tad creepy. Do you think it's just your mom? I asked, but she just shook her head. Are you sure? I asked again, but this time she said something that gave me the chills and still does. She said, my mom isn't home. It's just me and you, silly. I just stared at her, trying to wrap my head around what she had just said. Who leaves their nine-year-old home alone with a friend in a two-story house? Where's your mom? I asked her. She's at work. I giggled, thinking that she was just trying to trick me. No, she's at work. She only works for a couple of hours, so she leaves me here because she trusts me. At this point, I'm just looking at her, and she noticed this look of worry on my face. What's wrong? She asked. I said, if your mom is at work, then who was that lady staring at me earlier? As I said this, we heard what seemed like footsteps at the time, but thinking about it now, it sounded more like shuffling in one spot above us. I'm completely scared at this point. Every hair on my neck is standing on end, and I just want to leave. I start to get up when Kat pulled me back down and asked me if I heard that noise. I nodded. It was silent again, until the footsteps were back, but louder and faster. We both stared up at the ceiling, and she grabbed my hand. This happens every day, she whispered. I looked over at her, and I could see true fear on her face. The footsteps stopped, and she looked at me, her face flushed white. Is there an attic? I asked. She pointed up toward the ceiling. Well, maybe it's just squirrels or birds, I kept thinking over and over. You ever notice when you're really quiet, that's when you can hear almost everything around you? Imagine if you're sitting in a house with your best friend alone at 10 years old, and you hear the giggle of a three-year-old child. Mind you, she has no siblings. We were completely alone. Kat was just as scared as I was. I remember thinking that I just wanted to get out of this house. I grabbed her and ran out the door. At least we would feel safer and less scared outside the house than we would in it. Want to hear a story? Kat asked, pulling my mind back into reality. 
I nodded. Well, this house used to be a daycare. There was this lady that would watch the kids, and one day she just locked them all in the attic. And then she hung herself from a rope in the kitchen. They all died because the kids were hungry and thirsty, and no one found them for months afterwards in this house. My heart started to pound, my eyes wide with fear, and I just looked at her. It's true, she said. I've seen them, the little kids, every day, but I've never seen the lady. But you have, earlier. After she told me this, I don't remember much else except running out the door of her room and making it outside. Cat followed, begging me to stay, but I just had to get out. My stomach felt like knots. I felt as though I had walked into a horror movie, and I just wished the day had never happened. Fast forward years later, that was the last day I had ever seen or heard from Kat. I remember her always coming to play outside at my dad's during the day. I remember what she looked like. I never remembered meeting her parents or seeing them out in public. I'm now 27, and I can't seem to find any proof that she exists. All my friends that I was friends with then, I'm still friends with now, even after all these years. But why not her? I think her scary story might have had some flaws, but I still wonder what happened in that house. I've driven by there maybe 15 times, and I still wonder if maybe she was one of the ones that never made it out. I'm pretty sure my roommate's house is haunted, but they don't believe in ghosts or souls very much, so they don't think much of the weird things that happened around here. You can clearly hear footsteps in the attic. I used to live in an apartment, so you can definitely tell what different sounds you hear. With that, they are very distinctly the footsteps of someone pacing in the attic. There's only one way in or out of it in my roommate's room, so I know it isn't some squatter or something like that. Things in the house move around on their own, too. It happens in front of my friend and I a lot, to the point where we're kind of used to it. Even though we're used to it, though, I would be more at peace with it if I knew more about the spirits here. Any attempt to contact them has failed, so I assume they just don't want to talk. I haven't had any negative encounters with them, though. The worst I've had is probably knocking over some stuff on the couch. Still, I just want to know what I'm living with. Is that too much to ask? I have a weird story to tell you but I promise that it's true. This happened about 10 years ago. It was at night. My older sister and I were on the second floor, spending the evening with our oldest brother and his wife. I can't recall what we were chatting with them about, but after a while, about 10 o'clock, my sister and I decided that it was time to go to sleep. We're heading downstairs. My brother has a switch right next to his main front door into the stairs that controls the light of the attic where the stairs come to an end. We usually just put useless stuff there. It's a very small room. The rest of it is just flat empty roof. So as we're heading down, we notice that this light was on in the attic, so I switched it off. Then both my sister and I heard the exact voice of my mom saying, turn on that light, I'm up here. Now, we were both certain that it was my mom, and that it was coming from upstairs, so we didn't say anything, and I turned it back on. We headed downstairs, and that's when we both were totally shocked. As we opened the door to find my mom drinking tea with my other brother and the TV on, we froze, unable to move or speak. My mom noticed that something strange was going on, so she asked us what was wrong. After a moment of silence, we explained what happened. 
She didn't say anything, but told us to go to sleep. Of course, I couldn't. I kept thinking about what had happened the entire night. Who or what made that sound, and how did it do it? I mean, among all voices, the one of my mom is the one that I know the best, the one I grew up with, so how could it mimic it well enough to fool both my sister and I? To this day, whenever I ask my sister if she remembers what happened, she says, yes, and then immediately changes the subject. Almost every single night, I walk up to the attic to chill in there or whatever, and I've never stumbled into anything weird. Just that one instance, but who knows? So my family and I moved into a new house, which is a two by four house. It used to have an attic, but it's been sealed off. After a couple of months into living in this house, sometimes I would be watching TV and hear scratching from the roof. I just played it off as birds are very common where I live. After about three weeks, the scratching got worse and more frequent. It's like something's trying to scratch its way out of the roof. The attic entrance thing is above the outside of my sister's room. One day, my sister tells my dad that the seal is open. My dad gets confused because it was supposed to be sealed off. My dad goes to close it and realizes that it's really hard to open and close, so whatever opened it had to be strong. And that's when I started to get skeptical. The same night, I went to get some snacks from the fridge. I opened it to find out that they were gone. I figured that my siblings must have eaten them. In the morning, my parents are going on and on about a missing cake. That cake was supposed to be for my niece's birthday. They asked if I had anything to do with it, and I said no, along with my siblings. I was getting really suspicious about the attic. So one day, I built up the courage to go check it out. Note that I am probably the most paranoid person in the world, so I was scared for my life, but my curiosity got the best of me. I get the ladder, a torch, and a knife just in case. I open the thing up and I shine my torch to see nothing. But as I search more, I see the cake, empty snack packets, dirty clothes, and a short, dark silhouette that freezes in its spot. Immediately I bold and scream for my parents and I tell them everything. They tell me to stay in my room. They go up and check, but he was gone. I am still shaken up about that moment and I get nightmares from it to this day. We've since moved from that house and haven't had any more issues like that. And we live a normal, non-scary life, but I think that day will live with me forever. Over the course of two years, I've had weird dreams about a very specific creature lurking in the attic. It always felt malevolent now, I don't know if it's an actual thing or my subconscious messing with me, but it deeply unsettled me in ways that my dreams almost never do. As somebody who is always aware that they're dreaming, even dreams where I'm being hunted down don't scare me, but this does. There have been so many dreams about it, but a few stick in my head. The least threatening one was a dream where I'm playing video games in my room. I glance out of my bedroom door, and I see an arm dangling from the open attic. The hand moves like it's beckoning me to come closer. I don't, because, obviously, but I watch it. It never leaves the attic, but it keeps trying to get me to go to it. Another dream, I'm in a house I've never been in. My sister and nieces are in this house with me and I get the impression that this thing is threatening my family. I'm angry, so I get vocally aggressive. 
I get my family out of there and go back to confront the thing. I see it for the first time in all the dreams that I've had. It was a woman with light purple skin and dreadlocks. I don't remember how this dream ended, but there were more dreams after, never including my family again, just me. The most intense encounter I had was a dream where the attic was right above the bed I was sleeping in. I was lying there, very aware that it was watching me. I figured if I ignored it, it would go away. Wrong. It slowly pulled the covers off of me. After a few minutes of lying there, cold, trying to decide if it was safe to pull the blanket back up, it grabs me by the throat and lifts me up about a foot off the bed and starts choking me. I felt like my lungs were going to burst when it let go and let me fall back onto the bed, gasping for breath. I don't know how many dreams I've had since this one, but I know it's been at least a year since I dreamt about it. I'm very uneasy around attics now, and I always expect to look up and see it again when I pass underneath one, awake or not. Even right now, I keep throwing glances at the attic door right outside my bedroom. Nothing's there, of course, but it's still on my mind. If this thing is not my subconscious and it's an actual entity, I have no idea what it could be. In my limited experience with the paranormal, I've never encountered anything that felt malevolent before. Just this. My hope is that either my brain just decided it wanted to be terrified of addicts, or that this thing got bored with me and left me forever. My friend and I worked construction, and one night we were enjoying a break, just hanging out together. We had another friend with us, we'll call her Jen. My other construction friend we'll call Maggie. So Maggie and I were talking about some of the strange things that we've seen in houses. And Jen goes, hang on, my mom has the craziest story, let me call her. So Jen calls her mom and her mom begins to tell us this story of what keeps happening in her attic. Her mom goes, it's the darndest thing, but you know the light cord, the thing you pull to turn it on and off? It keeps tying itself into a knot with a circle hanging down from it. Never have been able to figure that out. As we're listening to the story, Maggie and I look at each other and our eyes say everything. We're both thinking about the same project that we worked on not that long ago, maybe a couple years. Hey, whereabouts is your house? Maggie asks. Jen's mom tells us, and we about freaked out. After Jen hung up the phone, she asks us what we're freaking out about. I finally got the words together to say, your mom's house was a construction site we worked on not long before you guys moved in. It needed some work after the previous owner left, I suppose. The thing is, she unalived herself in the attic by hanging herself from the light cord, using it as a noose. That was one of the strangest things we'd ever encountered. However, I was working on a site one time that was a full-on demo. It was this old, decrepit mansion in Maine. Well, as we're working, we found this old, dusty VHS tape in the wall. Obviously, we were curious, so we put it into a barely functioning VHS player to see what was on it. All it contained was several minutes of an old woman sitting in a chair in the middle of the basement, staring directly into the camera and breathing heavily. And then it cut off. My husband and I met a guy who used to work in our house. In conversation one day, he said, so have you met the ghosts yet? My husband started laughing and said, we sure have. 
We were a little bit skeptical as to whether we'd imagined the things that happened, but laborers working here have been very unsettled by some events, and in some cases they've refused to come back. We've always lived in houses where strange things happen, but this one has really been a wild ride. It's very haunted. Noises, floorboards creaking with footsteps, bangs, doors opening, lights and sockets switching on and off, things moving, voices, shadows, it's crazy. He also told us some of the things that happened here. It's a very old house, and in recent years it was a home for addicts with new babies. A lot of serious, horrific trauma happened here. I cried when he told us about it. It's unsurprising to me, therefore, that the energy here is so charged. Knowing this, I thought that over the weekend I might light some candles and sage the house, and invite anything to leave that needs to go, though I suppose some will probably want to stay. I'd be interested to know what you would do here. Our family and friends have said to move out, but we like it here. We don't have any bad experiences, really. We're not frightened. And, as far as advice goes, I don't really want any advice on exorcisms or fleeing the house. The worst thing we've ever experienced was a disembodied groaning noise. It was very human and very strange, but if it was intended to frighten us, it didn't. I raised my eyebrows at my husband and then carried on working. Last night, my husband and I opened doors and windows all throughout the house. We started in the cellar and worked our way up through the house. There are 28 rooms or spaces, so it took us ages. I used white sage sticks, tea light candles, and a bowl each to carry the candles in, which were gifts from loved ones and sentimental to us. As we moved through the house, I just talked, asking any spirits who didn't respect us or wanted to harm us to leave our house, that this was our home and we wouldn't tolerate it and that if anybody wished to stay, they could, but they had to respect us and treat us with kindness and we would do the same. In the rooms where we felt the most oppressive energy, one bedroom in particular, I spent a while talking out loud to any spirits trapped here because of the traumatic house history. I said that they were free to move on now and to go and find their loved ones. Who knows if it did anything, but I felt like we had to try, so I did it with belief and conviction. My husband had a strange interaction in the cellar where the sage was knocked from his hand, but he remained firm and told them that they had to leave and they weren't allowed to touch him. Our cat was avidly watching the house spirit cat as usual and following it around. And then he seemed to be watching and following things with his eyes through the kitchen to the back door. We were just watching, fascinated. I said thank you, just in case they were leaving, so we'll see if things get better. We'll see if they seem more peaceful. I certainly slept very well last night, so fingers crossed. Entities in the house. I lived in the house where all of this took place from the ages of 9 to 23. My parents got divorced when I was 14. I lived with my parents, younger brother, and grandma. My younger brother was the first to notice something strange in the house. One night in 2005, he woke us up at about 11 p.m., crying, saying that there was someone outside his window. Living in South Africa, such things are possible, so my dad went to inspect and found nothing. A few weeks later, my aunt, my mom's sister, came to visit from out of town and was sleeping in my grandma's room. She relayed to us the next morning that she was awoken by the door opening and a figure staring at her from around the corner. Fast forward a few years to 2007 and 2008. I would normally stay alone at home whenever my dad would go out fishing with my brother for the weekend. This is when I started noticing odd things happening. Keys would go missing, 
lights would be on after I know I had switched them off. Small things, but significant enough for me to take note. 2010 is when things got real. I was in my last year of high school and working part-time for my dad, who has an office on the same property as the house. I was working on a file, left it on the desk, and went to lunch. And when I returned, the file was gone. No one else could have taken it, as the only other staff member was the receptionist. About a week later, we found the file one morning just laying in the middle of the floor. That weekend, a friend of mine stayed over in my brother's room, and we came home from a party. It must have been about one or two in the morning when we got to bed. I was already falling asleep when I heard him scream for me. My room and my brother's room share a bathroom with doors on each side. I get to my friend who is literally sweating and I asked him what happened. He said somebody started to choke him as soon as he closed his eyes to sleep, but nobody visible was there. From that day, I would be seeing the man, as we named him, around the property. I've seen him while working on my car in the garage. I've seen him while doing dishes. My father has even seen him while sitting in the garden. I never see his face, but he's always wearing blue overalls, like the ones construction workers wear. It wasn't serious until I got married and had a kid. This takes us to October of 2019. My son is a year and a half old and he refuses to be in this house. He cries constantly whenever we visit my dad, and as soon as we leave, he's perfectly well behaved. Two weekends ago, my dad had gone out fishing. My brother wasn't around. I had to come feed the cats and switch on the lights. I came in at about 7 p.m. that Saturday night, and as soon as I walked into the house, I felt a chill. Thinking nothing about it, I carried on with what I had to do. While in the kitchen, I heard heavy footsteps in the lounge and the breaking of glass. I rushed to investigate and I found a vase that's normally on the cabinet about five meters away on the floor in pieces. I locked up and got out of there. I told my wife the story when I got home and she suggested that I burn frankincense around the house and read some prayers. Sunday morning, I set out on my mission, and I started burning frankincense and praying around the house. When I got to the office, I had just begun to pray when the glass sliding door shattered. Since then, my son hasn't been fussing when he comes here, and the atmosphere seems a lot lighter around the house. For context, I live in Germany. My boyfriend's childhood home is old. How old, nobody knows exactly. It might have been built around the beginning of the 20th century, but it could be older. It's a three-level house with a huge archway at the first floor that marks its age. There are two stories I want to tell you. The first one happened when we had just started dating. My boyfriend had searched for his room key for quite a while. It appeared to be lost forever. One day I entered his room and there was the key, laying perfectly placed in the middle of the bed. When he came home from work, I mentioned that I was glad he had found his key. He looked at me confused and I pointed at the door where I put the key in. He said, I never found it. Later we asked his parents and sister if they had placed it there but they denied it. To this day, we don't know how it ended up there. The second story happened pretty recently. The building has two front doors. The inner front door squeaks remarkably if you open it, so everyone knows when somebody's coming inside. My boyfriend's mother and I sat at the dinner table. His dad was watching soccer on the TV next to us on the third floor. My boyfriend and his sister were out of the house. Suddenly, my mother-in-law and I heard the front door, then another door-like sound. Oh, someone must have come in, my mother-in-law said. 
She went down the first stair and said, Hello? No answer. She decided to take a look herself. Not a single soul in sight. At the exact moment she went down to look, my boyfriend opened the door and came in, just to see the two of us confused. We asked if he was mocking us. He affirmed that he hadn't even been inside before, so the door wasn't him. He and his mom both told me that these kinds of things have happened to them before. Doors open, things move, sometimes you hear steps that aren't supposed to be there. Apparently they call their ghost Herbert, after their uncle that passed away a few years ago. I guess it's a friendly soul. As a child, like many others, I was accompanied by an array of imaginary friends. Among these figments of my young imagination, the one I remember distinctly was a little girl named Sophie. Sophie, approximately my age at the time, between four and six, was just an ordinary girl wearing a dress and socks. The peculiar thing about her was the noticeable crook in her neck. I grew up in an old house, possibly around 80 years old, with our next door neighbor who we affectionately referred to as Grandma and who has lived there for 60 years. This fact bears significance to the story. Sophie was my closest friend during my early years, a phenomenon not uncommon among children. We spent a lot of time talking and playing in my room, but she never ventured downstairs, claiming fear. It was a usual occurrence for me to descend the staircase, turn back and reassure her, Hey, see, it's okay. You can come down. Regardless, she would stay put, a fact I found utterly perplexing. As I aged, my interactions with Sophie dwindled, and ultimately, she faded from my memory. That was until, after relocating, my mother and I paid a visit to Grandma and began reminiscing about my childhood spent in the old house. My mother mentioned my habit of addressing the staircase when I was young, which piqued grandma's curiosity, prompting her to ask, who were you speaking to? I casually answered, oh, Sophie, and I started to describe her. Grandma fell into a silent contemplation. After a while, she said, you know, when I initially moved into this house, my neighbors were preparing to move out. Tragically, a month before their departure, their daughter slipped and fell down the staircase, succumbing to her injuries. She had broken her neck. You know, I do believe her name was Sophie. Our next story comes from Moonfire. I have so many, but I'll submit my experiences one at a time. I'll start with the basement apartment in 1992. I hate it when landlords or realtors don't tell you that a place is haunted. For five months too long, I stayed at a seemingly nondescript apartment in Nampa, Idaho. Less than a month in, I had my first encounter with my dead roommate. He appeared hovering over me in bed and woke me up. His form was a long, stretched out black, cloudy, swirling mass. He had no face and a skinny little head. He looked down at me a couple of times as though scanning me. Then I found my voice and screamed at it to get out. He flew away backwards into the wall and disappeared. Three weeks later, he came back. I felt an angry presence in the room and slept on the couch instead. The next night, I returned to my room. I was awakened later by someone sitting down on the bed, staring at me. My feet even rolled into his form. I was terrified, but too afraid to move. 
Then I realized he could do something to me if I didn't wake up. I wiggled my toe and woke up. He was gone. And about a month later, I was too. I found out from the landlord that there was a guy in there that had himself before I moved in. Seems like he never quite left. The Demon House, submitted by subscriber Freddy. You can call me Freddy. I'm from a small town in South Carolina, and I've been dealing with the paranormal all my life. I'm 28 years old, and I've always been a believer in things like ghosts, spirits, and demons, even vampires and werewolves. I've had many paranormal encounters. My dad said I was born with a veil over my face. It took me a long time to learn how to control it. For years, I would cry and lose sleep over the encounters I would have. And it didn't help that my mom never believed me. But with years of practice, I learned how to keep them away, especially the evil ones, because they seemed especially attracted to me. My first encounter, I think I was about nine or 10 years old, and I was laying in bed asleep one night. All of a sudden, I was awake. I felt like somebody was standing over me. At first I thought it was my dad because he would always come and check on me. I looked to the side and I saw a tall dark figure standing over my bed. I don't know how I know, but it was looking at me. I couldn't see any facial detail, but the energy I felt coming from it was very masculine. I quickly realized it wasn't my dad because he was short and thick. Whoever this was, was tall and skinny. I was so scared, but something told me to just lay still and don't move. So I laid there for what felt like hours until finally my dad turned my lights on. I told him what I saw and he stayed with me until I went back to sleep. From then on, things didn't get any better. For years, I would experience sleep paralysis, noises. I would be scratched, I'd wake up with bruises. Not all the spirits I encountered were bad. Sometimes I would wake up at night crying about my baby, about how I couldn't find her and someone took her from me. I know I probably sounded crazy because I was 13 and I didn't have a baby. Also, I remember one time I was depressed and I was at my aunt's house alone. I was praying to God, asking him to give me a sign that someone loved me. And all of a sudden, one of my aunt's angel figurines fell and the front door flew open. Most of the activity that happened to me happened in a trailer that my family owned. I never looked up the history of the land or anything, but I hated that trailer. I was literally tortured there. I was a 15 to 16 year old kid whose dad still had to stay with her until she fell asleep because I was so scared. I was pretty sure that house had a demon in it, but I never saw it, but I felt it. For some reason, it seemed like it was attached to me. I could feel it. I knew that it wanted to hurt me. My mom never believed me. She just thought I was crazy. That was until she sold it. The lady that bought it was trying to fix it up, but she just kept having bad luck with it. Eventually, she decided to sell it, and she called my mom and offered to let her buy it back. My mom told her that she wouldn't be interested in buying it back, but she did ask why she wanted to sell it since she'd only had it for a few months. The lady told my mom that something evil lives in that house and she wanted it out of her life as soon as possible before something bad happened to her. I guess then she realized I wasn't running to her room every night terrified to sleep on the floor at 17 for fun. I lived in a haunted house in Ireland by user John Von One, posted to r slash paranormal. Make of this what he will. Back in 2009, Ireland was going through the recession, but I managed to buy a house. It was a nice little cottage, 
it suited me perfectly as I was a single man. I did shift work, so it was nights and days, days and nights. Initially, I thought it was because I wasn't getting enough sleep, but things started to happen within the house that I couldn't explain. For instance, one night I was doing some ironing. I put a towel on the railing in the bathroom and went back into the kitchen to get some more clothes to hang and put away. I came back up and the towel that I had put on the bathroom railing was strewn across my bedroom floor. My first thought was that there was someone in the house with me. So I ran back into the kitchen and grabbed the frying pan. It was a small house, so there was nowhere for someone to hide. After a while, I reasoned that it couldn't have been an intruder because the door was locked and all the windows were shut. It scared the life out of me, but I convinced myself that I wasn't paying attention and that I might have actually left the towel in my room, even though I knew I didn't. But things only got worse as time went on and couldn't be dismissed so easily. It got to the stage where I was actually afraid of being in my own home. For instance, coming in from work, particularly at nighttime, there was a light switch on the wall by the doorway. I'd have to switch that one on before I would even open the door fully. I was so terrified that I wouldn't even look into the darkness. Sometimes when I'd open the door at nighttime, there'd be a gust of wind coming out from the house to greet me. But it eventually got to the stage where I was beginning to wonder if I was losing my mind. This went on for months, things going missing, curtains being closed when I left a room and being partially open when I came back in minutes later. The final straw was when I actually saw something. I arrived home one night at about 3 a.m. after being at work. I opened the hall door and switched on the light. Just to give you a picture of the layout of the house, it was quite small. There was a hallway and down the end of the hallway was a doorway to a bathroom that was out the back and the kitchen was to the left. So this night in particular, I switched on the light and opened the door fully to be greeted by, all I can say was a big man's shadow. And this thing was standing at the end of the hallway. Now, how it was a shadow is beyond me because there were three spotlights running down the hall and they lit up everywhere. But this shadow stood within the light and it was facing me. Every hair on my body stood on edge. The fright and the fear and the panic was so intense. I roared out, leave me alone, just leave me alone. And with that, whatever it was, it turned sideways and I could see the whole profile of his face. Then there was a massive bang and a chair was sent flying up the hallway toward me. I legged it out of the house, got back into my car, and traveled back up to my parents' house. I was so distraught. I had a brother living in our parents' house at the time, and he thought I'd been in some kind of an accident. I tried to explain it to them the best that I could what had happened. I hadn't said anything to anyone about the goings-on in the house up until that point, and I'd been living in it for about six months, and it had been going on that whole time. Almost every day something happened. Being terrified in your own home is a horrible feeling. My brother and I drove back down to the house the following day, and we found the chair that had been thrown at me in the hallway on top of the kitchen table. I had a bottle of water in the fridge, and I took it out and placed it on the kitchen table. As my brother and I were talking, the bottle just burst. It was as if somebody had shaken a Coke can and opened it and then it just went everywhere. Every surface of the kitchen seemed to have water on it. I sold the house about six months later. During the months between putting the house up for sale and eventually selling it, strange things continued to happen within the house, like things going missing and curtains being moved. Thankfully though, I never saw the apparition again. One night, I was lying in bed. It was about 1 a.m. And coming from the back of the house, I heard a woman's voice say, no doctor, please help me. 
Petrified, I leapt out of bed and turned on all the lights. I searched everywhere, checked that the door was locked. It was, and the windows were all shut. The television was plugged out because it sometimes turned on by itself. Same for the radio, which was also unplugged. I'll never forget the sadness in her voice and the way she said it. It wasn't, no doctor, please help me. It was, no doctor, please, help me. Like, for some reason, she didn't want me to bring a doctor. I was so glad to be out of that house when I finally sold it. When I was living there, I had asked a neighbor, and he told me that the couple who had bought the house off, the wife had been complaining about hearing things in the house. I don't know what I saw or heard, but I do know that whatever it was, it was definitely something that was within the house, because I haven't experienced anything like that since then. I don't know whether the couple who bought the house off me experienced anything. I couldn't say. After all these years, I still don't talk about this with people, as I don't want them thinking that I'm crazy. But I know that this happened to me. In order to set a little background, this took place in Western Wyoming. It was a small town, and at the time it had maybe 2,500 people. This was the first home that I lived in during the time that I spent in Wyoming. We moved here because of my dad's job. The family and I weren't very enthusiastic because we loved our home in Oklahoma. My dad and mom went up and looked for houses without us so that we could finish school and wouldn't have to stay in a hotel. The housing market wasn't doing so well and the choices were very limited. In fact, it came down to one choice. The house that we had to move into was built in the 1930s and it was rather different from the house we moved out of. It was single story with a large basement. The staircase to the basement was immediately to the left when you walked into the front door. No door at the bottom and the steps were steep. It was fairly dark without any lights on. We move in within three weeks of being told that we're moving. My dad spent the first night there alone and never told us what he experienced until years later. We were about eight to 13 years old between my brother and sister, so he didn't want to scare us. He decided to sleep in the basement because the TV was down there and the basement was fairly large. He said that it was late, around 2 a.m., when the TV turned on to static by itself. He's not bothered too much by it, but then he hears a door creak open and some footsteps. After doing a little investigating, he lays down again but doesn't sleep much due to weird noises. Jumping forward sometime, this would be my first odd experience that would make me a believer later on in life. Every night, my sister and I would pick a VHS movie from a large bookshelf in the basement. Since I was too afraid to sleep in my room in the basement, we slept in a bunk in my sister's room. My mom tells us that it's time to put in a movie and go to bed, so we agree to head downstairs. My first choice was one of my two favorites, which was the land before time. I asked my sister without turning around, does land before time sound good to you? After about a minute, I get impatient and I say, well, how about the Lion King then? Not much more time passes and I get upset and I tell her, fine then, if you're not gonna say anything, we're gonna watch my movie. As I slowly turn around to address my sister, I see that nobody is there. Here's the real kicker. I look back to the large bookcase and see two shadows, plain as day. My shadow, which is to the left, and a smaller shadow that clearly looks like a little girl on the right. This is when I realize something is not right and I freak out. After screaming and starting up the stairs, I take one final look back to see that the little girl is moving down the hallway to my room. Well, at least her shadow is. There was absolutely nobody in the basement to produce that shadow. 
the shadow disappears into my room, and then to top it off, the light comes on. So I'm screaming bloody murder at this point, and I run to tell my parents. They tell me that it was just my imagination. So then I ask where my sister is, and they tell me that she's been in her room waiting for me to bring up a movie. Again, years later, I get told that they had both seen a little girl in the house too. They knew full well that it was not my imagination. The last thing that happened was to my brother. He had a room in the basement, but he wasn't a chicken like I was. One late night, he was woken up to his door creaking open. He thought it was me because sometimes I would get scared and come sleep with him. After a few moments, he said a small head peeked through the door. He said, what's wrong, buddy? Can't sleep? The door slowly shuts and he hears footsteps down the hall to my room. He decides to get up and come see what, who he thought was me, was doing. After leaving his room, he sees my light is on and my door is open. He walks into the room and every single toy from my wooden toy box is out. This is very unusual for me because my parents were quite strict and would kick my butt if I left my room like that. He asks me the next day what I was doing down in my room so late and I had no idea what he was talking about. My mom vouched that I was passed out in her room after we all watched movies. To sum up this story, my brother and I both had recurring dreams about a little blonde girl being stuffed into my toy box in the closet. Another dream that we both had was this kind of tall old man beating us in the basement bathroom. We've come to think that maybe a kid was killed in that house and the negative energy manifested because of that. Something I forgot to mention, all the toys were cleaned up the next day and were meticulously placed, all standing up in an odd order. Nobody in my family ever placed them like that, and no one had been in the basement aside from my brother, and he said that he certainly didn't do it. In any case, I'm really glad we don't live there anymore. All of these things happened at my now ex-boyfriend's house. I would spend a lot of time at his house overnight as his neighborhood had more things to do and his bedroom was more private than mine. We were both 19 to 21 during this time period. First, I should mention that his family practices the Yoruba religion and would leave water and offerings for individual deities. They were very in tune to that aspect of the universe. I had also felt growing up that I could feel things and spirits, not necessarily communicate, but I could feel them and acknowledge them if I didn't think they were dangerous, and was generally chill and not really scared, as long as I knew that I wasn't doing something to upset them or vice versa. Whenever I encountered these things, I just sort of had this thought of like, oh, that's a ghost, and then I kind of moved on. In his house, his bedroom had a door that led down a flight of stairs into the backyard and also into the basement. Basically, you come down the stairs, do a U-turn, and bam, you're looking at the basement. If you go straight just a couple of steps, then you're in the backyard. He has a washer dryer down there, and there was also some storage. It was dark, damp, and had a concrete floor. Not really a place you want to hang out in. Occasionally, we would go down to get the laundry, and I always found myself looking into the back of the basement and just knowing that I was not welcome to pass any farther than the dryer. Even at the dryer, I can only explain it as clear words popping into my head. You're not supposed to be here. It was in my own voice, but it would always leave quickly. And sometimes, just in case, I would give a nod of respect toward the back of the basement. I avoided going down there as much as I could. Additionally, sometimes when in bed late at night, I would hear creaking on the stairs. 
At first, I summed it up to an old house settling and changing with the temperature. But over time, I could not deny that it was the distinct sound of footsteps. It would always stop by the door to the basement, and I would stare at the door, waiting for it to open. But it never did. One day, we were sitting at the kitchen table with his mom and dad, and I don't remember how it got brought up, but I mentioned that I always felt unwelcome and like I wasn't supposed to be in the basement. I also mentioned that the words, you're not supposed to be here, would repeat in my head. His mom and dad shot a wide-eyed glance at each other. I said, what? Very matter-of-factly, his mom says, there's the ghost of an old man who stays down there. I immediately felt validated and got chills and described exactly where I felt unwelcome. She confirmed that he does hang out in the very back of the basement. She also told me that sometimes she'll leave a shot of whiskey for him when his activity picks up. He's apparently cranky by nature, but that seems to calm him down for a few weeks. She said that he was harmless, but I already felt that. He just didn't like me in his space. She left some whiskey for him the next day, and I think spoke to him and somewhat told him who I was. The feeling of unwelcomeness never left, and I would still hear the creeping on the stairs, but I made sure to acknowledge him whenever I went to the basement, and I never went into his space at the back. Bonus, his sister's room is on the same level, and when she was a kid, she used to have nightmares of a girl crying in her room and swears that as she got older, she has seen her curled up in a ball on her floor when she wakes up in the middle of the night, and she'll hear a random cry if she's in her room alone during the day. All in all, a very strange experience. My family friends lived in a small coastal town in California, and it has really old buildings there, including the original state capitol. They lived in an older house built around the 60s or 70s, and it was a single-story home. I was small, maybe two to four years old, and my parents never let me or my brother go there. My uncle and auntie didn't really let anyone else go there either, because of, well, all of it. It was haunted by a little girl or something. They would see a shadow, ironically the dog's name is Shadow, down the hall, hear a laugh, doors would slam shut or suddenly open, and they would hear footsteps running around. The dog, Shadow, would stare down the hallway and start to growl and bark, and even start to whimper after they found scratch marks on him one time. After this, they didn't want anyone to go to their house, especially not kids. The daughter, who is the same age as I am, came crying to her mom, saying that the little girl with black hair and white threw a toy at her. The oldest brother had his lights flicker, his dog barking and his door slamming shut all the while. It scared the crap out of everyone. But one night, Another one of my uncles had to drive by their house to pick up my uncle and auntie to go to a party. He saw a girl that looked like the daughter crouched on top of the van with her hair over her face, just tapping on the windshield of the car. He called my uncle to ask if their daughter was outside, but he said, nope, all the kids are at their grandparents. But as soon as he got off the phone, it was gone. In the morning, they saw a small handprint on the driver's side window and small scratches on the front windshield and a dead mourning dove on their porch. They moved about five months later. We moved into our first home in February of 2016. It was an old home, 
built in the early 1900s in the historic part of town. I loved it. All the hand-carved woodwork and glass doorknobs with skeleton locks. It was exactly what I wanted, and it was perfect for myself, a 22-year-old female at the time, and my husband, 27-year-old male at the time. I was three months pregnant with our first, and we were so excited to start our family. As we got settled in, we noticed that the house was very noisy. I rarely have my home quiet due to having tinnitus, and we always need some kind of background noise to drown it out. On the rare occasion that the house was quiet, there was always lots of creaking and mostly moving coming from the loft-style attic we had. We shook it off as the house settling and being old. At least that's what my dad told us. So we moved on. Spring came and we were scrambling to get ready for the baby. The house needed a lot of work, but we were determined to get it done. The first major encounter was on a beautiful spring day. It was the weekend and my husband and I were spending our day off working on the house. I was cleaning the kitchen and he was working on my car in our detached garage. The way this home was built, you could see the detached garage from the window that's above the kitchen sink. I would glance out every now and then and see what he was up to. A little time passed and I hadn't looked out at him. I started doing the dishes and I heard him walking into the living room toward the kitchen. I could feel his presence there. So without turning around, I said, Hey babe. No answer. Wondering why he didn't answer me, I looked back over my shoulder, only to be met with the dark silhouette of a man standing between the living room and the kitchen. In the blink of an eye, the figure was gone. Unsure of what I had just seen, I yelled through the window for my husband, who was still in the garage and had been the whole time. He came in and I frantically told him that somebody was in the house. He immediately went to grab his weapon and checked all over the house, but nothing was there. In all of the years we lived at that house, not once did my husband see our little roommate, but I, I saw him all the time, out of the corner of my eye, peeking around corners. But more than anything, I saw him looking into the living room from the staircase that led to the attic. In the beginning, he frightened me, but after a while, I just kind of got used to him being there. I even spoke to him sometimes, telling him that I'm okay if he stays in the attic and asking him to leave my baby alone. He seemed to have agreed since in the last five years, my son lived there and he never saw him. When we went to sell our home, the realtor brought us some historical information she had found regarding the house and our neighborhood. We found out that our house and our neighbor's house was built by a brother and sister. Our home was the brothers. Their last name was the same as our current neighbor, so I figured he was most likely a descendant. I asked him one day and he told me that the sister was his mom and his uncle owned our home. He said that he was a kind man who lived alone and died in the home many years ago. I asked him about the attic and he said that that was his uncle's favorite place in the whole house. He kept all of his trinkets and projects up there and would just spend hours working on things up there. I didn't tell him I believed my house was haunted. He didn't seem like the type who would believe me. Our home was listed and it sold within the same day. Sometimes I wonder about the man in the attic, if the new owners are nice to him, or if they've even noticed his presence. I do hope they'll give him his space, as they are only passers-by in his home, like we once were. Some years ago, my girlfriend and I were asked to watch somebody's house. They had an old sick dog and they wanted to go on a vacation. I had to study for exams, so I figured it would be a nice, calm place to do that. We were about 22 or 23 years old. 
the first day that we came in, we got some information about the house. Their kids slept downstairs, so we had to sleep upstairs in the loft. We had this hallway, and then a door to the playroom, and then another door to the loft, so just one way in and one way out. The bathroom was downstairs next to the kids' room. The first thing that I didn't really like was a picture of their dead grandpa standing next to me on the drawer near the bed. I put him away in the drawer so I didn't have to see him every time I woke up. The evening came and we were searching for plates to eat. We couldn't find any plates. We checked the kitchen, yes, every drawer, like five times, nothing to see. The next day, the first drawer I opened in the kitchen was full of plates. Kind of weird, but all right. The next night, the dog was barking like crazy. Every night, this dog started to bark at random hours. The next morning, random lights would be on all over the house. Then I went to check the aquarium to give some food to the fish there. Half of them were dead skeletons at the bottom. I mean, what the heck? Even if they had died overnight, there's no way that would happen so fast. She said there's gotta be an explanation for this kind of thing, but we were already a little bit freaked out. The next night, we're going to the bathroom and just getting ready to go to sleep. Like every night, my girlfriend put her handbag and stuff in the kids' room because the cats couldn't get in there. We checked to make sure all the lights were out and we went to sleep. The next morning, the handbag was standing right next to the bed, right in front of the doorway. My girlfriend freaked out, and for me, that was it. I said I didn't want to stay. We had exams coming up, and I didn't want to deal with that stuff anymore. She stayed for the dog, but didn't want to sleep alone anymore, so her mom came to sleep at the house. After that, nothing more happened. We told the owners of the house, but they laughed really hard, and I think they thought we were either crazy or kidding. They said nothing like that has ever happened to them. I don't know, maybe I pissed off grandpa because I put him in a drawer. But regardless, we really felt that somebody was messing with us in that house. Despite my experience, I am still hesitant to use the word haunted. Many people have asked me what I think caused what happened, and I don't have an answer. I can describe it, but I cannot explain it. Therefore, I tend to avoid the usage of words and terms that attempt to explain the phenomenon in any manner. I'm a man of science. I'm not religious or spiritual. However, I cannot simply ignore what happened to me. Here's my story. It was 2009 to 2010. When I met the woman who would later become my wife, we started renting a small house within the city limits. I was in the process of beginning a new job and circumstances prevented me from staying in the house with her for the first week. Each morning, we would talk on the phone during my drive to work. She explained to me that each morning she had struggled to sleep the previous night. She described sounds that were keeping her awake, like someone running through the house, objects falling off the kitchen counter, doors slamming. After three days, I made arrangements to go ahead and move in with her. I was convinced that somebody was breaking in and harassing her. She was convinced, however, that she was sharing the house with a ghost. I took off work the third day. It took me about eight hours to get everything moved in. I was taking a break on our bed when I felt somebody or something tug on my pant leg. I remained motionless, hoping that it would happen again. After a few seconds, it did happen again, much more aggressively this time. I felt a hand firmly placed on my leg just before it grabbed my jeans and started pulling. She was on the bed next to me, and nobody else was with us. We had no pets, as they weren't allowed. I immediately started having the same experiences throughout the night, as she had described over the phone. 
It was like somebody was destroying our kitchen, but nothing was ever out of place. There was running, as she described, which sounded like a smaller person, perhaps a child. I woke up one night to somebody standing next to my bed. I heard giggling, and then the individual bolted out of the room as I turned my head. It was too dark to notice any features. Over the course of eight months, many unusual things happened. To make a long story short, I'll skip ahead to my last experience, and perhaps the most frightening. I was alone in the house, waiting to join an online seminar. I was sitting on my couch with my laptop on the coffee table ahead of me. I heard the back door slam shut, and a person began running through the house. These footsteps were heavier, and this person was moving quickly. Given the design of our small house, this person was running in my direction. I shot up and ran out of the house, and I didn't stop until I reached the street, and that's where I remained until my wife returned. As I was standing by the street, I was looking back into the house. A balloon from a recent party made its way from the kitchen into my bedroom, then back into the kitchen moments later. It felt like I was watching somebody search for me, going room to room, all while holding this balloon. This was the last thing that happened to us, and it stopped after that. We continued living there for another four years. I would give anything to experience it again. I would try to be less afraid, and I would approach the situation more analytically. My wife, on the other hand, was never afraid of it. Unfortunately, my wife passed away a few years ago, but I know she would have enjoyed sharing her story. I still drive by that house occasionally, and nobody has ever moved in. Growing up, my family seemed to have a knack for picking haunted houses or haunted locations. Being a military kid was part of that. We got sent to old parts of the bases that we lived in all the time. One was the entire section of houses, which was haunted by what the wives and my mom deduced was some kind of civil war general. There was one base in particular that we lived on twice in my life. This was the second time when I had studied more of the paranormal and it was really interesting. It was a young house, one of the newer ones, which had been built in the span between when we had moved from and back to the base. My old childhood home was long gone, but my mom still thinks the general makes his rounds. This house had something else. Both my mom and I have a knack for telling if a house is haunted. To us, it won't feel empty. A haunting, free house feels more like a vacuum of space. I always get the sense that something will peek around the wall at me when I look through the windows if something's there. At the house we lived in, I would always get the sensation that something was standing behind me. Like in the horror movies, where you see the ghost behind the character, but then they stand up and it's gone. For fun, I called the ghost Johnny, as in Johnny Rebel, seeing as how it was Virginia and probably another Civil War ghost. One night, I was laying in bed, and I heard what sounded like pacing up in the attic area. It was frantic pacing, like someone was unhappy with something or panicked. The activity was ramping up a little, so my mom and I did a mini investigation. We opened up the attic door and my mom stuck her head up there. Immediately, she called down to my dad, asking if he had put the Christmas decorations up there. He did, and we both shared a knowing look. She took the decorations down, and the activity immediately settled down. When my dad was promoted, we were moved to a new house just a short walk from the old one. My mom came to me one day and said that she had had a dream. In her dream, it was the dining room from the previous house, 
and a little boy was sitting at the table, dressed in 18th century clothing. She said he looked up and had blood coming from his eyes and mouth. She started yelling at him to leave. She said that he looked startled and said, but I don't want to leave. We both agreed it was an odd dream. And as I thought about it, I looked up yellow fever, knowing that it was a sickness prominent during that time frame that the boy looked to be a part of. I didn't think it would turn up what I found. Not only had there been a yellow fever epidemic in that area in the 1800s, but there were two stages of the disease. If you got the second stage, you would bleed from the eyes and mouth. I told this to my mom, and we came to the conclusion that Johnny was probably not a Civil War soldier, but a little boy who died of a terrible disease and just wanted his space to be left alone. My story is about the house I lived in until I was five. My dad lived there after the divorce, and I visited often. It had been a family house on my dad's side of one kind or another since the late 1940s. It's also a house that's haunted. The whole family has ghost stories, most people more than one, and most of them involve the staircase that goes to the second floor. It's the first thing you see when you walk into the house. The staircase has been replaced six times, and I'm fairly sure that that's not normal in any house. Family legend says that the house, which was built in 1920, was the site of a murder side in the early 1940s. Supposedly, the owners right before my grandparents told them that the owners before them were a young man and his new wife, who were hoping to start a new family. The story goes that the husband came home from work early one afternoon and went upstairs looking for his wife. One of the bedrooms has a door that opens directly to the top of the stairs, which was also my bedroom as a kid in the 70s. As he comes up the stairs, he's treated to an ever-expanding view of his wife and the neighbor guy having a good time in the guest bed. Instead of yelling or anything, he quietly goes downstairs into the back room, grabs his hunting rifle, and then goes back upstairs where he kills the wife and the neighbor. Then he calmly gets a length of rope from the garage and hangs himself from the second floor banister in the stairwell. The house sat empty for a while. The next family, the one selling the house to my grandparents, got the house for dirt cheap. They redid the stairwell, staircase number two, and supposedly lived there 18 months before deciding to sell. My grandparents didn't really think much of it, mostly because they were pregnant, had three kids, the house was cheap, and they were poor. They went on to have nine total kids, and every single one of my aunts and uncles has stories about ghosts in that house. I have over 40 cousins, and they all have stories about ghosts and unexplained events in the home. Most of the stories involve seeing a hanged man, or a dark shape in the stairwell, a young nervous woman on the second floor, or an older woman that tends to sleeping children. Some experiences involve strange occurrences, like furniture and items that move or break when no one else is in the room. Some of the stories are scary, some are nice, but everyone has at least one, and usually they have several. After graduating high school, I was in and out of college and in and out of jobs. For a short period of time, I lived in this house during a summer when I was between jobs. My grandfather and my dad technically lived there, but stayed with other family members and girlfriends and were almost never home. A friend of mine was with me on the night that some weird things happened. She didn't officially live there, but she was basically living with me. I had told her about all the ghost stories and paranormal stuff, and we decided to dig out my grandmother's old Ouija board, the same one that I have now, and try to contact the spirits. We get everything out, put our fingers on the planchette, 
and nothing happens. The planchette doesn't want to move. So we set the mood, get out the incense, light the candles, and nothing happens. By now, I'm bored. It's 3 a.m., it's summer in New York, and it's kind of stuffy and hot inside. So I decide that I want to go to the back porch where it's cooler. My friend agrees, and we get up, leave the board on the bed, and as we're grabbing shoes, we hear something fall off the bed. It's the planchette. We both jump up and then laugh because it was obviously on the edge and just fell, right? Except we were both pretty sure the planchette hadn't been anywhere near the edge and had in fact been in the very middle of the bed. We try and nervously shrug it off and then we're like, ooh, maybe it wants to talk to us. Being silly, we decide to ask one more question before we go out. This time, the planchette wants to move and starts circling as soon as our fingers touch it. Before we finish the question, what is your name, it goes to no. We laugh. Okay, all right, you don't want to tell us your name. How old were you when you died? Planchette slips quickly across the board to no. Fine, all right, all right, what message do you have for us? Again, it goes straight to no. Now I'm figuring by this point it's my friend pushing it, because this is not any weak, tentative moving around the board. It's forceful, and she is known for kind of messing around. So I basically grab the planchette and half jokingly, half seriously, throw it next to her on the bed. I was a little bit miffed at her for pushing it around and not giving it a chance. Besides, if you're going to be so obviously pushing the planchette, you should at least make the answers interesting. I say, I'm done, that was fun, but let's go to the back porch and smoke. As soon as I stand up, we hear the sound of a door slamming downstairs so hard that the windows rattled from the force of it. There are only three doors downstairs. The ones to the front door and back room had been closed and locked for hours, and the bathroom door was a piece of crap that could barely close, let alone slam. My dad and my grandfather were out of state visiting relatives, so I knew it wasn't them coming home. Neither of us wanted to go check on what had made the noise, but we left the room, and we went to see that the stairwell was oddly dark. It was like all the shadows had just collected there, like that part of the room was way darker than the rest. It was just so pitch black in that stairwell that I couldn't see beyond the first step of stairs. The rest of the landing is lit normally by some moonlight coming in the lone window on the second floor landing. But it just seemed as if that bit of light stopped at a wall as soon as it reached the stairs. The dark cloud in the stairwell seemed to move and shift a strange inky blackness that looked thick. At this point in time, the stairs are a wrought iron spiral staircase that my dad had put in. This was the fourth time the stairs had been replaced. They weren't very safe to climb down even when you could see. So I inch to the center of the room and pull the light switch so we can see what we're doing and not break our necks on the staircase. And of course, the light pole comes off in my hand. No light. I look to my friend thinking, okay, the roiling pitch black shadows in this stairwell must be my imagination. She can probably see just fine, so I would just follow her down. But no, she's staring at the stairwell with wide eyes full of terror. She turns to me and says, why the hell is it so dark? At this point, I realize that she can see it too. So I push her back into the room and slam the door shut behind us. I had one of those push button locks, so I quickly locked it. I turned back into the room and my friend is stock still staring at the floor by the bed. The Ouija board and the planchette are sitting perfectly centered on the floor. The planchette on no. And that would normally be fine, but we were sure that we had left the Ouija board in the middle of the bed with the planchette a good few feet away from it. I have never done a room cleansing and protection and closed a Ouija board so fast in all my life. 
We went on the rest of the night chain smoking, huddled in a corner, twitching and just trying to tell each other happy stories. Morning comes and of course everything is fine and normal and we laugh at ourselves because it was probably just the nerves and staying up too late. By the time the coffee was done brewing, we had all but convinced ourselves that everything that had happened was due to overactive imaginations. We go to the backyard to check the vegetable garden and hang out on the porch drinking coffee. We find some crushed tomato plants next to the tree by the porch. And then we find some cigarette butts in a spot behind the tree where you can see my bedroom window, but can't be seen in the dark. I guess it's a good thing we didn't go out at the witching hour. Coincidence, overactive imaginations, still freaks me out to this day. In a weird way, it was like the house was protecting us, like it knew that we shouldn't go outside. I've looked for years trying to find any shred of truth to the murder side story. I was able to find that the house was built in 1920, and although I can't find any paper evidence of specifically a murder side, a search of the county coroner's records do show gun murders and hanging sides in that town in the 1940s. In town, the story was common knowledge. Everybody in the family knew it. The neighbors knew it. Was it true? I don't know. I would think that there would be more records of something as sensational as that, especially in the early 1940s. However, while researching the history of the house, I did find another true tale that's even older, from a regional newspaper dated March 16th of 1896, which is coincidentally the same day I found the story. It read, killed a woman and himself. Thomas P was enraged because Minnie M scorned him. Thomas P killed Minnie M this morning at the farm half a mile north of here and then killed himself. Both were in the employ of Mrs. M. He was infatuated with her, but she gave him no encouragement. He threatened a few days ago that he would kill her. The farm mentioned in the article is where my house was built, and the street is named for the family that owned the farm. This story is definitely not the only paranormal experience that I've had, but it certainly was a unique one. I have a guardian ghost, or at least I think so. As long as I can remember, there have been weird things happening in my house. As a child, my parents purely blamed it on my imagination, but it continued and got even more visible during my teenage years. While a lot of the things that happened belong to another story, I'll concentrate on the very nice dude that seems to live there with us. He made his first appearance when my step-siblings and I were about five years old. I remember vividly playing hide-and-seek with them, walking into my room and seeing a ball rolling across the floor from behind the sofa. But nobody was hiding in that room. When I mentioned this to them years later, they confirmed that they also had had this feeling of another person playing with us. I've always heard footsteps in our house, up the stairs at night, behind me while walking up or down them. It was quite common. Then it started to become the whole house. When I was about 13, I used to spend about two hours home alone every day after school until my parents got home. Usually, I would spend this time in my room. What would happen every day is that I would hear somebody unlock the front door and walk into my living room. And every day, I would go downstairs thinking that one of my parents must have come home, but nobody would ever be there. It got me so paranoid that I started locking the door to my room when I was home alone, thinking somebody must be in the house with me. Then I started to hear breathing at night, in my room, like right next to my head when I was lying in bed. The first time it happened, I got so scared that I stuffed my blanket above my head. 
The next morning, I told my mom about it, who said that I must have just heard my stepdad snoring in their room. That would mean that I had heard that through multiple closed doors between our rooms. Sure, Jan. Anyway, the breathing started to get more and more common. Not every night, but quite often. Then there was the first incident that now, looking back, makes me think that this paranormal roommate had tried to protect me all along. When I was 14, I had a friend. As it turned out, she was a very toxic and backstabbing person, but I hadn't realized that yet. She was over at my house after school, and we were upstairs playing SingStar on my PlayStation 2. My mom came up to inform us that she would go to the store to get some groceries, and that we would be alone there for about a half an hour. This was okay with us. We waited until we heard her lock the front door, and then we closed the door to the room we were in and started to sing to all of our favorite 2000 hits. That was until my friend suddenly stopped and started staring at the door. I paused the game and asked her what was wrong, and that's when she just turned pale and told me that somebody had just knocked on the door very loudly. I hadn't heard anything, so I told her that she must have just heard something else. We continued our game, and about a minute later, the same thing happened. My friend stands there, just frozen, completely panicked, telling me that she needs to leave the room immediately because something is trying to get inside. Great logic, by the way. But I, who still hasn't heard anything, slowly opened the door. Nothing was there. My friend wanted to go downstairs, which we then did. But when we got to the middle of the staircase, she starts screaming. Of course, both of us start running, me being scared because she's screaming like bloody hell. Our first instinct was to open the back door and run outside where we waited for my mom to come home as my friend refused to set foot in the house again. When she calmed down a bit, she told me that when walking down the stairs, somebody started talking right next to her, right into her ear. Needless to say, she never visited again, which was good knowing now all the things she did later on. Anyway, I was very paranoid still that somebody might be in our house. Right under my window was our back door, which I didn't trust one bit when it came to protecting us from an attempted break-in. Every now and then, when I was lying on my bed at night, I would get afraid of any noises coming from that direction, because oftentimes it sounded like somebody was trying to open it. But any time I got scared by it, this breathing would start again, and eventually it didn't feel scary anymore. It started to feel like somebody was trying to comfort me, trying to tell me that everything was okay, and that I wasn't alone. Which, looking back on it now, is not so comforting, because I was alone, but I digress. After what happened with my friend, I was glad to change schools. At my new school, I avoided topics like ghosts and stuff. I wanted to use the opportunity of making new friends without being the girl with the haunted house. Also, a part of me was thinking straight enough to acknowledge that the breathing only occurred when I was feeling scared, and might just be some kind of mental mechanism to calm myself down. That was until I had a sleepover with two of my friends at age 17. For reference, my room was kind of long. On the one side it had my bed, and on the other it had a sofa. There were like three meters between them. So Sarah slept on the sofa while Ella slept in my bed next to me. Next to my bed was a rocking chair that my grandpa had once gotten from a garage sale. Keep in mind that I hadn't told them anything that had happened to me in the last couple of years. Since it was the first time having them stay over, I wanted to be a good host and asked them how they slept. Ella didn't say anything, but Sarah said, Okay, I know this is gonna sound super weird, but I couldn't sleep for most of the night. It was like somebody was just breathing into my face, but when I looked, nobody was there. I was shocked, because this confirmed everything that I thought I had just imagined. 
Around this time, the thing with hearing the steps got worse. So much worse that my mom started asking me if I was jumping around my room in the middle of the night. My stepdad asked on several occasions what in the world I was doing in the kitchen at 3 a.m. because he kept hearing somebody walk around downstairs. I hadn't been doing either of those things. About two years had passed since the sleepover with my friends when Ella and I were talking to a friend of ours who had just gotten his first apartment. He told us to come over later on, and I jokingly asked him if he had any furniture yet or if we would have to sit on the floor. He then proudly told us that he even had a very cool rocking chair. That's when Ella told us that she hates rocking chairs because she had a really creepy experience regarding one. Our friend wanted to know what happened, so she started telling her story. Well, I spent the night somewhere and there was a rocking chair in the room. When I woke up in the middle of the night, there was this tall stranger sitting on it, just watching me sleep. I was confused and said, that's so creepy, where did that happen? She said, it was at your place. And no, it wasn't my stepdad. Ella knows my stepdad and he isn't that tall. And also he wouldn't just be sitting in our room in the middle of the night. I wanted to get more information about it, but she refused to ever talk about it again afterwards. That's why she had been so quiet that next morning. The following years continued as usual. I even started communicating with this ghost. Whenever I got scared and heard the breathing, it always made me feel calm. So I started thanking him for letting me know that everything was okay. And whenever I thanked him, the breathing stopped. I once saw the guy that Ella mentioned too. I was walking down the hall past an open door and there he was just standing, a tall man with some kind of hat. I could only see the silhouette and I left as fast as I could because it was still kind of creepy. Later on, after finally believing the stories that I had told them, my parents became more aware of everything. Even after I moved out, my stepdad continued to tell me that there was some ghost guy living with them. Like, yeah, I know, I've been telling you for years. On the rare occasions that I am at my parents' house, he rarely makes his presence known to me. Sometimes I can see a shadow passing by an open door or something small, but my mom still sees him. She just decided to ignore him. We're still not really sure what this could be. I can rule out any deceased relatives as there aren't many and nobody has ever died in the house. My parents built the house, so we were the first to live there. I thought that maybe he was just attached to me and that when I moved he might follow, but he never did. I also don't think he's attached to the rocking chair because it started before I ever placed that in my room. I guess he just thought it was comfortable? I don't know. Still, I hope someday I find out where he came from and why he's in our house. There's a little boy that inhabits my mom's house. My mom has owned her home for 18 years now. There have always been small, bizarre occurrences around the house, the kind that you can explain away or simply ignore. Things falling off of counters or going missing, strange noises or that feeling of being watched, footsteps down the hallway all the time. We never talked about it and I never felt scared or even had any idea that our house was actually haunted. Until one night. The bathroom at the house is located at the very end of a long hallway, and my bedroom is directly next to it. It was summertime, and I was about 14 or 15, that age where you would stay up talking to your friends on the phone all night. I was on the phone with my best friend. It was 4 a.m when I distinctly heard footsteps running down the hallway, into the bathroom, and the bathroom light clicks on. Immediately, I get up to check out what's going on, thinking that maybe it's one of my younger sisters. 
If somebody like my younger sister was running to the bathroom at 4 a.m., obviously something is wrong and I wanted to help. Maybe 10 seconds elapsed before I look into the bathroom. There's nobody there and the light is on. I check on my sisters and my mom. Everybody in the house is sleeping like the dead. I'm absolutely horrified and my friend on the phone experienced the whole thing with me. The next day I told my mom. She tells me that she knows the house is haunted by a little boy in a red sweater because she has seen him herself running down the hallway. Years later, my stepdad on one end of the hallway and my mom on the other both see him again, the boy in the red sweater. He yells like a child playing and runs down the hallway into the bathroom and then he disappears. Something about this is just inherently sad to me. The idea of a child stuck in a purgatorial loop. What was he running from? What was he running to? Who is he or who was he? And what happened to him? I bought my first house nine months ago. It's a huge accomplishment for me. On the evening after I closed on the house, I had a little champagne toast in the new place. I invited my boyfriend, my sister, we'll call her Jenna, her four-year-old daughter, we'll call her Mary, my best friend, Aunt T, and my son and brother who live with me. It only lasted an hour or two. I gave everyone the tour, my best friend and Jenna wanted to stop in every room and talk about my plans for it. I ordered pizza. Like I said, we had a small champagne toast. My niece, Mary, had a great time running through the house. She and my sister have a 700 square foot apartment, so my place seemed huge to her. Mary loved my room. I have a closet in my room with a built-in pedestal kind of thing, so we sat her on it and joked that it could be her room. All in all, it was a good time. Everyone who didn't live there headed out at about the same time, starting with Jenna and Mary. It was a school night after all. Not even five minutes after Jenna and Mary left, my sister calls me, still driving home. She sounds shaken, and I was worried for a second that her car had broken down or she got into an accident, but no. Jenna said that she had asked Mary if she'd had a good time and if she liked Aunt Dee, that's me, and my new place. Mary said, yeah, I had fun with Aunt Dee, Aunt T and the little girl. My sister said she actually pumped the brakes on the car because her instinct was to stop the car in its tracks. The thing is, there were no other children in the house that night, just Mary. Jenna's not trying to scare Mary, but she wants to know more. So very gently, she asks, Oh, what little girl? Mary says, The one that was standing behind Aunt Dee all night. My sister presses her a little more and asks Mary what the little girl looks like. Mary says she has long black hair and she had on a pretty blue dress. My sister asked if the little girl had spoken to her. Mary said no, she was really shy, but they had fun chasing each other through the house and the little girl was sitting in her house, AKA my closet, when we opened the door. Mary hesitated to walk into the closet at first and I didn't know why. Now I know. So apparently I have a little ghost girl in my house. She likes my closet and me. My house was built in 1900, so it does have a long history, but I haven't looked into it yet. I haven't heard or seen a thing in this house since I moved in but I did not sleep well for the first few nights. My house has always kind of had weird, unexplainable events happening in it, but nothing worthy of really telling. I've heard sudden scurrying footsteps, slight banging in the kitchen, stuff like that. I don't know where it comes from or why it happens, 
but I usually just figure it's a ghost. Today, though, another weird event happened, except that it was way worse than anything else. I was home alone while my dad was at work. I slept very late the night before, so I was still asleep late into the afternoon. I woke up at about 12.30 p.m. to my dog barking. I sleep with her in my room, so it woke me up instantly. She was on the floor in front of the bedroom door. I went over to comfort her to make her stop barking. I didn't really think much of it. I figured she had just heard a noise outside. So I picked her back up, checked the time, laid down and turned over to try to continue sleeping. I was slightly worried because her barking usually means that she heard something loud. But I tried not to think about it and went back to sleep. I suppose it's also worth noting that I was facing the window next to my bed when I fell asleep. About two or three minutes later, I heard loud footsteps in the grass outside. My dog started barking again, so I tried to silence her out of panic. It sounded like it was right by my window. A big black silhouette sprinted past the window. My window has blinds over it, so the details were obscured. The window is about four feet tall. If you were five foot tall and stood by the window outside, your head would barely be visible. But this silhouette covered the entire window top to bottom. So given the height of the window and all that, and based on what I could see, I figured this thing had to be like 10 to 11 feet tall. It was also about as thick as a third of the window. Whatever it was, this thing was huge. It basically looked like a tall rectangle running by. There was a small crack in the blinds near the bottom where you could peek out and see outside. I only had time to glance at it, but I saw the color black, probably part of that figure. Another thing about the footsteps, I didn't hear any footsteps indicating that somebody was approaching. The sound of the footsteps basically just appeared next to my window and quickly faded out as soon as the thing passed by. There was no sound indicating that it had run off either. It just stopped. It was like it only existed to pass my window and then vanished. I heard some leaves crunching when it ran by, so I definitely would have heard it if it had approached or departed in the same way. This all happened in the span of one or two seconds. I was scared, so I picked up my dog and stared at the crack in the blinds for about a minute, expecting to see something happen again. Nothing did, so I just went back onto my bed and decided to call my dad. I asked him if he could come pick me up and take me to his work since I didn't want to be home alone anymore. I tried to whisper and tell him everything that had happened. He agreed and began to drive to the house. It took about a half an hour. I just sat on the bed, trying to calm myself with phone games. I occasionally looked over to see if anything happened, but luckily nothing did. Eventually, my dad came home. I left my room to go talk to him about what had happened. And apparently something else happened that I didn't know about. Outside, on the porch, we have a big umbrella pole placed inside of a hole in the wooden table so that it wouldn't fall over. It's been through extremely windy nights, but it's never fallen over. The umbrella is practically embedded in that little hole, so it's very sturdy. My dad told me to look outside. The entire umbrella was on the ground, as though somebody had pulled it out and then tossed it there. The wooden table was still oriented upright, so the umbrella wasn't just knocked over. If it were, the table would have fallen with it. The only thought that I have is that the weird creature I heard is what knocked over the umbrella, or rather took it out and threw it on the ground. And that's when my dog first started barking and woke me up. I probably just didn't hear it since I was asleep. I left to my dad's work and I'm still there telling this story. I honestly don't know what's happening. I don't know if it's haunted, I don't really know what's going on, but I definitely feel unsafe at home.
I first want to talk about the recent experience I had at my house while I was trying to astral project. I was laying down, doing the techniques, when I suddenly hear somebody breathing right next to me and my dog. At first I thought it was my dog, since sometimes he moves around in his sleep. And I think he has nightmares. While I'm hearing the breathing, I look at my dog, but I can hear him breathing and it's a different pattern than the one that was right next to me. My next experience haunts me to this day. I was in bed when my dad and I hear the gate button being pressed. It connects to an iPad. We ran downstairs to investigate since we suspected that it might be the police. We open the app to see that it's a black screen. Peculiar, but it was because of the Wi-Fi. For some extra context, the gate camera will snap a photo of the person who pressed the button to be let in. It took two photos. My dad and I went to the windows to see any lights, but there were none. There was nobody in the photo. The next experiences somewhat relate to each other. This happened when I was walking home from school. I was strolling down my road when I hear someone yell, Hey! I turned to see if it was my neighbor, since we have a few houses on the small patch of road. No one was there. I walked next door to see if anybody was home there, but nobody was. The second thing that happened was I was walking in the forest on my property. I was walking on this little trail when I hear snap. Not like a twig, it sounded like a firm finger snap. We have tenants down in the yard, but how they could snap so close to me when no one was there is beyond me. It had to have been somebody standing right next to me. It wasn't an echo or anything like that, but nobody was there. The last experience has given me a wider sense of the paranormal. I was dragging the lawnmower when I hear an old woman's voice say, Hey! I turn to see nobody there, so I keep dragging it. Then I hear, Stop! It was so loud that I dropped everything and had to look. Nobody was there. I want to be honest. We do have a tenant downstairs, but why would she be yelling at me? I kept dragging the mower, and then I heard mumbling, and then the voice disappeared. What's even creepier is that my neighbor's grandmother lived in this house. When she died, I think he just decided it was better off cutting the property in half, sell one side, my house, and then make his house on the other. So, maybe it was her thinking that I was him or not being happy I was in half of her house. In any case, it's definitely been interesting. Most people would be thrilled to move out of a haunted house. But for Reddit user Kate the Girl Who Dreams, moving out of her haunted house was different. Here's her story. So my boyfriend and I had been living in this house for a few years. He had gone overseas for a little while and then returned. A few months later, and we started to pack our bags for the move into a new place. When we finished packing up the boxes and clothes, my boyfriend did something I didn't expect him to do. He put his hands together and thanked the ghosts for helping us, and then said his goodbyes before leaving the room. He said he felt sad, and it would have been a lie if I had said I didn't feel the same way. For years, activity in that house had rather frightened him. It upset him as well, and a few times it was so bad that he cursed at them within the room as activity occurred which is why his last action in that room surprised me. I felt that they had been heavily misunderstood, the spirits or whatever. Throughout the years, they had told me a lot about themselves. I had gathered a lot of EVPs and photos from the house. It was a love-hate relationship with them. At times, they would warn me of somebody around me. I don't really know if it was because I was the only tenant who was constantly there and who actually spoke to and got anything on them. One time I was at work, and a customer said that he saw something like a little boy next to me. 
I started to recall the little boy entity who was in the house I lived in. I did a spirit box session later, and I asked if one of them had followed me to work. The little boy's voice actually responded and said, Yes, only me. I get that it was scary for some, but moving away from the haunted house was also something that felt rather saddening and freeing at the same time. It's nice in the new place. The first day and nothing paranormal had happened. A rather quiet night of sleep. It feels nice, and yet strange at the same time. Oddly lonely, but it's something my boyfriend and I will get used to. The only thing is, my boyfriend brought a piece of jewelry that one of the entities really liked with us, so we'll see how that turns out. But for now, it's quiet and peaceful, bittersweet, but still a nice change from everything that was going on before. Time for newer and better things, a change of scenery. My house was built in the 70s, not particularly new, not particularly old. We moved here in the early 2000s. I don't really know any of the history behind the house. We've always joked that there were ghosts here, doors slamming shut, creaking, and things randomly disappearing have always been blamed on ghosts. But around five years ago, it started to get a bit more aggressive. Sounds of light footsteps could be heard in the hallway, scratching from the second floor and from inside the wall. We have no rodent or pest problems, we checked, so it seems unexplainable to the entire family. Then, one day, about three to four years ago, I was home alone, sitting in the living room, when a loud bang happened on the second floor. It was so loud that I was worried the upstairs cabinet had fallen down to the floor. When the bang hit, my lights flickered and the TV turned off and then back on. I could feel the shake all the way from downstairs. I went up to check what had happened, but everything seemed the same. This has happened several times and it is almost entirely identical. A loud bang, a shake, flickering lights, but nothing really happening. What makes this worse is that you can't hear it when you're upstairs. You can only hear it when you're downstairs. I've had people on the lower floor call my phone when I'm upstairs saying, stop slamming the door so hard, when I'm laying silently in bed and I can't hear it. In the past year, I started to actually see things. I thought I was just imagining them at first. At one point, I saw a toddler sleeping in my brother's bed. I saw her very clearly. She was young, maybe three years old. She had long blonde hair and her arm hung over the edge of the bed. When I approached her, she disappeared. This was probably a year ago, but it still spooks me. Then a few weeks ago, I encountered her again. I was home alone when somebody knocked on the door. I was a bit confused as I wasn't expecting anyone. As I approached the hallway, I heard the door closing and a young girl say, hello, like she had just come home and was announcing her arrival. I felt chills run down my back, but I still opened the door to look. My brother is five and I thought maybe he had just come home early, but nobody was there. I closed a door today, like properly shut it, and then she opened it again and when I looked at the open door, she shut it. Now I'm hearing banging sounds from downstairs and I don't know what to do. The dreams that I get in this house are always so vivid too, compared to when I'm not at home. Sometimes I wake up with the sheets off my bed and the blanket on the ground because I sleep so uneasily. This never happens when I'm out of the house though. Anyway, I don't really know what to do. I don't think speaking to her works. I tried, but then she just stops being noisy for a bit and then it picks back up. 
I really have no idea what's going on. I was 13, soon to be 14, when I moved into this house. I was always very connected to the spiritual world because my mom was a very strong believer, and I was very curious about this topic. Everything was quite normal when we moved in, even though I had a weird feeling about a corner in my parents' room. That corner gave me a feeling of fear. Whenever I came into my parents' room, I got this unwelcoming feeling and an urge to leave, but I didn't think too much of it until I started to feel like I was being watched whenever I was home alone. The first time I really thought about the house being haunted was when my mom told me that for a second, she had felt like time stopped and she heard a male voice asking for help. At first I thought she was just trying to scare me, but she was genuinely very concerned about it. Even though that was pretty scary, my mom and I decided not to pay attention. We thought that if we just ignored it, it would stop and go away. A few months passed and nothing happened, at least nothing like what my mom had experienced. I still felt like I was being watched and I just couldn't stay in my parents' room, but the energy was really off. I was really depressed and my mom and dad started to fight a lot. My mom and I started to fight too. My mom was also feeling depressed, and our life just took a downhill turn since we moved. Everything got worse when one of my cats died. After my little buddy died, I started to feel the strong smell of cigarettes and men's perfume and a masculine energy around the house. It wasn't the perfume or cologne that my dad used. My mom came to me asking if I had started smoking. And I said, no, of course not, but that I had smelled the same smells as well. Then my mom told me that she had started to have these weird dreams about a man. I have to admit that while I felt very afraid of what was going on, I also felt this weird excitement to know more. And I started to do more research about paranormal activity. Now, I don't know if that triggered it to get worse or not, but boy, did it. I was now constantly feeling observed and oppressed. Then, one afternoon, when I was home alone, I was talking to my friend on the phone when I suddenly heard a loud noise coming from the front door. My dog started barking like crazy, and I immediately thought that somebody was trying to break in. I slowly went there to see what was going on, and I quickly discovered that there was nobody outside. I really started to freak out. I went back into the living room and continued to talk to my friend to calm down. I hear another loud noise. The door of my parents' room had just closed itself. I opened it to see if the window was open, trying to find an excuse for what had just happened, but the window was closed. At this point, I was losing it. When my mom got home, I told her what had happened. She told me to just ignore it, that if there was something in the house, it was just trying to scare me and that if it was bad, it would feed on my fear. I thought that what she said was just a little too Hollywood, honestly, but I still followed her advice and played it cool. A little bit after that, on another afternoon, I fell asleep on the couch. I woke up with a loud, A, in my ear. It was the voice of my mom, and I swear to this day, I can still hear the voice of my mom in my head, crystal clear. I even thought that my mom was already at the house, but it turned out there was no one there. Then another cat died. Two years at the house and two of my cats had died. If I'm being honest, all I could think about was how in horror movies the pets always die. I was terrified of the house. I avoided it at all costs, and I didn't like to be home alone. I just couldn't handle the fear at this point. I constantly felt watched. I couldn't even go to the bathroom at night. It's like I wasn't even living in my house. I just felt extremely unwelcomed there. Then my mom started to have dreams about all of us being dead, and we always died in the worst types of ways. I was also having very vivid dreams. Some of them I remember clearly to this day. 
My mom then decided to do a cleansing to the house and everything calmed down for a while. Then my mom told me that when she was trying to put my little sister to sleep, she made a gesture like she was offering her pacifier to someone. And when she asked her, she told her she was offering it to the lady. My mom completely froze and didn't say anything. I wasn't sure what to think anymore. And by now, those things just started to feel really normal. I was scared, but curious. And I wanted to see something, not just hear it or feel it. Through the whole time that this was going on, I felt excited to see something. Even though I wasn't sure how I would react, I still wanted it. Well, that day came when I was trying to sleep in my room. Everything was dark and I was facing the ceiling just whispering the lyrics of a song to try to get to sleep. I wasn't thinking about anything paranormal. And the funny thing is, in the moment when things were happening, I was never even thinking about the paranormal as a cause either. But I saw this light come from the corner of my room. I quickly looked and faced it. And I felt it looking back. Even though it was just a light, I could feel some kind of presence in it. When I processed what it was, I gasped, and it moved fast to the left, then to the right, then disappeared. When I tell this, it seems like it lasted minutes, but the truth is it only lasted for a couple of seconds. It was super fast. I can't really explain what I saw. It was like a lantern, but alive. I don't really know. It was white, and unlike the other things that happened, this one actually didn't make me feel scared. I did a little Google search after that, and I found out that what I had seen is typically called an orb, and the color white meant protection. At this point, I was very confused, but I had this feeling that the thing that I had seen was not the thing that was scaring me. I thought of my uncle who passed away when I was seven. Maybe the orb was him protecting me from whatever was in the house, maybe not. All I know is that after that, everything calmed down. This was the last event that I can remember, and it happened in the very last year that I lived in the house. Shortly after all this, I moved. But now and then I think about that home. Why could I never go into my parents' room? Who was the man that asked my mom to help and appeared in her dreams? Was it him that made everything smell like cigarettes and cologne? Who was the lady? I never got any answers to these questions. One month after I moved, I had a dream. I was in my bed and I knew I was sleeping, but I could see my room perfectly. And I remember thinking that a bad entity was there. Then I saw a very bright light that covered my vision and I woke up feeling very protected. I think that was the last time that I felt like something was with me, at least at my house where I still live until this day. I have a lot of weird stories that have happened to me but anyway, I moved to the haunted house when I was almost 14 and left when I was almost 18. And never for a second did I think I was crazy, even though nobody believed me other than my mom. And I get it, it sounds like scary movie stuff. But I hope you'll feel differently and actually believe my story. Because it did happen. And I still really miss my cats. My life was always crazy, but never did I think it was this crazy. This is my story. It was a summer day in 2011. I was 10 and my dad had gotten with his ex-girlfriend. That's a story for a different time. She had two boys. One was a year younger and the other one was older. I had a little brother as well. Now that you know the family, let me give you a little bit of background to this bone chilling story. My dad was searching for a house to rent after breaking things off with my biological mother. And he found this house. And what's crazy is that my name is Ashley and it was off of Ashland Street. It seemed to be very cheap for the area. It was in a gated community. So of course it seemed very comfortable and safe. I mean, at least you'd think so. 
I moved with my dad into this house with his ex-girlfriend and her two boys, so there were four kids all together. We'll name them Kobe, the year younger, and Jerry, the older one, and then my little brother, Brandon. I have changed their names for privacy. It was an older house, so nothing brand new was built, but it was definitely pretty cheap. I mean, for a gated, high middle-class neighborhood. We moved in. I don't remember the exact date, but it was in the summertime. I live in Vegas, so the heat is sometimes unbearable. One day it can be 99, and the next it's 104. My dad wakes me up and is really excited about moving out and just being free. My biological mother was a freeloader and a real piece of work. My dad and I picked up all our boxes and we went to the house. Now this is the first time that I was seeing it, but of course my dad did a tour with the landlord. So I went through the place picking my bedroom and all the fun things you do when you move into a brand new house. I shared a room with my baby brother, Brandon. He was like four or five at the time, so really young. I got the room I wanted, I guess out of the three I could have picked. It was a four bedroom, three bathroom house, two upstairs and one downstairs. The first night wasn't anything out of the ordinary. We got Little Caesars pizza and watched Cops, my dad's favorite TV show. We went to bed and woke up like normal and went on about our day. Again, still really normal, nothing crazy. The second night was just as normal. It was about a week into living in the house when things started to happen. It was almost like the ghosts wanted to make sure we stayed or something. How sweet. So it was more like night eight and I was walking up the stairs. I was alone in the house and the stairs had carpet. I walked up them and I swear I kept hearing somebody walking behind me, but every time I would turn around, nothing would be there. I just kind of kept it to myself and told myself I was just paranoid for being at the new house by myself. I was the type of kid that was scared of the dark, and I still get scared easily to this day. I actually hate Halloween for that very reason. But these strange things just kept happening. The first spirit sighting was Kobe's birthday. He got a new spyware truck thing where you can put a camera on the toy truck and go around the house. It's kind of like a GoPro. Well, we decided to pull a prank on Jerry. So we put the camera in his room to prank him. He was asleep, so he would wake up and freak out that there was a camera. I mean, we were all under 12, so it was really funny to us, but that's not all I caught. I know the typical white woman in a white robe thing, I get it, but it was true. All we could see was a silhouette of a young woman, probably in her late 20s or early 30s, standing over him. Of course, as the two young boys were so sweet, they had me go up to check myself. So of course I went upstairs, a little spooked, but trying not to overthink it. And I went into his room. Jerry was still asleep and there was no woman in there. So I came downstairs and told myself that there's probably a glitch in the camera that just made it seem like somebody was there. So we all let it go. As some of you probably know, when you move into a house, especially an older one, the floor creaks and you might hear bumps in the night just because the furniture is settling, but only squeaks and creaks for a day or two. We kept hearing this noise, almost like somebody was walking up and down the stairs all the time. But again, we all just put it out of our heads and said that it was the house settling. Maybe something fell. No matter what, we would try to find an explanation for the situation. But over time, it just got worse. My dad had signed an 18 month lease agreement, but we only stayed there for four because this is when things got absolutely crazy. I went off to school. I was in the fifth grade. I had to repeat the second grade, hence why I was in the fifth grade at 10 years old. Anyway, my school was definitely a walkable distance, so I walked to school and back home. 
I got home one day and my dad's girlfriend was at work, and so was my dad. Kobe and Jerry were at their grandma's and Brandon was still in school, so I was all alone in the house. When I walked in, it was like something out of a horror movie. Picture this, you get home from a stressful day at school and when you open the door, it literally looks like somebody has robbed the place. The stove was on. Yes, the stove, like literal fire, was on. Of course, my immediate reaction was to call my dad and tell him what was going on. As I got into the kitchen, all the cabinet doors were open and most of the plates were on the ground, shattered. There was glass everywhere, even on the carpet. Thank God we didn't have any animals at the time. My dad, of course, got home with the cops and the cops came in and did an investigation, all to find out that there was no foul play, so there was nothing anybody could really do. So, of course, my dad's now ex-girlfriend blames me, but I told her that I didn't do it, that I came home to this. Unfortunately, my dad played right into her crap and believed her, so I was grounded for breaking her plates and causing a fire. I was so mad, but I was 10. What was I going to do, run away? I kept trying to convince my dad that I didn't do this, but pretty soon, he wouldn't need any convincing. While we were all downstairs playing and talking one day, upstairs in my parents' bedroom, there were three loud booms, all at one after the other. Just boom, boom, boom. My dad and his now ex and myself all ran up the stairs to find that my parents' bed was broken. It almost looked like somebody had jumped on it really hard, and that's how it broke. The mattress was caved into the bed frame. I just looked at my dad with a cocky attitude and said, so did I do that too? My dad actually apologized to me that night, but not his girlfriend. She never liked me, but that was another story, like I said. Under the staircase, we had storage. The door to that slammed, but the AC unit was close by the door. So I just thought that maybe somebody had left it open and the wind had pushed it shut. It wasn't a very heavy door. The next night was definitely one of the scariest nights of my life. It was around 8 p.m. and we were all settling down for the night. I had school the next morning as everybody was going to bed. It was around 10 going on 11. As I was about to sit on the bed, I heard two knocks on the door. I could see a shadowy impression of feet under the door. So when I opened it, it was confusing to see nobody there. I closed it again, thinking that it had to be one of my brothers playing a mean trick on me. Again, I scare easily, so that was their thing. I heard the knocks again, and like the first time, I opened it. But nothing was there, and I didn't hear anybody run away. I went to Kobe's room. He was fast asleep. Then I went to Jerry's room, but he was still awake. He told me he didn't knock or anything, and that he'd been in his room the whole entire time, but I didn't really believe him. I had no choice to just go back to my room and try to relax. Probably about another hour went by with nothing, no knocking or anything. But just as I had closed my eyes, I heard it again. I stood right by my door for about 10 minutes until the knocking happened again, and I immediately opened the door. Absolutely nothing. And then, in the silent darkness, I heard a giggle. I looked around the corner, and there was nothing there. Everybody was asleep, and nobody would have had time to get back to their bedroom. I just went to bed. I wanted it to be over so badly. The next morning, I tried to tell my dad what was happening, but he said I was just dreaming. I looked at him and said, so is the kitchen and the fire and the bed. That was all a dream too, right? Because we're all either having some really crazy Jumanji stuff happening or there's more to it. My dad just shrugged it all off and told me to get ready for school. So I did. Probably about another week later, I ended up staying the night at a friend's house. I'll call her Emma, just again for privacy reasons. So after school, I took the bus back to Emma's house. I decided to confide in her about what had been going on. 
Her mother was a medium, so I guess she could, like, speak to the souls that hadn't crossed over or something. Or, as she would say, departed. When I came in close contact with her, she looked at me with fear in her eyes. It was like she knew what was going on before I even told her. She told me that I had a very negative soul attached to me. It was a female soul. And all I could think was maybe it was my dad's ex or even my biological mother. Two really horrible females. But she said that it wasn't anybody I knew closely. And that's when I started to piece everything together. The woman standing over the bed. The fire. The bed breaking. The knocking. The giggling. It somehow all made sense in some way. This spirit was stuck. But my question was, how did she get there in the first place? My dad picked me up the morning after, and I discussed with him what I had kind of put together. He said maybe the landlord would know more. So I told my dad to give him a call and tell him the pipe was loose or something so he could come over and have a conversation. You know, trick him, I guess. If he doesn't want to go into detail about it, he's definitely not going to over the phone. My dad agreed and a few hours later the landlord arrived. My dad called me downstairs and we decided to go over everything with him. From the fire, to the glass, to the bed breaking, to the woman standing over the bed. All the color drained from his face and I immediately knew that he knew something. As we were all talking downstairs in the living room, there was this mirror on the wall in front of us over the television. We're sitting on the couch and as I looked up, I saw a lady wearing a very tall, almost like black witch hat, and she had very long gray hair. She just looked off, like I knew from somewhere, but didn't at the same time. Of course, I reacted very startled and my dad told me to relax. Like, yeah, dad, let me just relax while all this stuff keeps happening. Why don't I just tell the ghost to make us a campfire as well? He didn't find it funny and sent me to my room. The landlord eventually left and fewer questions were answered. It was like he didn't want to say anything. Like our house almost blew up into flames and there was glass all over the kitchen. This isn't the time for secrets. Anyway, we looked up the address on a background search for properties and we only found two things that could have been connected to this haunting. The first thing was that the entire neighborhood had been built on a Native American burial ground, but that seemed a little cliche, so we kept digging. And then we found something even sadder. A young couple was there. They had lived there once. They had two children. One day, out of nowhere, the dad came home drunk. He shot his wife and two kids, and then set the house on fire and shot himself. Unfortunately, the house did burn to the ground and their remains were never found, so nobody knew who they were. It made total sense. The fire that started, the loud booms, the knocking. It was a sick memory that I'll never forget. I really hope that family rests in peace. At least the wife and the kids. I can't imagine being taken out like that by your own father and husband. Anyway... That was the haunted house on Ashland Street. I've never been back since we moved out, and I'll never go back again. In this tale, Reddit user expert maybe 5106 tells an eclectic mix of tales that happened at their haunted house. Here are the stories. My house has been haunted all my life. It started in the apartment I lived in as a kid, but it followed me to where I'm currently living. In the past 10 years, I've experienced more paranormal activity than most people have in their lives. It started with an attachment I had from using a Ouija board at 11 years old. Since I have so many paranormal experiences to share, I'm going to limit this story to the things that have taken place in my current home, with a focus on the most significant things to take place here over the years. To preface this, I'd like to say that I'm a 21-year-old female, but when I moved into my current home, I was 13. 
I was living with both of my parents, four cats, and a dog. Now it's just myself, my dad, my girlfriend, three cats, and a dog living here. The history of the house isn't overly important. We bought it from a family, the woman that lived in the house had been moved to a hospice where she'd passed away, and her kids were selling her condo. Her name was Helen. That is as much significant history as there is to my current home. Outside of that, it seems that the entities in our home aren't necessarily attached to the location as much as they are attached to us. A little background on the spirits in my house. I know Helen is here. She has been heard by multiple people. She has a distinct old lady perfume smell and a calming feel that comes along with her. We also have an unknown number of spirits or entities in the basement. I have a hard time explaining them because I don't know if there are multiple male human spirits or one inhuman spirit making it seem like more than one. But whatever it is, it feels dark and masculine if that makes sense. Helen mainly stays upstairs, and whatever is dark typically stays in the basement. The main floor is typically more poltergeist-type activity. That being said, on to some specific experiences. I'm going to start with the most asked about thing that has ever happened to me. Anyone who knows me or hears about this asks me about it. So, one day I was probably around 14, I was in my bed late at night, responding to Snapchat streaks, but being a teen laying in bed, makeup probably off, I didn't feel like sending pictures of my face or really putting any effort in. But I also didn't want to just send a black screen. So I was taking pictures of my bedroom door because our hall light was on. After snapping and sending a few photos, my camera started to struggle to focus. It wouldn't take the picture because it just kept trying to focus. Finally, the picture took, and a dark black figure was peering in at me in the photo. It was out of focus, of course, but I freaked out. I looked up and saw nothing, so I snapped another photo, and that one came out clear, and there was no figure. At that time, I'd say that was the beginning of things taking a turn for the worst. A few days passed and I had gotten three scratches down my back in the shower. My aunt had heard about what I was experiencing and had a friend who was a Wiccan priest or something come over. I will say I wasn't necessarily open-minded to Wicca. It seemed like BS to me at first, but this man had told me that there are ways that we can open portals between our worlds and others, sometimes intentionally, but not always. He told me that candles give off a pure white light, but when set in front of a mirror, that light doubles and turns impure or dark. It's hard to explain, but as I understood it, a candle alone equals good, and a candle in front of a mirror equals bad. He said if you have a candle in front of a mirror and look into that, it can open a portal to darker dimensions. Again, as he was first telling me this, I was thinking that it was BS. But then I remembered. Just days before I had seen the figure in my bedroom, I had taken a photo sitting in front of my bedroom mirror with a candle darn near in my lap. He told me to throw a sheet over the mirror without looking into it and get rid of it or remove it, whatever I had to do. My dad did so, and the second the sheet covered the mirror, the power went out only in my bedroom. The rest of the house was fine. That was when I started to take this Wicca stuff more seriously. A little while passed and things seemed a little bit less dark or aggressive, but something was definitely still there. That's when the event occurred that caused us to call a priest to come bless our home and myself. I had been home alone one day and had an experience that is hard for me to explain. Other people will simply say that I was possessed for a few hours, but for me, it's more confusing than that. I have a lapse in time, in memory, where people are telling me that I did things that I don't remember doing. 
I remember being on FaceTime with my best friend. I had walked into my upstairs bathroom, which is weirdly a hot spot for activity in the house, the same room that I got scratched in. After walking into the bathroom, I don't remember anything else until hours later. So what I'm telling you from here until I snapped out of it was told to me by witnesses. My best friend said that while on FaceTime, the lights began to flicker in the bathroom and I just stopped talking and it was like I was staring up ahead past my phone. My friend asked me what was wrong and I responded with, I can't leave, there's someone blocking the door. Right away she knew something wasn't right and told me to just go out, but I guess I ended up hanging up the phone. We had another friend who lived like two blocks away from me, so my best friend called her and told her that she needed to go check on me. When she got to my house, she looked for me everywhere. Upstairs, main floor, basement, every room, but I was nowhere to be found. Just as she was coming down the stairs to leave, she saw me standing in the middle of the main floor. If you walked into my house, you couldn't have missed me. So she asked me where I'd come from and that she'd been looking for me. She said I responded so calmly and eerily that it wasn't even like it was me talking. I told her I had been in the bathroom and she said, no, you weren't. I just looked in there. Once she said that, she said that I completely changed and she could tell that it like enraged me or something. I told her that she needed to leave and apparently I even said, you aren't welcome here. Being a 14 year old girl talking to one of her best friends, that definitely wasn't like me. She tried to argue over leaving, but apparently the more she did, the more aggressive I got about telling her to get out. So out of fear, she left and she and my friends just kept trying to call and text me to snap me out of it. Three hours passed and no one knows what I was up to. But I posted a picture on my Snapchat story of myself in the mirror that was covered, you know, the portal mirror, with the caption saying something about it being time to stop being scared or stop running or something super creepy. The next thing I remember is sitting on the couch, and the best way I can describe it is this. It felt like waking up from a nap, except that I didn't remember falling asleep or even going to sit on the couch. After that, we did a little bit more research and we talked with the Wiccan priest. I ended up finding out that I had an attachment that I created, like I said, with that Ouija board at 11, and then I just strengthened it with the mirror portal. I was blessed and so was the house, and for a long time, things were better. My house, though, is still extremely haunted, and I could share a lot more about it. Little things here and there, like hearing a deep guttural growl coming from the basement stairs, my dog not being willing to go in the basement, hearing voices being touched, objects moving, stuff like that. But this story is about the craziest stuff that's happened to me. I work as a visual artist for the topmost financial company in India. I met this lady in the cafeteria who I was introduced to by another friend of mine. And as I got closer to her, she told me about her paranormal experiences that were so bad they made her want to commit suicide. This is not my experience, but her and her families. They are Muslims and a family of four. Three months before I met her, her father had passed away, so it was just the four of them. The mother and the two sons who are in school, and she being the eldest sibling. After her father had passed away, they had leased a massive house for one to two years, maybe more, I don't remember, with four bedrooms, spacious halls, and two floors. It was a really big house that was leased for a very reasonable amount. The thought that the kids would have so much space and fun in a big house like that was really endearing to her. 
So as soon as they start living there, a lot of strange occurrences took place right from the beginning. They heard screams, like really loud screams that scared everybody. They could hear footsteps and banging from the first floor. None of them had a clue what was going on. All of them were scared and panicked, and they never left each other. They slept in the halls together, and they never used any of the rooms. She told me that one night, while the boys were sleeping in the hall next to her, one got up screaming in the night. When they checked on him, half of his hair on one side of his head was gone, just half bald out of nowhere. Their kids started to suffer from panic attacks, and that was just the beginning. One experience that her mother went through made them decide to leave right away. While the kids were gone to school and my friend was at work, the mother was alone at home, cooking in the kitchen. She was just going about her day, and then all of a sudden she could hear somebody crying. She's confused and calls out to her daughter, thinking that she'd come home early from work, but she got no response. She goes back into the hall to check, and nobody's there. She goes back to the kitchen and continues cooking, when all of a sudden the sound of somebody crying becomes even louder. She sees something from the corner of her eye, on the ceiling, and notices that there is a lady sitting upside down on the roof, crying. The mother couldn't take it. She panicked and ran. She ran to her neighbor's house, which was quite far, and called her daughter. When she told them this, they all asked questions. The mother and daughter decided to go talk to the owner and tell him that they didn't want to live in that place anymore. The problem is, once you lease, you can't take back your security deposit until it's served its term, based on the contract. So they couldn't even move out because they would need more money to rent a different place. When they met the owner, he told them that he used to live in that house with his wife. She had committed side in that house on the top floor. Since then, he's been seeing her and hearing her walk around the house. So he doesn't want to live there anymore, but he never told anybody about it because he thought it would be bad for business. This family literally had no choice but to live there until they made enough money to move out, and it was hell. They've gone through so many messed up experiences, many that they don't even talk about, they even got a dog, which their neighbors advised, and the dog won't even go inside. He lives outside. They even called a Baba from the mosque to bless the house, but they still suffer and they still see the lady in the house. Nothing ever really worked out there, and three months after they started suffering, the mother died and the three of them moved out to a smaller home. That house has just been left abandoned since then and I think that's probably for the best. A Chilling Encounter I never really believed in the paranormal until something happened that I just can't explain. This occurred a few months ago, and I still get goosebumps thinking about it. I live in a small old town with a lot of history, and my house is pretty ancient too. One night, I was home alone as my family had gone to visit relatives. It was a stormy night with thunder rumbling in the distance. I was in my room upstairs, reading, when I heard footsteps on the stairs. I assumed it was just the house settling or the wind, but the sound was too rhythmic, too deliberate. I called out, thinking maybe my family had come back early, but there was no response. The footsteps continued, growing louder and closer, until they stopped right outside my door. My heart was pounding at this point. I mustered the courage to open the door, and to my shock, there was nobody there. I tried to calm my nerves, and so I went back to my room. And that's when things got even weirder. The room suddenly felt ice cold, and I saw my breath in the air, 
which is impossible in the middle of summer. The lights flickered and my bedroom door slammed shut on its own. I was frozen in fear. And then the most unsettling thing happened. I heard a whisper, but it was so clear, like someone was standing right next to me. It said my name, just once, in a breathy, drawn-out way. I can't describe how it sounded. It was like nothing I've ever heard before. I spent the rest of the night with the lights on, waiting for sunrise. The next day, I did some research and found out that a long time ago, someone had passed away in this house under mysterious circumstances. Ever since then, I've been both fascinated and terrified by the paranormal. I've never experienced anything like that night again, but it has definitely changed my perspective on things. It can't be easily explained. I'm curious to know if any of you have had similar experiences or any insight into what I encountered. Thanks in advance, and I look forward to hearing your theories. I used to live with my mom and her ex-boyfriend in a really big house. It was around 6,000 square feet and it gave me bad vibes from the very start. Whenever I voiced it to my mom and her ex, they would just brush it off and tell me that I was imagining things. They were always traveling and going places while I had to stay behind because of my job. I was okay with this. I enjoy being alone. I was about 19 and after my friends had left for the night, I did my nightly rounds throughout the house. I would always check to make sure that all the doors were locked and all the lights were off. Once I made sure of that, I went to my bathroom to get ready for bed. My bedroom was the only one on the main floor. It was a four bedroom house, meaning that there were three upstairs, one being directly over my room and bathroom. My room and bathroom are separated by a small hallway, which can be closed off by a sliding door meaning that there was a door to my bedroom and to my bathroom, which I always left open because I could close off that little hallway, so it was still private. I start washing my face, and as I'm doing so, I hear what sounds like footsteps directly above me. I freeze in place and listen. They stopped. I shrug it off and continue. It's late, and I'm just hearing things, so I go back to washing my face. Then it happens again, but this time a little louder. Again, I freeze. I know that I'm not just hearing things, but what can I do? They stopped, and so I went back to washing my face. Then it happened again. I stop again, and then I hear and actually feel one of the loudest bangs I've ever heard in my life. It was like a 400 pound person jumped off of a bed onto the ground. That's what I heard. I felt the rumble. If that wasn't enough, right after that, my bedroom door slammed shut. I'm freaking out at this point. And I run into my room to grab my machete. I thought that somebody was in my house. So I run to the kitchen yelling, whoever's in here, I'll kill you. I still have soap like dripping down my face onto the ground too. Seeing that all the doors are still locked, I run back into my bathroom and rinse off my face. I packed a bag and called my best friend. I told him what was happening and he says, get the F out of there. So I keep him on the phone as I finish packing a bag and get outside into my car. As I'm pulling out of my driveway, I notice something upstairs. Every single light is turned on. And I know for a fact that just 20 minutes before when I had checked everything, they were off. I didn't even think twice. I just kept reversing and didn't look back at the house. I've seen enough scary movies to know that there would have been a figure in one of those windows staring at me had I looked back. I'm sure of it. I went back the next day to see if somebody actually did break in, but there was no sign of forced entry. All the doors were still locked. Nothing was missing. All of the light upstairs had also been turned back off. 
Fast forward six months and we move out. My mom then tells me that the house was turned into a hospice after the original owner from the 1930s was widowed and got lonely. She turned the house into a place for those who didn't have any family to die peacefully, so they wouldn't be alone. That explains an awful lot. This is the true story of my childhood through adult years as I recount it. Rattlesnake Road is an original name to a road that has since been changed. I used it to maintain anonymity. I was born on Long Island, New York, and ever since I can remember, I've had really strange experiences. I was never able to sleep at night, and from a young age, I was always terrified of the dark. Yes, every child is afraid of the dark, but I was afraid for a reason that I was unable to explain until later in life. There are a few stories from while I was there, but I want to fast forward to when I was a little bit older and things began to make sense to me. My family purchased a second home and we moved to Colorado. We lived on a ranch located at the top of a hill that fed into the Rocky Mountains. There wasn't much around us, a few neighbors, our barn with our animals, and thousands of acres of hilly and mountainous terrain that surrounded our family. There was a long dirt road that led to our property, Rattlesnake Road. It was a perfect shot of the scenery leading up to our small three-bedroom home. It was quiet, peaceful, but the land was old. I was about seven years old at the time. This is when I began to understand what I was going through wasn't normal. Our home was small. It was a ranch style house with a three car garage, which took up half of the structure. The other half was built into the hillside where you entered from the front. You walked into the living room and you could see straight out the back sliding doors into the plains. In front of you was the kitchen, old with brick. Straight down the hallway, my room was on the right, my brother's room followed that, and lastly, my parents' room was on the left. The bathrooms connected and were on the right as well, wrapping around to the back of the house. I left the hallway lights on when I slept. I was scared to begin with, but something always felt as though it wasn't just our family there. One night, I was up and I couldn't fall back asleep. My parents and brother were sleeping as well. I could hear them snoring down the hall. My bedroom door was open and I was facing the hallway when suddenly the pull string to my closet made a click and the lights popped on. I could see the light making its way through the slatted shades of my closet accordion doors and my heart began to race. Then they shut off. The air in the room became cold, tense, almost as though the oxygen was being siphoned out. The silence set in. I couldn't hear the snoring anymore. I couldn't hear anything. I looked toward the hallway, and there was a short, black static mist. It had no facial features, but what I could see would have been a mouth. It seemed as though it was smiling ear to ear, which paralyzed me with an intense feeling of dread. It passed out my doorway and out of sight, not making a sound. Moments later, I heard what sounded like the door to our garage open and close, and the air lifted. All of my surroundings returned to normal. I knew I was awake. I knew what I had seen there and it visited me, only to get worse as time went on. That image will be burned into my mind for the rest of my life. I've lived in the same house for a decade now. 
the old lady who used to live here died and her best friend still lives next door. I'm not sure how long she has left, but this house has always been spooky. It's always cold. It's really old. And I have had a lot of weird experiences for years. It's very common for me to hear footsteps, doors opening and closing, and my cat staring at random corners. My front door once opened and slammed closed by itself, and my mother saw an apparition of a Victorian lady in the front hallway in the middle of the night. I was also once home alone showering downstairs, and I heard somebody aggressively pacing back and forth in my room opening and slamming my drawers closed. After a while, you get used to it, and you just accept the flow of things. For a while, the activity died down, and things seemed less scary. Plus, I moved away for university, so I got a huge break from the spooky stuff. But now I'm back, and the activity has spiked. A few nights ago, I was having a particularly hard mental health day, I was up at about 4 a.m., facing the wall, trying to sleep with my back to the door. My radio is always on at a low volume, and the music was playing, but I suddenly hear the voice of a woman behind me, almost groaning. It sounded like she was letting all the air out of her lungs, almost like wheezing. I freaked out, and when I looked, there was no one there. Yesterday, I was FaceTiming my boyfriend, and I heard footsteps in my house again, which I haven't heard in months. Distinct paces up the stairs, shuffling on the floorboards. I was genuinely scared, and even thought it was an actual intruder. But nobody was there. I'm scared that perhaps I'm manifesting something. I've never heard a woman before in this house, and the wheezing was so clear. I don't want to sound dramatic, but I'm scared of losing my sanity, and maybe I am, but my house has always been spooky, and this sudden spike has no real explanation. I'm going to try to smudge the house with some herbs that I gathered to feel a little bit safer. Hopefully, it works. My husband at the time and I had been married about a year when one of his friends told us that they were buying a house. Their rental house would be available and the rent was very reasonable. His wife's parents knew the owner of the house and he was fine with us moving in. We said yes, since we were happy to leave our small apartment. My husband told me that the house was pretty nice. He and his friend's band practiced there all the time. Weird stuff started happening right away. I worked and went to school during the day, while my husband was a working musician, so he was gone until very late. I woke up in bed one night, and I heard the front screen door spring squeak open. Oh, my husband's home, I thought. He put the key in the lock, opened the door, and quietly let the screen door shut. I was still in bed as I heard him walking across the living room, so I called out hello to him and told him he doesn't need to be quiet because I'm awake. He didn't answer, so I called out again. The house was quiet. I looked at my cat, who was in bed with me, and she was on high alert sitting straight up, eyes wide, staring at the bedroom door. I don't know how long we hid out in the bedroom, but some time later, the screen opened again, and it was all louder. The door unlocked, and it was my husband this time. These events happened quite a few times, but sometimes it was just footsteps. There were often crashing sounds in the house, like a broom handle hitting the floor. Cabinet doors would be opened, and small appliances would be turned on for no good reason. We started unplugging everything when we weren't using it to avoid this. Guests, and later roommates, also experienced the same things. The house had a reputation with the neighbors, 
who called it Tragedy House. Once I was sitting at the table in the kitchen, and a tall black thing flew from the wall behind me on my left, through the kitchen and out the outside wall. It happened in just a second, but I remember thinking it had to hit that wall, but it didn't, it just went straight through it. The house's owner, our landlord, told me that his wife had died while they were on vacation years earlier. She fell down some stairs, leaving him with three small children. He said that she loved this house. He would always say, I can still feel her here when I come in. You and me both, buddy. You and me both. This story comes to us from Reddit user Pineapple Juice. I believe I've told a story from them before, but here are some more tales from their haunted house. I was about nine when this happened. My mom, my sister, and I moved into this old house that was built before the Second World War. My great uncle, who was a veteran, told us stories about when it was in its glory days. Everybody in our town said the place was haunted. And that just put signals off in my head, especially when I remember driving past the front of the house and seeing a girl in the attic window. I eventually shrugged it off, but I still hated the house. I always felt like I was being watched, and I never felt alone. I was always uncomfortable, and I just hated it. I begged my mom not to move us in, but yeah, that didn't happen. Whether you believe in mediums or not, both of my grandmothers had a hardcore belief that we had medium blood or something like that, but that it skipped a generation. My room was the worst to be in, always freezing, always felt heavy, and always had something weird going on. My sister always hated going past my room to go to the restroom, and I always hated being in my room. When we first moved in, I would knock on the floor and something would knock back. I would grab midnight snacks and see shadow men and women and children out of the corner of my eye. One time, I was even making a sandwich and I saw a shadow man in the hall. I remember that I said hi and then continued making my sandwich. For some reason, I turned and the shadow man was maybe a foot away from me. It took me a moment, but then I ran to my room. Another time, I was sleeping in the living room. I felt a hand press against my back and heard light footsteps. It felt like a man's hand. My parents are divorced and no one had their boyfriend over. Another time, I had a few pieces of paper on the table in the living room. I made a joke that the ghost should move it. A moment passed and then the paper shot across the table and just stopped right on the edge. I jumped up and ran. Another time I woke up in my room and saw a girl in my doorway. And not like skin tone and hair color. She was translucent and gray with gouged out eyes and what I assume was blood going down her face. She had a dress on and a coat. I stayed frozen before I finally jumped up and moved past her. My sister shrugged it off until her boyfriend stayed in my room while I was over at my grandparents' house. He saw the same exact thing, but he shrugged it off until he heard about my story. What made it so much weirder is that what he described is the same girl from the window and the girl that was in my room. There are lots of little stories about this house, but hopefully you enjoyed those. Back in 2009, me, my mom, and my stepdad moved into a really old, rustic, rural cottage in England. My father had passed away not too long before, and this was going to be a new start for us all. The house was an absolute bargain. 
It had six bedrooms, two very spacious living rooms, and a huge annex at the back that was essentially a second house. We couldn't work out why it was so cheap. We went for the viewing and the family eventually told us that their elderly mother had passed away there peacefully in the annex, and they just needed to get away from the feeling of her. That probably should have been a first red flag. We weren't put off though, and we bought the house. From the beginning, it was unsettling. My parents didn't see it at first, but I was incredibly uncomfortable there. It was extremely unnerving and cold. Not to mention, it was isolated behind rows of trees and a very long driveway, so far away from anyone else. It started on the first night. My room was at the end of the corridor, and if you came out of my room, on the right was a bathroom and a locked door that led to the annex, the place where the elderly mother had died. My parents slept a long way down the corridor, in the last bedrooms, so I was quite isolated and directly opposite my room were the stairs. This first night, it was freakishly cold. I pulled my blankets up to my head, but after my dad passed away, I had suffered from insomnia for years, so the cold and the anxieties of moving to a new house all added together to create zero sleep. So I ended up laying awake for hours, just sort of staring around the room. My bedroom door was one of those old and mismatched wooden country house doors. It didn't quite reach the carpets. And after a few hours, I could hear the creaking of floorboards directly outside my room, and shadows that seemed even darker than the darkness of the hallway walking past my door. I presumed that one of my parents had gotten up to use the bathroom, at first. But this went on, back and forth, back and forth for several minutes and it was fast it was a very brisk walk not to mention next to my door was the locked door to the annex anybody walking at that speed would have hit the door but nothing it freaked me out and had me dreading the next night this kept happening every night for a few weeks and i remember vividly one night i actually left my bedroom door open Around the same time, as always, I heard the creaking. I turned around, and unmistakably, there was a figure, blacker than black, walking forward and backwards in front of the door, just visible in the darkness of the hallway. I couldn't take my eyes off it the entire time it was there. It's safe to say I never slept with the door open again after that night. But this is where things start to get properly creepy. I'd been terrified of this shadow for weeks now. There was a really horrible feeling that I had around it, like it was after me. And one night, as I was going downstairs for dinner, I had the same cold feeling. And for just a second, I froze in place in the dark hallway and looked to my right toward the annex door. And there, sure as anything, and without my sleepy eyes to blame it on, I saw the same black shadow walking directly at me at high speed. I ran downstairs as quickly as I could and I told my parents everything. They mostly laughed it off and didn't believe me and tried to reassure me that ghosts aren't real and there was no chance of anything about this old lady still being in the house. Now, a bit of backstory. This old lady was terrified of the previous owner's family dog, so much so that they had installed a pulley system in the house so she could pull a cord from her bedroom that would trigger an old bell to ring in the kitchen if she wanted anything. The whole system was still there when we moved in. And this night, the night after I told my parents, I was woken at around 2.30 in the morning by this bell in the kitchen ringing loudly and repetitively, like it was being pulled firmly and constantly over and over. I ran out into the corridor and my parents were there too, equally as confused and concerned as I was. We all looked at each other with ever-increasingly worried expressions and ran downstairs into the kitchen to see what was going on. As soon as we entered the kitchen, it stopped. We ventured up into the annex to see what could have caused this, but nothing, no sign of anyone. And my gosh, I hated it there. It was even colder and more lifeless than the main part of the house, 
and I just felt like I needed to leave as soon as I could. My parents didn't quite believe that this was a ghost yet, but they were clearly less skeptical than before. From here, any activity became much more obvious. All of us, my parents included, started to hear knocking from the annex door next to my bedroom. Noises from downstairs that sounded like someone was down there moving. Sometimes my fish tank light would flick on and off with an audible click and wake me up. And I would often even wake up to my wardrobe doors being wide open with no breeze in sight. One night, I was sat reading alone in my room, and one of these wardrobe doors opened by itself, wide and with relative force. I got up, cautiously, and closed it, and then I ran downstairs to see my parents. When I came up around 15 minutes later, every single cupboard door, around a dozen of them, were open as wide as they could go. Lots more went on too. Taps turning themselves on became a particularly regular occurrence, and one night, I awoke to the sound of my cupboard door opening again, and saw droplets of water running from the bathroom next to the annex door, all the way to a few feet from my bed, with no droplets out again. I was terrified. It was around six months after all this had started that we eventually moved out. My grandma had begun to grow unwell and couldn't care for herself anymore, and she moved in with us. From the beginning, she hated that house. My grandma was so incredibly sweet and calm, and I've never seen her distressed like she was there. On one night in particular, when I was sat downstairs in the kitchen with her, she took my hand, pointed directly toward the annex, and said, don't you go in there. I don't like it in there. It's safe to say this scared the crap out of me. On the last night we all spent together in the house, I was awoken by my mom screaming. Clear as day, she said she felt two hands firmly grab her ankles over the bed sheets and pull her down the bed just a few inches, and right there and then she asked to leave. We went to stay in our old house for a while, but because of size, my stepdad, the biggest skeptic among us, stayed in Lilac Cottage for a few more months. He's still quiet to this day about that house. He hates talking about it, but even he admits that there was something incredibly wrong there. And without much warning, he put the house up for sale, selling it so desperately that he lost almost a quarter of the price he paid for it, and he's never told us why. I've promised myself that one day I'll reach out to the current owners of that house and see if they have also experienced anything, but I haven't, at least not yet. In this story, Reddit user Pineapple Juice tells us some strange tales about the house she grew up in. Here's the story. So back when I was about to start second grade, me, my mom, and my sister had to move to the next town over because my sister had gotten into a fight. This was the town my mom grew up in and where my grandparents lived. I don't know why, but my mom kept on choosing the much older houses in the town, like before 1900s old. I personally didn't care, until we got to the house. I remember the absolute nervousness I felt when I walked into the house. I felt like I was being watched, and I absolutely hated it. When we got to what was going to be my room, I felt decent, I guess. I stayed in there for most of the tour, I believe. Maybe I was taking in my surroundings, but I remember that I liked the walls, and before I left, I waved and said goodbye. I felt as though I had to say it. When we were leaving, we had to drive across the front, and in the second attic, there was a window on every side of the house. There was this girl who was translucent and very old-timey looking. She was gray, but where her eyes were supposed to be were a dark gray, and what I could only assume was blood dripping down her face. Well, once we moved in, 
I remember that this is where my talking habit I have yet to break comes in. I would just talk and talk for hours. I would explain what I was watching for absolutely no reason, even when nobody was there. Well, one night after we got completely moved in, I decided to knock on the floor. I got a knock back, and I remember that it made me feel not so lonely. This happened until I was a solid 10 years old, and I think that's where everything began to go downhill. That's where everything started. The feeling of being watched intensified. I never felt alone. When I was about nine and in the third grade, I went to sleep at a decent time. I never really had before. I woke up facing away from the door. It was odd, and I felt eyes practically burning into my back. I turned and guess who I saw? The little girl. She couldn't have been much older than me at the time. I remember my fear, how I felt, how her not eyes followed me. Eventually, I got the courage to walk past her and into my sister's room. She told me that I was dreaming and that I should go back to bed. And when I got back to my room, she was gone. But this is when the activity really began. I would see a female and a male shadow person. I brushed it off at first. I thought I was just crazy. So I would just move past it and stop worrying about it. I swear that little girl played with me. Dolls, superheroes, outside, all of it. No matter where I was, no matter how I was playing or what I was playing with, there she was, messing with things, playing alongside. I swear looking back that I could hear a woman's hum sometimes whenever I would try to sleep. We'll get this. My sister's now husband, at the time boyfriend, slept in my room while I was at my grandparents, and he supposedly saw the little girl. And once my sister heard the story, she was like, oh my gosh, my sister wasn't lying. And her boyfriend was like, that is weird. My sister always hated going past my room to the bathroom, but like everything else, we just moved past it. My godbrother, who's about two years older than me, saw a little boy with me that I couldn't see. Well, one time we were joking around with some fake Ouija board on my phone, and it led us to what we called the front room. I kid you not, there was a little boy who was exactly the same as the little girl in our window, who just smiled at us and waved. We got out of there. I remember that any time I felt sad, I knew I wasn't alone. Any time something was wrong, I always felt safe. I felt loved. But I know that right before I left the house, right up until I was gone at 11, maybe 12 years old, I would always stop if I saw a shadow or a figure. I'd go back to where they were and wave a hello before I continued. Before my mom and I moved out, because my sister's a grown woman now, I knocked on the floor one last time, and I got a slight tap. And just then I said goodbye one last time before we moved out. That house had a lot more things happen to it as well. For instance, the old owner once came by to check it out and ask questions, but nobody remembers the guy before us coming to the house. I remember him vividly. All in all, the house I grew up in was very haunted. My mom's side of the family lived in another town, about seven hours away. We would visit from time to time. My aunt's houses were always haunted and strange things were always happening there. I saw ghosts a lot. Well, this time she lived at a ranch in the middle of nowhere, miles from the nearest town. When I was about eight or nine years old, my grandma on my mom's side passed away. We went to stay at my aunt's house to visit and later to go to the funeral. While we were visiting the first night, 
My older brother and cousins stayed up in the kitchen, cooking and talking. My mom, dad, and I were all in the far bedroom, down the hall from the kitchen. I was watching TV and my parents were falling asleep. My brother called me into the kitchen and asked me if I wanted corn on the cob. I said no. He asked me to ask my mom if she wanted one. I walked back into the room and asked my mom and she said no as well. I went back into the hallway and told my brother that mom didn't want any corn. But he just stared at me with huge eyes wide open. He just said, okay. I didn't think much about it at the time. I just thought that how he looked at me was really strange. The next day, my brother and I drove to town to get something to eat. That's when he told me, when I asked my mom if she wanted corn, that he saw a woman standing behind me. She followed me into the room. He thought it was my mom at first, but then the woman vanished. I told him mom and dad were laying in bed when that happened. That's why he was looking at me strangely. But he said that he didn't want to tell me that night because I would have been scared. We ended up getting a hotel the next night and we didn't stay at my aunt's again. My brother was too freaked out. Make of this story what you will, but it happened. Back in 2009, Ireland was going through the recession, but I still managed to buy a house. It was a nice little cottage, and it suited me perfectly as I was a single man. I did shift work, so it was nights and days, days and nights. Initially, I thought it was because I wasn't getting enough sleep, but things started to happen within the house that I couldn't explain. For instance, one night I was doing some ironing. I put a towel on the railing in the bathroom and went back into the kitchen to get some more clothes to hang and put away. I came back up and the towel that I had put on the bathroom rail was strewn across the bedroom floor. My first thought was that there was somebody in the house with me, so I ran back into the kitchen and grabbed the frying pan. It was a small house, so there was really nowhere for someone to hide. After a while, I reasoned that it couldn't have been an intruder, because the door was locked and all of the windows were shut. It scared the life out of me, but I convinced myself that I just wasn't paying attention and that maybe I did leave my towel in the middle of the room, even though I knew that I didn't. But things got worse as time went on and couldn't be dismissed so easily. It got to the stage where I was actually afraid of being in my own home. For instance, coming in from a particular night at work, there was a light switch on in the hallway by the doorway. I'd have to switch that on before I'd even open the door fully. I was so terrified that I wouldn't even look into the darkness. Sometimes when I would open the door at nighttime, there would be a gust of wind coming from the house to greet me when no windows were open and there was no way for that to really happen. It eventually got to the stage where I was beginning to wonder if I was losing my mind. This went on for months, things going missing, curtains being closed when I left a room and being partially open when I came back in minutes later. The final straw was when I actually saw something. I arrived home one night at about three o'clock in the morning after being at work. I opened the hall door and switched on the light. Just to give you a picture of the layout of the house, it was quite small. There was a hallway and down the end of the hallway was a doorway to a bathroom. The bathroom was out the back and the kitchen was to the left. This night in particular, I switched on the light and opened the door fully to be greeted by, all I can say is it was a big man's shadow. And this thing was standing at the end of the hall. 
Now, how it was a shadow is beyond me, because there were three spotlights running down the hall, and they lit up everywhere. But this shadow stood under the light, and it was facing me. Every hair on my body stood on edge. The fright and the fear and the panic was so intense. I just roared out, leave me alone, just leave me the F alone. And with that, whatever it was turned sideways and I could see the whole profile of his face. There was a massive bang and a chair was sent flying up the hallway toward me. I legged it out of the house, got back in my car and traveled back up to my parents' house. I was so distraught. I had a brother living in our parents' house at the time, and he thought I'd been in an accident or something. I tried to explain to him as best I could what had happened. I hadn't said anything to anybody about the goings-on at the house. I'd been living there for about six months, and it had been going on all that time. Almost every day something happened. Being terrified in your own home is a horrible feeling. My brother and I drove back down to the house the following day. We found the chair that had been thrown at me in the hallway, on top of the kitchen table. I had a bottle of water in the fridge, and I took it out and placed it on the kitchen table. As my brother and I were talking, the bottle just burst. It was like somebody had shaken a Coke can and opened it. It just went everywhere. Every surface of the kitchen seemed to have water on it. I sold the house six months later. During the months between putting the house up for sale and eventually selling it, strange things continued to happen within the house, like things going missing and curtains being moved. Thankfully though, I never saw the apparition again. One night I was lying in bed. It was about one o'clock in the morning and coming from the back of the house, I heard a woman's voice say, no doctor, please. Petrified, I jumped out of bed and turned on all the lights. I searched everywhere. I checked that the door was locked. It was, and the windows were all shut. The television wasn't plugged in because sometimes it turned on by itself. Same for the radio, which I also left unplugged. I'll never forget the sadness in her voice and the way she said it. It wasn't, no doctor, please help me. It was, no doctor, please help me. Like for some reason she couldn't trust the doctor or she couldn't afford one. I was so glad to be out of that house when I finally sold it. When I was living there, I asked a neighbor and he told me that the couple who I'd bought the house off of had been complaining about hearing things in the house, at least the wife had been. I don't know what I saw or heard, but I do know that whatever it was, it was definitely something that was within the house because I've never experienced anything like that again. I don't know whether the couple who bought the house off of me experienced anything, I couldn't say. After all these years, I still don't really talk about this with people as I don't want them to think I'm crazy. But I do know that this happened to me. Back in the 90s, my parents would often move from house to house. Before I was born and they were pregnant with my sister, they moved into a new house, complete with a lake in the backyard. It was pretty old, but still comfy. My parents thought it was all fine, until some strange things began to happen. For starters, they said that when taking showers, the radio would often switch to random static noises, the lights would flicker, and hair dryers would just shut off suddenly. All right, no big deal, just an old house, nothing strange at all. Of course, my parents started speculating some strange things were happening after living in it for a few months. One night, they had some friends over. This picture of a little boy was hanging on the wall, overlooking the living room. My parents joked around and talked about how it was evil or something. Just as they did that, all of the lights turned off, as if on cue. 
One night, both of them were sitting in bed, trying to fall asleep. My mom told me that while sleeping, this weird blowing noise blew right in her ear. She said something like, stop doing that, thinking that it was my dad. He said, I'm not doing anything. They both felt this weird blowing noise in their ear, like right next to their ears. I would honestly be terrified too. Then, finally, after having crazy and terrifying experiences, the last thing that happened was their breaking point. When getting home with groceries, the magnets on the fridge were strangely arranged differently than they had been before. Not only that, but while getting all of the bags out of the car, my mom swore that she saw a shadow flash by in the living room. My dad looked over and said that he saw it too. They both called the police thinking it was an intruder, but when the police arrived, they couldn't find anything. They ended up living there only six months. That was the last straw. When they moved out, there were some rumors going around that supposedly somebody had died in that lake behind their yard. When they came back to see the house a little while later, it had been condemned. So when I was about 15 to 16, my neighbor asked my sister, we'll call her Cassie, and I if we could stay at her large sensory house while she was on a business trip for two weeks. Having been close to our neighbor and loved her dog and kitty, we said, of course. Cassie slept in the master bedroom and I stayed in the second bedroom upstairs, which is connected to the attic. Now, Cassie and I always loved creepy stuff always watching ghost adventures every Friday night, and we shared a lot of personal paranormal experiences together. We would always open the small attic door and mess around, saying we should go in there. I'm glad we never did. One night, Cassie stayed next door while I was at the neighbor's. I was sitting on the couch with the dog and kitty next to me, watching TV. My neighbor has one of those alarm systems where if you open an entrance door, a little beep goes off. I heard the beep and didn't really react, expecting to see my sister or mom walk in to come hang out. After a minute of waiting to hear something or for someone to come in, nothing happened. I called out for Cassie, but no answer. I messaged my mom and asked if it was her, but she wasn't even home. What scares me is the beep goes off for any door, meaning it could have been the front door that was maybe five feet from me on the other side of the wall. I brushed it off so I didn't get too scared and continued watching TV, except after about 30 minutes, I started hearing footsteps above me, which would have been the master bedroom. I look to my left and see the dog. I look to my right and see the cat so it couldn't have been them. I turned the TV down and listened some more, and it sounded like the footsteps just paced back and forth. I had my sister come over and spend the night with me that night. The next day, I went to my neighbor's right after school, and I saw the basement door was open. Odd, but I closed it and went about my day. I started to clean her dining room and moved chairs away from the table to sweep underneath it. I remembered that the broom was upstairs, so I ran up really quickly to grab it. And as I came back down to the dining room, one of the chairs was pushed into the stairway entrance, blocking me in. Again, I just brushed it off and pushed it back. Except once I started sweeping, I felt something almost rush up behind me. So much so that I dropped the broom and ran my butt next door to my parents. The last few days consisted of random stuff moving, doors opening, and lights being on while we were at school. When my neighbor got back home, she paid us, thanked us, but then asked if anything weird had happened. I explained everything to her and she sort of laughed and said, yeah, that happens a lot. I didn't want to tell you girls beforehand in case it would deter you from staying there. She also mentioned I slept in the most haunted room in the house, the second bedroom upstairs with the attic. 
I brought up the basement door, but that's where her vibe changed. She said that's the one place in her house she won't mess with because it just scares her that much. Needless to say, after those two weeks, I sort of avoided going there for a few years, at least. Then after I graduated high school and moved out of my parents, my neighbor offered a room in her house for me to stay. And I said, yes. So after I moved in, she let me stay in what she called the piano room, which had a piano in it that came with the house. She took the piano out and moved it into the garage so I actually had room for my stuff. For the first few nights, I definitely felt weird vibes. Maybe it was just because I am biased and had weird stuff happen to me years before, but I always believed I could send supernatural stuff ever since a young age. Basically, the vibes were off. I would wake up in the middle of the night hearing what sounded like piano keys, but just enough to wake me up, and that was it. A few weeks later, I got myself a cat. I still have her to this day, and she's my sweet baby. Anyway, she would react and stare at things that were invisible to me. And while I know that cats can be weird, I know animals are sensitive to the paranormal. So I got freaked out anytime she would meow or paw at something that wasn't there. While my neighbor still lived in and owned the house, she was constantly away on business trips or stayed at her mom's house. At this point, her dog passed away and she had her cat at her mom's house, which is why she had offered me a room, so the house wasn't always empty. I would hear so many strange noises at night coming from the master bedroom and in the kitchen. I remembered a weird one from the kitchen. It's sort of hard to make a good visual, but I'll try. So the basement door was actually next to the fridge but the door was blocked by my neighbor's dishwasher so that nobody could get in or out unless the dishwasher was moved. I'm standing looking through the pantry, back facing the basement door, and in the reflection of the pantry door, I saw the basement door open up ever so slightly. I swear it felt like a horror movie. I whipped around, locked the basement door, and went to my room. My neighbor and I ended up having many conversations about the weird stuff. She didn't go into a lot of detail about her experiences, but my mom said she told her a few and was genuinely scared and that I shouldn't ask her anymore. I also just remembered another one from a few years before I moved in. I was out sitting by our sandbox in the backyard and I saw out of the corner of my eye, my neighbor go down to her driveway and take her garbage cans back up to the house. And you know that sound of a garbage can dragging along a gravel driveway? Distinct for sure, right? Anyway, I heard the sound stop right by her garage. I looked up to wave, but no one was there. I assumed maybe she had gone inside or something. But then when I went inside for the day, my mom said that my neighbor was going to be home late and asked if I could take her trash cans up to the house. I froze dead in my tracks. I swore up and down that I heard and saw someone doing it already. But my mom chalked it up to the heat of the summer getting to me. That's one I'll never forget. Another thing I should mention that always seemed eerie to me is that my neighbor constantly tried to sell the house. A family would buy it, but would move back out so quickly. This happened for years and years. The listing price wasn't expensive either, especially for being a big home in a decent area of town. As I got older, I now think that the aura of the house is just off and it made everyone move out. Eventually she ended up selling it again and the current residents have stayed there the longest. I am a 27 year old female and my sister is 26 with a husband who is also 26 and a nine month old baby girl. They got married coming up on two years ago this summer. Just before they got married, they started to build a new house on a plot of land that's essentially in the woods on a dead end road with most of the 16 acres going uphill. The road itself is pretty quiet 
with maybe ten houses total. Pretty spaced out new houses. They only have one next door neighbor. This is important. So, as I said, they just built this house not even three years ago. The thing with the property, though, is that they found at least one, and maybe another, partial house or building stone foundation. Now, our dad, being the history detective that he is, had found an old property map that basically said that there used to be a farmhouse right where their now backyard is, hence the stone foundation. My dad has gone there to do metal detecting quite a few times, and he's found some neat stuff. Some was just the typical metal containers, cans, trash, and junk that he found at the foundation, tossed in by who knows. But a few neat things were a belt buckle, what appears to be, according to his treasure hunting online forum, either a woman's or a child's sword or knife guard and that dates to when the farmhouse was there, in the mid to late 1700s. Now for the spooky stuff. So, I've stayed overnight there a few times, in the guest bedroom, over a year ago at least. My sister and I went out drinking, and I just ended up staying overnight. I was alone in the guest room, snuggled in bed, when I felt like something, or someone, was watching me. So much so that I pulled my blankets over my head and tried to sleep. Then I had the urge to close the closet door randomly. I eventually fell asleep and thought nothing of it after the fact. I never mentioned it to her or her husband, since they're both highly Catholic and participate in church and stuff, so I didn't think they would get me. That's the only experience I've had, if that counts. Fast forward to now, she sent me a photo on Sunday which sparked our conversation. The picture was of her side entrance door that goes into the mudroom. In the top corner window, there is what appears to be, I haven't seen it in person, a smudged handprint. At first my thought was, okay, maybe the builders did it, or maybe it was something there when the door was being made or put on. So I told her that, and then she texts back that it's not on the inside or the outside of the window. It's between the panes. Weird, right? My sister said that it was definitely not there before, since she's basically a neat freak and has washed the door windows before, many times. My second thought was we've had some rain and humidity recently, being almost summer and all, so maybe it was some moisture of fog and stuff like that that was between the glass panes that just looked like a handprint. It literally does look like a handprint though after looking at the picture for a while. I'm studying the picture and I start to get this weird thought of maybe it's somebody scoping the house, but it's on the top window facing downward and it's as if they, or it, had their left hand pointed down, pressed from the outside. I tried to recreate how it would look or feel if I did it myself. It's an extremely awkward position, especially if you're peeking into a door or window from the top pane, like six feet off the ground. She was thoroughly freaked out, I think. I usually try to eliminate all of the obviously logical reasons of what it could have been. A raccoon? A person? Moisture? I ask her if she's had anything weird happen, out of curiosity. This was her actual text message back to me. Quote, I was running on the treadmill a couple of months ago at night. My husband was gone, and I got a very forceful tap on my left shoulder like someone wanted my attention." End quote. Obviously, I've redacted her husband's name. I think it was probably a muscle twitch or something, but she was freaked out after that. Then she goes on to say, quote, And I hear voices sometimes. My husband thinks I hear the neighbors, but when I'm inside, it literally sounds like a man and a woman on our porch. End quote. It was a super quiet area. Like I said, they only had one neighbor. It could have possibly been her neighbors with sound traveling or something, but still. 
I asked about the baby, and she said that she does look off into random corners like she's watching something. But that doesn't seem that odd to me for a nine-month-old. Nothing really with the monitors either. I'm going over today after work to see my niece. I meant to mention to her to maybe check on her carbon monoxide detectors, just to be safe. So, I'll tell her tonight. It's one of those situations where some of the stuff is pretty weird, and other stuff could possibly be explained. I was hesitant to even tell the story, since nothing super or overtly paranormal has happened yet. Just feelings and weird things. But I wanted your thoughts. What are your suggestions? What do you think is going on, if anything? When I was a young child, about 10 or 11, I moved into a small country town. I've been there before, and my parents grew up there. Everyone who lives there knows that the whole town is haunted, from the school and even the church hall to everything else. And once it goes dark, most people who live there go inside because you can see spirits walking in dark places, and that's pretty much the extent of it. But the house that I lived in had a spirit who likes to mimic voices, specifically of your loved ones, and even likes to look like them. It would only target me and my older sisters, and only when we were home alone. I would wake up with bruises and scratches, same as my sister. One time I was home alone and heard my older sister call out for me from our room. I got up and saw her walk into our room, just slightly, but I could tell it was her. I called her name, but she didn't answer, so I followed her in. I entered our room and saw that it was empty. I thought that she was messing with me, but she's pretty tall, so there wasn't really anywhere she could hide. Then suddenly I heard the front door open. I went and saw my older sister with the rest of my family coming home. She hadn't been there. This wasn't the first time that something like this happened, and it certainly wasn't the last. Fortunately, I moved out of there about two years ago and I've never woken up with a random bruise or scratch ever again. I grew up in a haunted house through my childhood years and when I was a young adult. Sometimes I wonder if it was real or just in my head but I wanted to talk about it. Heads up, there is some mention of animal death in this story, so if that's not your thing, maybe don't listen to or read it. Anyway, when I was a very young child, I lived in a very old house. I think the house was originally built in the early 1900s. It was originally a doctor's office and home. Right next door was the town's hospital. The house was originally a one-story, one-bedroom, one-bath house and was later turned into a three-bedroom, one-bath, one-story house in 1960. I live in fear in that house. All you felt living in that house was fear and nothing else. I would either look down at the floor or close my eyes if I had to get up and walk to the bathroom. I always felt watched, and sometimes when I walked into the kitchen to get to the bathroom, Something invisible would come up and hit me, or my body, or I'd be checked to the side. It would also happen if you stood at the kitchen sink. Something invisible would come from nowhere and body check you to the side. Then we had our dad's old non-battery operated plug-in radio that would turn itself on all the time. Even when it wasn't plugged in, it would still go on, all on its own. It did for years and we just got used to it. But then we had a social worker therapist lady come for a visit. We came and sat down at the kitchen table to talk about the radio turning on with the lady there. I tried to do my best to ignore it, but I couldn't, and I had to explain to the lady what happened. She was actually okay with it, 
Apparently, it wasn't her first time with the paranormal, so that was cool. Years go by, and I'm home alone taking a bath. Out of the blue, the front door opened and slammed shut, and I could hear somebody stomping all the way through the house and into the kitchen, and then stop. I got out of the tub quickly, covered myself with a towel, and then threw the bathroom door open. No one was there. I was still home alone. You can't break into my dad's house. My dad put in key entry only locks and hard bar grids over the outside of the windows. The living room windows were triple paned and the bedroom windows were double paned. That house was like Fort Knox. Again, a few years later, my big sister lost her keys one day. She always put them in the same spot every day, but that one day when she went to get them, they just weren't there. We searched everywhere for the keys, and when we finally stopped looking, the keys showed back up in the same spot they should have been in to begin with. The second time they disappeared, they were found outside on the ground in the drive. It was outside the fence. There was no reason for them to be there. The third time the keys went missing, they weren't found until many years later, inside the compartment in the dashboard area below the radio of the car. She didn't find them, but the car dealership that she took the car into to trade it in found them. That was pretty creepy. The house, or the negative thing in the house, turned dad into a very negative person. He went from an awesome dad to a very abusive dad over the years. I took the brunt of that abuse because I was the youngest and the most sensitive to the paranormal. He never abused my big sister, just me. The negative thing in the house also grabbed dad and body checked him a few times, but he kept that to himself for years until we no longer lived there. One time when I was home alone in the house, I was standing in front of the kitchen, but kind of standing sideways because the kitchen stove was next to the sink. Something in the living room in front of the pellet caught my attention. And when I turned to look, I saw this mist or fog come up through the floor in front of the pellet stove and start moving toward the first bedroom. That was mine and my sister's bedroom. And then it just disappeared in front of me. Oh, and this is the best one. When I came back home for a little bit when I was a young adult, my sister and I had a bed together for a few nights. But one night in bed, my sister in her sleep just sits in my bed right next to me. As soon as she laid down next to me, a very bright young man came up through the bed on my sister's side of the bed, leaned over her and grabbed my right leg below my knee. I wasn't asleep at all, and I was just laying there wide awake. I couldn't sleep because at that time, I was pregnant with my first son. But yeah, I could see the outline of this young man. He looked like a high school quarterback, slim, tall, biceps. He lit up the room, he was that bright. After he disappeared, I looked at the radio clock in our room. The time was 3.47 in the morning. We also had something in the house kill two of our cats with antifreeze. Someone opened a brand new bottle and dumped it in the corner of the house. Nobody was home when it happened. You needed a key to get into that house. One cat died right away, the other two weeks later. It was slowly killing two more of our cats. We could never keep pets in the home. They all started to die shortly coming back home. Years later, dad and sister moved out and he rented it to a friend from work. We had a six foot tall, large dog kennel in the back. The guy put his bulldog inside and chained him in the kennel. Then he locked it up and left for a few hours. Later, he found his dog hanging on the opposite side of the gate by its chain. Obviously, he was dead. That's never happened before, and we had two dogs in that thing before, and they were even bigger than the bulldog. We were all completely shocked when that happened. Even the work friend became a very negative person after moving into that house. To this day, I want nothing to do with that place. It now sits completely abandoned. Dad can't sell it, which honestly is probably for the best. It's not safe for anyone to live in.
I've had many paranormal experiences in my life, but this one has stuck with me for a while. This all happened a few years ago in a little hick town. My friends and I were bored as hell, so we decided to find some trouble to get into. My friend mentioned a super creepy house in the middle of nowhere that had been sitting empty for a little over a year. We decided that since we didn't have anything better to do, we should go and check it out. So the six of us crammed into a car and headed over there. It was around 3 a.m., middle of summer. The moon was full and it lit up everything around us. We parked a little ways up the road and walked up to the house. It was definitely spooky in the moonlight. It kind of looked like the creepy house from the Blair Witch Project. We were originally just going to walk around the property, but my boyfriend at the time decided to kick the door open and explore inside. Three of my friends stayed outside to watch for cops. The cops didn't normally patrol the area, but we wanted to be extra safe. The other two and I went inside. I made it maybe six feet into that house before I got hit with a really weird, heavy feeling. It felt like I was wrapped up in a thick blanket, but instead of being warm and cozy, it was cold. I got out of there as fast as I could. My boyfriend and our friend, let's call him Tim, teased me, saying that I was being a wimp. I knew something was weird in that house, and I refused to go back in. Tim decided to record their walk through the house. After walking through, Tim picked something up, threw it at my boyfriend, and started screaming to try to spook him. Well, it worked, and they ran out. The three of us then started looking through a shed in the back. We found various hunting traps. They looked pretty old and rusted, so I assumed they were just hung up for decoration. My boyfriend decided to take one to remember that night. I'm pretty sure that the trap he stole had something attached to it. A lot of weird stuff started happening at our place after that, but those are stories for another time. We left shortly after. When we got back, we watched the video that Tim took inside the house. After we laughed at my boyfriend's screams, Tim said he thought he had heard something weird in the video. So we played it back. And sure enough, while they're running out of the house, there's a voice in the video that doesn't belong to either of them. It was a woman's voice, clearly saying, she died here. We collectively lost our minds. I was the only girl there that night, and the sound of them screaming and running would have drowned out my talking. And like I said, I had already left. I wish I still had the video for proof, but I had a falling out with Tim and deleted our messages, so I don't have the video anymore. I still beat myself up over not saving it. I used to be terrified of the paranormal, so I didn't save it when he first sent it to me. I've come to accept since then that I'll always have weird paranormal experiences and it'll always be a part of my life. Still, that video was the first paranormal experience I've ever had solid evidence of. My friends lived a few houses down in an old house they were renting. They often talked about the house being haunted. They said that things would move by themselves or disappear, only to reappear later. They mostly talked about this pair of jeans that was set out when my friend was getting ready for work. When he went to go get them, they were gone. He figured he must have forgotten and just set them down elsewhere, so he started looking around. He couldn't find them, so he just got a different pair and then went to work. When he came home, they were folded up on the kitchen table. He asked his wife where she had found them. She said she hadn't seen them. They went to the kitchen, and she claimed she has no idea how they got there. One time, I walked over to their house, and I was going in the side door. As I reached for the doorknob, I saw it twist and open up, just a few inches. I thought it was them telling me to come in, so I waited for them to say something. After a few seconds, I opened the door and went in. 
I said hello and waited. Then I went into the house looking for them and calling them. That's when I realized the house was empty and they weren't home. I got this really funny feeling and then I started to leave. And that's when I heard a baby crying in their bedroom. I thought, what in the world is going on? But I walked into the bedroom and the crying stopped and there was no baby. I got out of there as fast as I could. They later told me that that was the kind of stuff they put up with all the time, but they did move shortly after that. I live in a small town in Canada, and my house was built in 2007. Before that, it was farmland. My great-grandmother and her kids immigrated here from Ecuador in the 70s. Throughout my family's bloodline, every woman in the family is believed to have had some kind of sixth sense. My great-grandmother's sister was a powerful medium. My grandmother's older sister is also a medium and reads palms. My mother does tarot readings and informs me on her past experiences with ghosts when she lived in Toronto with my grandmother and great-grandmother. Ever since I was a baby, I've been seeing ghosts everywhere. My grandma told me that I would point to the corner and talk to it like somebody was there. I'm 16 now and I've been living in this house for the past 15 years. Paranormal experiences have happened to me here for as long as I can remember so it's just a normal thing now. My mom doesn't encourage me thinking about those things, though. She tells me it's all in my head. A month ago, my dad's parents came up from Texas to renovate our basement. On their last day, my grandpa told me that he thought our basement was haunted because of all the voices he was hearing near the cold room. I told my mom about this, and she lowered her voice and told me that she had lied to me. She had said that it was all in my head, but she'd been telling me that to protect me. It wasn't all in my head, and that I had been seeing ghosts. She used to keep me in her room as a child and pray to God to keep the spirits away from me, because she saw them too. So far, I've noticed one ghost or entity or something that keeps reappearing in different places. I first saw her when I was eight or nine, my cousin and I saw her in my closet. She had pale skin, long blue-black hair, and wore a deep blue dress. The most notable feature is that her nails were painted a shiny metallic blue that glistened in the dark. She held out her hand to us and we ran away. The second time was when I was 11. At the time, I had a loft bed that was up near my ceiling. My bedroom is on the second floor. I was lying in bed after coming home from school, and I saw that lady slowly walk by my window. Her nails were still painted that shiny blue. It was the most notable ghost I've ever seen. Ghost in quotations, because I'm not really sure if that's what she is. Apart from that, my younger brother and I, Lex, both saw a glass cup on our table slowly slide over to the other side of it. I always see figures in my room and hear music in the shower drain. My entire family hears people talking in our bedrooms. My brother and I have started to wake up with long scratches all over us. The house was blessed by a priest when it was made, but I don't think it worked, or maybe it wore off. I'm getting scared, and I don't know what to do. Update. We had a priest from our local church come to bless our house again but I don't think it was effective. A few weeks ago, I had the house to myself with my brothers while my parents and grandparents were out. Lex and I were watching TV in the living room when we saw our youngest brother, Michael, age 10, sprint out of the washroom and into the dining room, which isn't visible from where we were. We didn't think anything of it until Michael came out of his bedroom on the second floor to get snacks. We were absolutely terrified and retreated upstairs. Maybe I'm just doomed to live in a house with ghosts.
The ghetto where I'm from is divided by a golf course. One side of the street is project housing, and the other side is nicer homes built in the 30s to 90s, before the projects were there. I lived in a 1934 two-bedroom house, bright yellow tile. I was 26, and I lived with my girlfriend who was 24. After living there a few months, my girlfriend started saying she felt uneasy in the hallway, which was very small and had a crawl space in the ceiling. I brought my dad over to get up there and take a look, because, you know, could be something scary up there. He found nothing, except insulation. A while later, I took a nap for about two hours. My girlfriend was in the next room folding laundry after work. She comes to wake me up, shaking my shoulder. She asks how long I'd been asleep. I said a couple of hours. She said, so you didn't just walk through the house? I said, no. She said, but I just saw you walk through the hallway. I asked if she was sure, and she said yes. I told her it wasn't me, and there's no one else in the house. Fast forward a year. I'm trying to quit smoking, and I lost my vape. My buddy had been staying at my house for a couple of weeks, and he's helping me look for my vape. I walk out to the car, and I get in the driver's seat. I'm digging between the seat and the gear shift. And suddenly, something or someone is talking into my ear, not whispering, speaking, right into my left ear. There's that SOB right there, it says. I'm frozen. It's the dead of night. Nobody is around. My buddy is still inside. After about a minute of complete silence, I finally open the car door and go back inside. I tell him what just happened. That's when he goes, huh, probably the same person that calls my name at night. What? He'd been hearing somebody say his name from behind him on the couch he slept on at night ever since he started staying with me. I'm creeped out, but not enough to move. The rent was great, and I was not easily shaken. Fast forward a few months. My mom comes over to pick me up and to go shopping. I throw on a shirt in front of the hallway and say, hey, how does this look for today? My mom turned around and her eyes go over my head. She starts to back up and tries to adjust her eyes. I said, what? She said that a black shadow had just gone up the wall behind me into the room behind me. I thought, oh, so now there's that. Fast forward a few months more and I'm watching TV in the living room with my buddy. We hear a loud bang. We go into the kitchen and all the cabinets are open. A single jar of Nutella is on the floor and a huge hole has been punched in the wall beside the refrigerator. Interesting, but I'm still not leaving. Fast forward a few more months. My buddy moved out, my girlfriend and I broke up and she moved. I was living there alone for the first time. I go to lay down one night my bed was freshly made, so the covers were tight. I cut the light and laid my head back. Suddenly, there's pressure on either side of my feet, like someone has one hand beside each side of my foot and is pressing down, as if you're looking over top of me. It lasted all of 30 seconds before I sat up and turned the light back on. Nothing there. Still not moving. Fast forward. I get a new girlfriend. She starts staying over. She says she sees faces in the mirror in the hallway. I'm like, yeah, weird things happen here. Nothing has ever tried to harm me, so I stay. This goes on for a couple of months, until one day I come home to my girlfriend on the porch. It's dark. She says she will not go back in that house while I'm gone. She convinces me to move. I'm in love. I want her to be comfortable. So we're in our new house and I'm on my laptop, going through old photos and videos that I took at the old house. I find videos of myself being recorded from my laptop, but I'm not pressing record. It was videos of me watching TV, working out, leaving my bedroom and walking through the house. It stops all on its own. All of the videos were about a minute or so long. I went to the courthouse and found records where the owner and also the town sheriff had died there of old age. 
and the community seems to believe that there was some kind of brothel there at some point, due to a red light on the porch. I'm sure that was just a rumor. One of the neighbors said someone had shot themselves in the house, but I couldn't find a record of that either. I wish I could go on about other instances at the old haunted house, but I've gone on long enough. It was 2009 to 2013, rent was 625, and honestly, I wish I had never left. I live in a three-story, four-bedroom new house. Prior to it being a house, this plot of land was a residential home, and before that, I have no idea. My partner, our young children, and I have lived here since it was built, nearly six years ago. I've never felt anything bad or good in this house, except for the bedroom on the top floor. That bedroom was our youngest child's bedroom. It was her bedroom from about six months old until about two years. She never slept well, ever. She would always wake up during the night, sometimes crying uncontrollably. We just put it down to her being a crappy sleeper. However, sometimes if we couldn't settle her back down, we would bring her into our room, which was directly next to her room. She would just sit and stare into the hallway outside and would refuse to be put down near the doorway and if we tried to carry her out into the hallway to show her nothing was there, she would freak out. She no longer has that room as her bedroom. She shares with her older sisters now. The middle child, a boy, now has that bedroom, and he claims to feel fine in there. However, when it was our youngest daughter's bedroom, she would wake in the night, and my partner would go downstairs to make her a bottle, and I would go in to comfort her. While comforting her with my back to the door, I would always feel like there was something or someone watching me, so much so that I would feel forced to glance back over my shoulder. That's the backstory. During a conversation we were having as a family tonight, myself and my partner were talking to the eldest child, 15 years old, and she just so happened to sleep in her brother's room last night. He was at a sleepover at a friend's house and she wanted to escape the two younger ones. We asked her how she slept. Totally normal question, and we certainly didn't lead her answer in any way. She said, eh, not so great. I felt on edge, like somebody was watching me from the doorway. I wasn't scared, I just felt anxious. How she described her feelings was exactly how I had felt in the past, when I would often be in there comforting our youngest. Neither my partner nor myself have ever spoken to the children about this before so there's no way she was just regurgitating what we've said. I felt a shiver go up my spine when my stepdaughter said this tonight because it was so accurate. My partner immediately looked at me as if to say, wow, that's exactly what we've said. A friend recommended we invest in some selenite to place in and around the room, and we might do that. But I just wanted to share this story and see if anybody else can relate. All the homes in my neighborhood were built in 2009 or 2010, seven homes in all. One of the homes across the street was purchased by a single female with two boys and a child on the way. Her boyfriend did live with her, but didn't help purchase the home, and he was not a good guy. They fought all the time. I'm pretty sure he was on meth, and he cheated on her constantly. He even tried to approach me. So, I reiterate, not a good guy. Toward the end, he started getting abusive. She had him locked up, but let him come back when he got out. One day, an ambulance showed up at the home. We were all told that he had committed suicide, had gotten high on meth and shot himself in the bathroom. All right, this was believable. 
After his death, she asked me to help her watch the home as his friends and family were accusing her of killing him and were pulling up into her driveway and then leaving and basically just trying to harass her. I thought this was suspicious, but whatever. As a single mom, she had to work all the time. The oldest boy would watch the little one while she worked. He would always come down to my house to stay, but wouldn't tell me why. But I liked the kid, so no worries. About four years went by like this and she told me she was moving. I was kind of shocked because these were really nice homes and fairly cheap, but I figured it was just because of what had happened previously. Finally, she told me that they were moving because of the paranormal activity in the home since his death. The little one was the most bothered by it, and that's why he stayed at my house all the time. She proceeded to tell me what really happened. They were in a fight, and he had a gun in his hand and was threatening to shoot her. They had a struggle over the gun, resulting in him shooting himself behind the ear. He fell to the ground, crawled down the hallway, and died in the living room. The little one said that he could see him at night, crawling down the hallway. The doors would open and close on their own, and they would hear disembodied voices and feel negative energy, stuff like that. She said her guests would see and hear stuff too. She wouldn't go into much detail, and I understood why. I didn't press the issue. The boys were struggling in school, and she wasn't doing so well either. They moved, and the house sat empty for about a year now. Well, my daughter and her husband have decided to purchase this home. I asked them what they would do if they saw him crawling down the hallway at night. They joke about it, but I mean, come on. That would be some scary shit. If you've never really experienced anything paranormal before, or hell, even if you had. My son-in-law is a huge skeptic, but my daughter has had some experiences. I wonder if it's still active or if he moved on when they left. A morbid part of me can't wait to find out. When my husband and I first married, we lived towns apart due to work. We also had a toddler. We decided to move in together as quickly as possible and went house hunting. I have always enjoyed stories of supernatural or paranormal occurrences, and I joked about how much I would love a haunted house. I was later told by a clairvoyant that the universe delivers. We finally settled on a house that was in our price range. It was built in the 80s, so no concern of lead paint, and not a lot of historic value either. Everything went smoothly, for the most part. Our toddler would awaken in the middle of the night and explain that her stuffed animals would move or fly. We figured she just wanted to sleep with us. Moving was a big transition for such a youngster. We got pregnant with another kiddo quickly, and he went out of country for about a year for work. Things were normal for the most part. The baby, six to 12 month age range, would sometimes stare at the front door and cry or point behind me when I was doing dishes. I didn't think it was too weird. My husband returned and I eventually decided to remodel the house. It had not been updated since being built. It was a major undertaking. My youngest was probably two years old at this point and the oldest was six. I became convinced that our house was haunted at this point and continued to be convinced for about two years. It's hard to remember the time frames for everything, but I will describe the activities that occurred during this two to three year period. I had a dog who required medication twice daily. It would frequently go missing. I would later find it in the same spot that I always kept the medication. One of my daughters would talk about the little boy that lived in the closet and that she was afraid of him. So we moved the two girls into the same room because we felt that they were perhaps lonely. This gave my husband a room to dedicate to his man cave and online PC gaming. My husband would talk about seeing a shadow dart back and forth in the hallway. I had a dream that when we took down the sheetrock, 
we found a secret room with dead twins who warned us to get out. All of this stuff seemed like normal occurrences that happen in life. But then I finally became convinced that the house was haunted. My children and husband were all in bed. I had clean laundry waiting to be folded on the chase, but decided to sprawl out on the couch and watch The Breakfast Club instead. Alone time was rare. All of a sudden, a shirt flew from the chase and hit me in the face. I ran to the bedroom and my husband was asleep. I woke him up and he said that he didn't believe me, but I know better because he got really anxious and couldn't sleep after that. The next big event occurred when my youngest told me that there was a man in her bathroom. We had a security alarm, so I knew that that couldn't be true. I had her take me to the bathroom and show me. She described him as being all black and pointed and said, he's right there. He's right behind you. I told her we would just leave him alone and go about our day. We had other things happen that we just explained away. I woke up to a shadow figure hovering over my husband. My dogs would wake up in the middle of the night and bark at the foot of the bed. I would hear noises coming from the kids' room and get a terrible feeling whenever I would go and check on them. I sometimes had to walk through a cold mist to get to their room. My dogs would also sometimes bark in the hallway. I finally called someone to intervene when my husband met me at our door, freaking out. I worked weekends and I would always come home and tell him about my day while he played on his computer. The kids would be in bed by this time. I would then go and shower and go to sleep. This night, my husband said that I had already been home and talked to him about my day. I had then told him that I was going to go shower. So when he then heard the garage door open and the car pull in, he immediately panicked. I was frightened to hear this as well. An entity taking my identity made me feel helpless. A coworker got me in contact with her friend who has special abilities. Her friend came over with another medium. They smudged our home and put quartz crystals in the corner. It was all free. They told me that the limestone behind us held energy which attracted transient spirits and entities. Some good, some not. The shadow man stayed because of my husband's PTSD and was attracted to the negativity. They also said domestic abuse had previously occurred in the man cave at some point and that it was a big focus of the negative energy. They taught me to smudge and told me that I have ancestors by my side keeping me safe. Things would still happen on occasion after this. We spoke to our Muslim friends about it and they thought it sounded like a jinn. These creatures are mischievous and can be good or bad. They gave us a religious artifact from their hometown that had a prayer in Arabic carved in it. We kept it on our mantle and never had trouble after that. They would always laugh at us at Christmas time when we had our Christmas mantle decorations and our Muslim artifact. It's still a treasured item that we have to this day. We have since moved, but we did spend a decade in that home. And the more I think about it, the more I'm sure that it was haunted. A few years back, one of my best friends and business partner was, and still is, a single dad. His ex-wife was in and out of mental institutions for years, and he had sole custody of his two kids, a boy, age 10, and a girl, age 14. My friend had to travel to New York to oversee the multimedia setup for the auto show for the Ford display. I was back at the office with the programmers during the day, and I would stay with the kids each evening. Their house was a new two-story rental in the Woodlands, Texas. The development was built in a heavily wooded area just north of Houston. Weird stuff started happening the first night I was there. I was watching TV with the kids. The den lights would go off. The light switch was on the other side of the room. 
I went over and the switch was turned off. I thought it was a problem with the breaker, or there was another light switch. But if there was another switch, who turned it off? I flipped the switch on, the lights came back on, and I went back to sit down. The lights went off. I walked back, and I found the switch flipped back down to off, manually. That disturbed me. This went on for a while. I asked the kids if this had happened before, and they told me that every now and then, the lights would go off. So now I'm trying to act unconcerned in front of the kids. Suddenly, there was a loud crash in the attic. I, we, went upstairs and opened the attic door to check. There was nothing in the attic. It was completely empty, and thus we had no explanation as to what had made the loud noise. I'm thinking that there's someone else in the house. Their mother had shown up unexpectedly before at their old house, but she was in jail at the time and supposedly didn't know this address. Things quieted down and it was eventually time to go to bed. I let the family dog in, a lab, checked all of the doors and made sure they were locked, and then I went up to the guest room, which was between the kids' bedrooms. I left my door cracked, and I had just turned the bedside lamp off. As I was laying down, I saw the silhouette of a boy crouched down between the cable box and VCR lights on the other side of the room, and myself. I thought the sun was getting ready to try to scare me, so I turned the bedside lamp on and said, gotcha, but there was no one there. Then there was another loud crash in the attic. This woke the kids up and now they were scared. We then heard a door slam downstairs. I told them that it was a new house and noises happen. I also told them that I would sleep in the day bed out in the hallway. I made my rounds again and we all went back to bed. When I woke up the next morning, the kids and the dog were all asleep on the floor next to my bed. I still had four more nights to go. The next day, I got to the house as it was getting dark. The wind was starting to pick up and all of the tree limbs were swaying. There was thunder in the distance. However, the kids seemed fine. I helped them with their homework and made dinner. No, we're not going to McDonald's again and we all finally sat down to watch TV. The storm was worsening and there was more thunder and lightning. The den in the house was huge with large floor to ceiling windows and the walls went all the way to the rafters. There was an interior balcony on the second floor that wrapped around three of the walls. There was an exterior balcony facing the backyard. You could see through the upper windows out to the lower part of the outside balcony. So now, the rain is coming down in sheets, the wind is blowing, and bursts of lightning are happening everywhere. Suddenly, the daughter says she sees something moving out on the balcony. I look up, and it looks like a pair of legs in dark pants scurry past one of the windows. I'm thinking, do I get the gun out of the master bedroom? But that opens up a whole new can of worms. So instead, I run up the back stairs from the kitchen to the second floor hallway and out through the balcony door. The wind is blowing cold rain right into me and I get soaked, but I don't see anyone on the balcony. I go back downstairs and tell them there's no one outside. Shortly thereafter, I tell them it's time for bed. The son goes right to bed and goes to sleep. The daughter is afraid of storms. The dog won't go into her bedroom and her cat is nowhere to be found. I tell her that I will sit with her until she goes to sleep. I bring a chair into her bedroom and set it on the left side of her bed. We talk about storms and I tell her about being in a tent in the army during really bad storms and how nice it is to be in a house for this storm. We both fall asleep. 
There's a loud clap of thunder, a flash of lightning, and I see a dark figure about five feet tall standing in the far corner of her room. I jump to my feet, but now I don't see anything. I don't want to wake her up, and so I carefully walk around her room and check the hallway. I slowly sit back down. I eventually doze off again. Later, I hear a noise and I started to look around. The cat is curled up on the foot of her bed and the dog is starting to lay down at my feet. The storm has passed and looking outside her bedroom window, stars are shining up above the tree line. I go lay down in the day bed out in the hallway and just as I fall asleep, I hear a door downstairs slam shut. It sounds like the kitchen door to the garage. I go downstairs, the kitchen door, door to the garage, and front door are all shut and locked. I start to walk over to the master bedroom suite, but something tells me not to go there. I head back upstairs and lay back down. What seems like seconds later, the alarm goes off and it's time to start a new day. I have to get breakfast going and it's my turn to drive school carpool. Most of the days in that house went about the same. All I know for sure is that something was wrong with that house. When I was a teenager, my family moved into a new house in Ohio. Well, it was new to us. As soon as we moved in, my mother started saying that she felt the house was haunted and that she could sense a presence there. She said she heard somebody call her name and felt somebody put a hand on her shoulder. One time she woke up with somebody holding her feet down and she couldn't shake off whatever it was, so she started screaming. She also heard muffled voices. We didn't believe her at all, until both my sister and I started experiencing strange things. My first experience was when I was reading a book in my bedroom at 3 a.m. I'm a night owl, so this wasn't that unusual. Everyone should have been asleep, but suddenly I hear very heavy footsteps right outside my bedroom door. They were too heavy to be my mom's or my sister's, so I just assumed that my dad was walking around, checking up on us. I sprinted to the door, and when I opened it, I was shocked to discover the hallway was dark and nobody was up. Our attic had several feet of fluffy insulation covering the entire area. There was nothing stored there, but at times you could hear steps coming from the attic, running up to the side of the house. They always ran up to the side with the driveway, as though they were trying to see who arrived, and this happened almost every time that somebody would pull up to the house. In the daytime, it was almost cool, but in the nighttime, it was terrifying. There was always something clicking loudly under my bed, and in the closet at night, and I always tried to convince myself it was the air vents. However, all the air vents were on the other side of the bedroom, and they never made clicking noises. I sometimes saw an outline of a person standing next to my bed if my head was covered with a sheet, but when I pulled the sheet off, nobody was there. I heard sighs, as though somebody was standing right behind me, and one time, I heard a whisper that said, come play. I prayed a lot and that usually helped. I would also ask them to quiet down and that helped as well. One time my boyfriend and I were doing homework in the basement and heard the garage door open and voices of my parents in the kitchen. We ran up to say hi, only to discover an empty house. Another time, my boyfriend stayed overnight in our house and he slept in the living room. In the morning, he asked if we were all playing a joke on him at night, as he kept hearing a ball bounce on the stairwell leading up to the bedrooms on the second floor, 
and in the kitchen. But every time he got up to see what was going on, no one was there. I don't think we even owned a ball, and we certainly didn't play with one in the house. One time, my mom heard a baby crying outside of our house at night. We lived in a safe and perfectly normal suburb. There was no reason that a baby would be in our backyard. Another day, a lid flew off of a cooking pot and got halfway embedded into the kitchen ceiling. It wasn't a pressure cooker, it was just a regular lid and pot. Another time we left for a family vacation and my boyfriend was asked to take our paper in. He said that he was in the house and decided to make my bed for me. We had left at the ungodly hour of 5 a.m. and I never got to it. He said at first he got a juice and felt like somebody was breathing down his neck in the kitchen. He kept turning around to find nobody there. Then he walked upstairs and while he was making my bed, he felt something grab his legs from under it. He got freaked out and ran out of there and he refused to enter the house again. He just diligently hid the papers behind a flower pot outside until we returned. One night, my sister woke up to a black caped figure standing silently in her room. She said there was also a bright orb near her window. Her windows faced the backyard and trees and being on the second floor, there was no possible source of light from cars and things like that. She covered her head with the blanket and when she looked out, the figure and the orb were still there. She went back under the blanket and after some time, they were finally gone. One day our cat disappeared without a trace and we never did see it again. Not sure if that was related. My dad was one person who never experienced anything. No voices, no steps, no TV and radios blasting out on their own. He is hard of hearing, so that could be a factor. But one thing he can't explain is waking up at 4 a.m. next to a lit tea light candle that he swears burnt out at midnight. The candle was right in front of his face and he's extremely sensitive to light to the point where he covers any electronic lights with napkins because they disturb his sleep. It eventually got so bad that I refused to sleep in my own bedroom as I could feel someone move around the room at night and I slept in my sister's room. My dad decided to call a medium and the guy said that there were five spirits in the house, a boy, an old lady, a couple, and a very angry man. He gave us a giant candle with a cross and said to burn it in the bedroom of the youngest child, which was now also my bedroom where I slept in a sofa chair. The candle was in a big glass jar and was hefty. All night it kept shaking and the glass kept making clicking noises against the counter that it stood on. We were also to tell the spirits that this was our house and that they needed to go to the light. Things improved after the visit and shortly after I moved out to attend college, where I slept for years with the lights on, although I never experienced any paranormal activity in my apartment there. After college, I never stayed in the house for longer than a few days always sleeping with the lights on, as that creepy feeling remained, although nothing notable happened anymore. Eventually, my parents sold the house. This happened in 2021. My family and I were living in a pretty old house at the time, like really old. There was mold, wood creaking in the middle of the night, and when the wind would blow, it sounded like the windows would shatter. I have three different things that happened at this house. My dad and I were driving back from a spirit Halloween store for Halloween decor because it was around that time of year. When we were walking up to our door, we heard a loud bang on the window near the bottom right corner. We had cats at the time, but they never really jumped at the windows, and we checked. Two of them were asleep upstairs, and the other one was outside, nowhere near the window. My thought was maybe something had fallen and hit the window, but nothing was laying next to it. If you take the palm of your hand and you slap it on your window, 
It sounds exactly like what we heard. The second thing that happened to me was a little creepier. There were wooden floorboards that led from my kitchen to my living room. The kitchen had a tiled floor and the living room had carpet. Whenever you would walk through these wooden boards, they would make a mind-numbing creaking noise. Now, I've had my cats walk over these boards and they won't make a sound. And my cats are decently large and heavy. When I was home alone and sitting on my couch, I heard the floorboards make a noise. I've heard them make noises before, but this one sounded directional. I was obviously hesitant to go check, but eventually I did and there was nothing there. The third thing that happened is almost impossible for me to explain. I didn't see this one, but my dad did, and I didn't know this up until today. He walked into the kitchen and passed the countertop. As he walked, a small glass moved about four feet across the countertop, almost as though somebody had slid it. There was nobody in the house at the time except for me, my mom, and my dad, and we were not there, in the room. The windows may have been open, but even if they were, the wind couldn't have been enough to slide that glass across the table. This one is kind of a bonus, but not necessarily that creepy. I have a habit of speaking in my sleep. I've said really weird things before, like get the shovel or run. But my parents said that in this house in particular, they heard me scratching my wall in the middle of the night. My bed was pushed up against a wall, and apparently my hand was in the air clawing at the wall. Another creepy thing happened too. My room is hallway adjacent to my parents. Apparently in the middle of the night, I sat up and blankly stared into their room. My dad looked over and asked me if I was all right. I didn't respond, but I put my hand up and waved, kind of like Forrest Gump in that one gif. I'm not sure if my house is haunted or if I'm possessed or both, but weird things are definitely happening here. When I was in the 4th through 8th grade, we moved into a century-old farmhouse in Strawtown, Indiana. My father was in and out of the picture at this point in my life, so most of the time it was just me, my mother, and two younger brothers living there. One was only a year younger than I was, and the youngest was zero to four during this time. The house always felt as though somebody was watching you or breathing down your neck. I'm just going to list things that occurred for brevity's sake. Number one, this happened to my mom. She started seeing this black shadow around the house. She said that she could smell him, like the body odor would be smelled in a specific spot, not directly next to it. As time went on, she started seeing the imprint of somebody sitting on the edge of her bed. Then one night, it laid across her legs and she woke up thrashing trying to get it off. Number two, these things happened to me. I had the upstairs bedroom connected to the attic door through a small closet. These were huge rooms. Things were the least crazy for me. I would just hear footsteps run up and down the stairs at night when my brothers would be in bed. The scariest thing that would happen to me was that often the door to the attic would swing open as though somebody had forced it and it would hit the wall. Then a cold presence would rush to my bedside. When I was 14, I started into a spiraling depression. I painted my walls blood red and I began to write poetry and things on my walls in this really aggressive handwriting. I have never felt or acted that way since. I have, however, had many instances of paranormal activity that have followed me throughout my life. Number three, one of my brothers had a bad. I only know fragments of his story as what happened to him is something he'd rather forget. One night he was screaming in his room. We checked on him and he had been smacked across the face. We figured it was just him hitting himself in his sleep. 
but the handprint was upside down. It was impossible that he did it to himself. Fifteen years later, my mom told me that she found him crying on the stairs one night. He was reluctant to tell her why. But when pressed, he told her that he kept hearing voices, telling him to kill all of us. My mom understandably kept this from us. When I asked him about it, he was visibly upset and said that it stopped as soon as we moved from the house and he didn't want to talk about it. My youngest brother was two to three when he started saying weird stuff. He would talk about the boots walking around the house with no body attached. He'd also hear laughing whenever he would get near the basement steps. I remember the four of us kneeling and praying that this entity would leave us alone, but it didn't. We decided to leave after a morning when my mom and youngest brother were home alone. They were taking a nap. When the bed and dresser started violently shaking, there was no earthquake and no reason for it. They shook by themselves, and my mom described it as feeling as though she was being intimidated. We moved out. We were told by a neighbor that everybody that's ever moved into that house has moved out within a few months. It's empty now. I still drive by it, and I want to go confront whatever's there and get answers. The landlord is an old farmer that doesn't believe us. This has been the first time I've ever talked about it, really, at least publicly. Since I've moved on with my life, I've lived in several different houses. I've heard strange noises of objects moving in other rooms and deliberate knocking. Not super frequently, though. In one house, we had a painting of Delight Yourself in the Name of the Lord up in the dining room. We heard this crash one night and found it five feet to the right, blocking the bathroom entrance. We also could hear razors and shampoo bottles being tossed in the bathroom at that house. In another, I had two friends over playing poker in the kitchen. And as we were talking about a shelf that had come off the wall the night before, a plastic blender cup was chucked out of the pantry behind us and bounced off that exact wall. I don't know if something followed me from that house or if it's related at all, but it's been interesting. If you like haunted houses, you would love my dad's home. It's a two-story brick home built by a family back in the 1840s. It was owned by the same family until my dad bought it. There's a rumor that it has a tunnel entrance on the property because of the Underground Railroad. I lived there by myself for several years during college. Dad lived with his girlfriend. Paranormal stuff happened on the daily, so much so that it was just routine. Footsteps throughout the house and going up and down the stairs during the day was typical, but mostly at night and in the early morning. If it was at night, I would usually just turn up the TV. Several times, I was woken up by a man who shouted, Hey! When I'd look around, a man's silhouette could be seen leaning casually against the doorway of my room. I got the feeling that this ghost didn't like me but I didn't really give a damn and I would just roll back over and go to sleep. Often, I would also wake up to the feeling of my bed shifting, as though somebody had sat down. Once I felt something rub my back, not in a malicious kind of way, more like a motherly way. I'll also experience very strong and sudden aromas. They'll come out of nowhere and last just for a few seconds. Usually it's cigar smoke, my dad and I don't smoke, old ladies' perfume, or freshly baked bread. Items would always go missing and then magically reappear in other areas of the house. You never, ever feel alone. You always see somebody just out of the corner of your eye. I had to keep the blinds closed because I kept seeing somebody walk across our front or back porch, but nobody would ever be there. I always got the feeling that if you glanced at the top of the stairway, you would see somebody standing there. Very often, I would hear feminine humming. It definitely had tune and inflection. It wasn't our central heating or air conditioning or anything mechanical like that. 
After a particularly active paranormal night, the next morning, there was a random, dirty, rusty, handmade nail, about three inches long, laying on its side outside of my bedroom. The only time I felt genuinely scared was when I was playing a video game at about 4 p.m. I heard the front door open, and my dad whistled his distinctive whistle. I heard footsteps and keys being placed on the counter. Without looking up from the game, I said, Hey dad, I didn't know you were coming here today. I would have ordered pizza or something. He didn't answer me, and I thought maybe he just didn't hear me. So I paused my game and went into the kitchen. It was totally empty. No keys on the counter. His shoes weren't by the door. The door was locked and his car was not in the driveway. I thought, wow, kind of rude for him to leave so soon. So I called him and said, where'd you go in such a hurry? Dad sounded confused. I haven't left work. I'll be here late tonight. My dad works about an hour and a half away. There's probably more things that I just can't remember right now. My friends have all hated that house and they would never come over. Whenever family comes over, they get weirded out by the vibes, which is strange because most of them don't believe in these things. I live in a relatively old house in Scotland. I have always felt another presence at home, and I have believed in the paranormal since forever. It all started when my sister and I heard the floorboards creak in the middle of the night. When she went to check, nobody was there, and the entire family was fast asleep. A little while later, I woke up and I saw a little girl in my room just looking at me before literally jumping and never seeing her again. Until recently, I always thought that I had tricked myself into imagining her, as I remember dreaming about a child and playing with this girl. The other day, my sister heard a little girl giggling. She's the only girl in the house now. When she told me, I instantly connected this to seeing the little girl. But perhaps this could explain more occurrences as well. My sister once told me a while back that sometimes when she looks out of the corner of her eye at the doorways, she would see a shadowy figure darting from room to room. I didn't really believe her. Well, until it happened to me. I was sitting in my parents' bed because I sleep in a closet-sized room with no Wi-Fi, and I glanced up to see this shadowy figure skip into the bathroom. I immediately went to check to see if anybody was there, and to my surprise, the room was empty. But nothing will ever scare me as much as what happened about a year ago. I woke in the middle of the night or early morning, which is very unusual for me. I should mention that I sleep facing the wall as I hate being open to the rest of my room. I laid on my back for a brief second or two before hearing three perfectly synced and identical claps at the time, I assumed some robber or burglar was checking to see if I was awake, so I bolted under the sheets and faced the wall, lying motionless as I was terrified. My brother and sister were away at the time, so I was home alone with my parents. In the morning, I asked them if it was them, and they said no. My parents have never been sleepwalkers or anything of the sort. After doing some research, I found out that apparently ghosts clap to communicate sometimes. My biggest regret is not looking to see who or what was clapping. My whole family believes me though, excluding my skeptical brother. Can anyone explain this? Or has anyone experienced anything like it? I'd love to know. I wanted to share some stories about my family's haunted house, so here goes. I'm 19 and I still live with my parents, along with my little sister, who's 14, and my little brother, who's 17. Many, many things have happened in this house, 
and it's gotten to the point where I feel safer at my boyfriend's house. We got this house when I was around 11. I would cry to my mom almost every night after getting out of the shower, because while I would shower, I would hear somebody talking to me from the other side of the curtain. It got so bad that I eventually made my mom stay in the bathroom with me while I showered. A couple of years go by and nothing happens. When I started high school, that's when things started happening again, but worse. I would often hear things. Things would move around by themselves and nothing would ever be in the same spot where I had left it before. I told my parents about this, but they thought I was crazy for like two years. Then things started happening to them as well. One morning, I woke up with a burning sensation on my leg. I had three upside down K shapes scratched into my leg. At first I thought maybe somehow I had done it in my sleep, but they were perfectly aligned. Plus, at that time I chewed on my nails, so I didn't really have any nails to scratch myself with. About two years ago, my little sister comes running into my room at 3.30, shaking. Once she got me awake, she told me that my mom was screaming. I go into her room and she's hysterical, crying her eyes out, with the covers pulled all the way over her head, and my dad comforting her. My mom is shaking and she's so scared she couldn't even talk. My dad left for work that morning, around four, and my mom couldn't sleep unless she had me in there with her. For days, she refused to tell me what happened, but then she finally did. She said that she had woken up and saw a rather short black silhouette standing next to my dad. She said the figure was all black, but she could feel how evil it was, and it had a sort of red-orange glow behind it. She was so scared, she wouldn't let me leave her alone in the house. In 2020, I met my boyfriend, and I had him over to the house for the first time. He ended up staying the night, but I didn't tell him about my house in fear of scaring him off. It's around two in the morning and my parents are asleep. My brother is at a friend's house and my little sister is in the dining room, painting. My boyfriend and I are in the brother's room because he has a PlayStation. I don't. I'm playing a game and he's watching me play, and I look over and he's not really paying attention. He's looking into the living room, and he looks very pale. I asked him if he was okay, what was wrong, and if he was feeling alright. Finally I started shaking him because he wouldn't reply. Then he said, who's that standing in front of your parents' room? This freaked me out because I looked and nothing was there. I asked him to describe what he had seen. He said he was looking at exactly what my mom had said she saw a couple of years prior. A couple of months later, my boyfriend is in my room by himself and my parents are outside on the porch talking. I go in to get him to come outside and go on a walk with us. But when I walk into my room, he's under the covers and my nightstand is completely upside down. He's pale and shaking, and I ask him what happened. He explained he was on his phone waiting for me to come back when everything on my nightstand flew off and then flipped over. I had glass bottles and a couple of miniature paintings on my nightstand, and there was broken glass everywhere. This was a couple of months after we got together, but there's so much more I could tell. It's already such a long story, but the point is, I don't feel safe here, and I don't know what to do or who to turn to. I don't know what's in my house, but it is definitely not friendly. I'm a real estate agent. Also, for privacy, I've changed the names of the clients. This is one of the few haunting type things that I've ever experienced. Anyway, my clients, we'll call them Jim and Pam, had been looking for a home to buy for a while. We'd seen a few houses that were in their price range, but didn't have the features they wanted. So when a home matching their requirements and price point popped up on the market, we were all more than motivated to give it a look and hopefully make an offer. 
we scheduled a showing for 7 p.m. that evening. I didn't have much going on that day, so I got over there at around 6.45 p.m., and since I still had 15 minutes before the buyers would get there, I decided to look through the house and also turn on the lights as it was getting dark, and turning on lights for a showing is always a good idea anyway. When I walk into the house, right away I notice it's fairly nice for the price that it's at. It seems to be underpriced by at least 10000 if not more, and that gets me excited. I know the buyers are going to want to make an offer, so I just have to make sure there's nothing super awful. As I make my way through the rooms, turning on lights, I come upon an intercom in a hallway next to the kitchen. I press it and talk through it to hear that the other receiver is directly below me in the basement. Very cool, as I've only seen intercoms in movies. Then I walk through the door frame into the kitchen. The counters and cupboards looked nice but cheap, and then I noticed the refrigerator was open. Must have bad suction, I thought, or someone left it open. I think to myself to go over and shut it. I did so, and then I gave it a little tug, but it seemed pretty well sealed. So I figured somebody from a previous showing had just left it open. Even though the refrigerator has nothing in it, it's still a little rude of the last agent to not do a once-over and shut it. As I mull this over, the intercom buzzes and static comes through. I slowly walk into the hallway as it continues, and a few steps away, it cuts out. Hmm, I thought. Must have electrical shortages or something downstairs. I hadn't gone downstairs yet, so I figured I might as well go down there and turn on the lights and check to see what was going on with the intercom. The basement doesn't have a switch, just a pole string attached to a light in the middle of the room. The light from outside is coming in through the small windows, just enough so that I can see where I'm going, but not much more. Before I can pull the light string, I hear the intercom buzz back on, but this time it's static through the basement receiver, so now the interference is coming from upstairs. I'm not really sure what's going on at this point. I turn on the light and run up the stairs. Again, the intercom stops as soon as I get close. But something in the kitchen catches my eye. I walk into the kitchen to find that every cupboard, drawer, and the refrigerator are wide open. My heart sinks and the hairs on my neck stand on end. At this point, the scare was over, but the clients called to let me know they had just arrived. It was 6.55ish, so all of this happened pretty quickly. I hurriedly slammed everything shut and tried to act normal. When I opened the door, Jim asked if I was feeling alright. I assume I was slightly pale. Look like you've seen a ghost type of appearance. I said that I was, and we quickly walked through the house. Nothing opened this time. And afterward, when I asked how they felt about the house, they both agreed that something felt off and dark. I told them that I sensed that too, but didn't go into detail. Needless to say, we didn't write an offer, and I've never gone back. Definitely creeped me out. Definitely haunted. When I was a kid, I would always feel watched from a very young age, around six or seven. I would refuse to sleep alone for this reason, and I insisted on sleeping with my brother or mum. If I was forced to sleep alone, which was the case most of the time, I would stare into my room and observe the details for hours before finally falling asleep. My first experience came when I was around eight. I went to bed like I would on a normal night. My mom would pretend to sleep next to me and keep me company so that I would fall asleep. When she didn't do this, I would place a large body pillow next to me so that I wouldn't feel watched. I woke up in the middle of the night one night. I would always wake up at around two. But on this night, next to my bed was an old woman that I could see through. I could see all the details, though. She had wrinkles, probably around 80 years old. She had curly hair and wore a buttoned sweater with stripes. I screamed at the top of my lungs and ran out the door, next to her. 
my dad picked me up and let me sleep in their bedroom. It would only escalate from here. Almost every night from this point on, I would see a cloud shaped like a human standing next to my door when I woke up in the middle of the night. Keep in mind, I would always wake up at around 2 a.m., with no exceptions. It would disappear after 30 or 60 seconds, and kind of just dissolve and float up into the roof. I could move and speak, so it was not sleep paralysis. One night, it spoke with me in a woman's voice. I was sleeping when I woke up to the voice saying, Hi. I thought it was my mom, so I hesitated to even open my eyes at first. But then, I was greeted by the figure standing at the door once more. I tried saying a few words, but no response. If I had to guess, I saw this figure at my door every night for months, maybe years. The vibes I got every time I went face to face with it were terrible. I was absolutely horrified. It's hard to explain, but it felt like the thing in front of me was evil. If I remember correctly, it was not 100% stationary. The mass or body of the thing was moving slightly, sort of hovering in position, if that makes sense. My brother reported a female voice whispering, good night, in his ear one night as well, which is super scary. At this stage, sometimes things would fall down in my room at night, and my parents would come search it but find nothing. My brothers, one remains skeptical till this day, started reporting heavy footsteps when they brushed their teeth at night. They would go and check, find nothing, go back to brushing their teeth, then hear the footsteps and repeat. Hearing heavy breathing right next to me at night also happened a few times, stopping when I turned on the lights. One night, where my brother and I were relaxing in the living room, we spotted a figure walking back and forth, right outside our window, maybe five meters away on the grass. It was a summer night, so it was fairly bright. It was shaped like the person I always saw, but this figure was black and not the cloudy type that I would always spot. It walked back and forth for minutes. We called our dad over, but he couldn't see it. Only my brother and I could. One particular incident made me call it quits and beg for help. I was sick and home from school. My mom was going to the bakery, so I would be home alone for a little while, which I hated. I went to my brother's room and started playing some Counter-Strike. After a few minutes, a large sculpture that my brother had made at school fell down onto my face. I got scared, opened the door, and across the hallway I saw the cloud figure at my own room exactly the same spot I saw it every night. This time, it moved quickly toward the kitchen, at a pretty fast pace. I jumped out the window and waited for my mom to come home outside. I had never been that afraid. I get chills just remembering it. At this point, I couldn't take it anymore, and I begged for my parents to find someone that could help. My parents, who had witnessed nothing alarming, didn't share the same desire, but agreed to do it. I could not be present when he was here. I was, quote, too young. But he claimed that three entities lived in the house and gave us some details as to why they were present. From that point on, I never experienced it again. I wouldn't feel watched anymore. I could sleep alone, and I never saw anything again. I don't know what the hell that was, but I'm getting curious now, now that some years have passed. So, if anyone has any ideas as to where these things come from or what I experienced beyond what I've told you and what I know, I would be anxious to hear it. I moved into my current house yesterday. It's a typical middle-of-nowhere farmhouse with thick woods surrounding it. It's a house passed down through generations, starting with my great-grandfather's uncle who helped build it. He died while repairing the silo, the grain suffocating him. In his will, he wanted my great-grandfather to own it. My great-grandfather then died from a heart attack at the age of 93 in the bathtub. My grandma was next in line and within a month of moving in, died in a car crash a few miles from the house. 
My mother then temporarily moved in, and she said she would sell it. Nobody would buy it because of the history. However, she did see some people walking around in the yard. She would later tell me this after I moved in. I just assumed either it was the TV reflection on the windows or her dreaming. And if it was true, it was probably just some teenagers messing around. I wasn't too worried and had my dog to keep me company. The first night I was sleeping on the floor as I hadn't bought a mattress yet. My dog was sleeping next to me and hogging the blanket. I quietly got up to go look for another one when I saw someone quickly walk past to the kitchen. I was confused thinking that maybe one of my buddies who helped me move in was trying to scare me. I walked to the kitchen and saw nothing. I must have been searching every corner and cranny for about an hour. I kept saying, that's really funny, but I need to go to bed. Eventually I gave up and grabbed a blanket and walked back into the living room where I had been sleeping. My dog, who'd been peacefully sleeping, was in the corner of the room whimpering, staring over my shoulder. I got the chills and slowly looked behind me, only to find darkness. I did a quick search of the house, turning on the lights and whatnot, but I found nothing. I decided to keep the lights on and I went back to my dog, Reuben. I settled on the creaky wood floor and threw my blanket over me. Reuben eventually walked up to me and sat down. Just as my heart rate was returning to normal and Reuben was snuggled up next to me, I heard an explosion from the kitchen. I jumped up and stood there. Reuben started crying again and went back to the corner. I grabbed some scissors and walked to the kitchen again. This time, the kitchen light I had turned on was blown out, broken glass shards everywhere. Jokingly, I said, you're paying for that to who I thought was still trying to scare me. The moment I said that, an overwhelming dread came over me. I felt dizzy and out of breath. I noticed I was suddenly very cold. I chalked it up to the light being out. Must have made the kitchen colder. I quickly walked back to the living room to find Reuben staring at the wall. At this point, I'd had enough and I wanted to sleep at a hotel. I grabbed my phone and searched it up as I was unfamiliar with the area. Suddenly, Reuben snarled at the wall. I had never heard him do that before. I looked up, but everything was the same. It was just me and him. However, out of the corner of my eye, I saw movement. I turned and looked out the window directly left of me and saw a man in old attire walking toward the silo. He looked dirty and battered with a slight limp. I could see him because my mother installed a street light. Well, at this point, I decided I would confront him, thinking he was the man inside my new house. I opened the window and yelled at him. The moment I did this, he disappeared right in front of me. At this point, it was four in the morning and I was just done with it. I grabbed my blanket and Reuben and went to sleep in my truck. I woke up at 2 p.m. with several missed calls it was my mom and sister trying to check up on me. I got back to them, and currently, I'm debating what I should do next. Let me start by saying that this has been going on for over a year now. Some days are really bad. Some days, absolutely nothing happens. I live in a rural area. I have lived in this house since my son was two years old, until be 16 in May. Nothing at all happened or felt weird up until about three years ago. I was sitting on my patio in the summer. All of a sudden, I got the feeling that somebody was watching me. My son wasn't home at the time, and I was alone. My house is surrounded by wooded areas. My actual driveway is almost a half mile long from street to house. I looked towards the woods at the back of my house and I saw a man standing in front of a tree. He was older. I'd say he looked to be in his 70s. He was wearing a dark suit. The color was faded black. 
He did absolutely nothing but stand there, staring. He was bald, and the left side of his head looked like a deflated basketball, for lack of a better description. He made me nervous, and I went back inside my house. Fast forward to the present. My son and I have seen this many, many times. He never leaves the woods, doesn't speak, and doesn't try to do anything. We've become used to him. We respect his area, and he respects ours. About three months ago, in early October, I was walking my dog in our yard. She started barking and took off running into the woods. I yelled for her to stop and caught up to her about 400 feet in. I grabbed her leash. Before I could turn to head back home, she started growling. My dog loves people, wouldn't hurt a fly, but her growl was vicious. I finally turned around and there was a man standing there, approximately four feet away. I never heard him or saw him approach. There's no reason for him to be in the woods behind my house. My closest neighbor is a mile down the road. He was also dressed in a suit, a navy blue one, blonde hair, roughly mid-thirties. He caught me off guard and I said, oh, <laughs> you scared me. He replied, beautiful day out today. I said, yes, yes it is. And I began moving to walk around him. I got beside him and had the most awful case of nausea to the point that my mouth filled with saliva and I thought I was going to vomit. I kept walking with my dog. I didn't want him to follow me to my house because my son was in there alone. So I walked along the wooded edge all the way to the top of my driveway. I looked back several times and didn't see him. After a few minutes, I began going back down my driveway to my home. My son called me and said, I thought you were in the backyard. I said, no. I walked up to the road, and we're heading back now. He said, Mom, a man came to the door and said to tell you that it's very rude to walk away during a conversation. Since that day, things have happened at least three times a week. I found a tooth laying on my kitchen floor. I found a small pendant cross on my windowsill. I've had bruises on my arm that look like fingerprints. My dog died from metastasized sarcoma on what we thought was just a sprained shoulder. The same day my dog passed, my son and I both saw this man again. Well, we saw his face, but his body was grayish white. His arms were unusually long, and his legs were just as long. He was crouched down in a position, like a spider. My son is terrified and wants to move. I'd be on board with the idea as well if it weren't for the fact that this man or thing followed me to a friend's house one day, and she saw him too. So I don't think moving is going to do any good. Shortly before becoming pregnant with my second child in 2008, we moved into a 100-year-old mansion that had been renovated into separate apartments. I had never had any sort of paranormal experience before living here, so most of what I experienced I brushed off or made excuses for, but some things were really hard to ignore. I would frequently see shadows or movements out of the corner of my eye, hear whispers that very distinctly sounded like they were coming from inside my apartment, and would often have lights turn on and off by themselves. One night in the middle of summer, I was about seven months pregnant at the time, I was struggling to get comfortable in bed, but finally settled on my back with my hands above my head. No sooner had I started to relax that I felt a cold hand on my stomach. It took me a moment to realize that the hand was coming from the wrong direction. It was as if somebody standing beside my bed had their hand on my stomach. I immediately sat up and looked around, but there was no one there other than my ex who was facing the opposite direction. I told him what happened, and he told me it was probably just the baby kicking and I was mistaken. What I felt was definitely not that. Shortly after this, I started to see a yellow flowing dress with small flowers. 
I don't really know how to explain it. It was like I constantly would see the tail end of someone walking into a room or down the hall. I never got to see the whole person wearing it, just the back of the flowing dress. Every time I saw it, I didn't feel scared, but peaceful. After the birth of my second child, we moved into a bigger apartment across the hall in the same house. I immediately noticed the atmosphere felt different, like the air felt almost heavy. The second night there, I could hear voices on the baby monitor, thinking maybe it was picking up voices from the apartment above ours, and being the nosy person I am, I laid there with my eyes closed and the monitor pressed to my ear, listening hard, trying to pick up what was being said. Suddenly, I could hear a door in my son's room slowly creak open through the monitor. I stopped breathing, trying to listen closely, thinking I was going to hear my son's tiny voice or small footsteps. Instead, it sounded like somebody with heavy, steel-toed boots on was running down my hallway, into my room, and then they launched themselves onto the bottom of our bed. The whole bed shook. I felt paralyzed. My ex started screaming, thinking that we had an intruder, but there was no one there. We tried to rationalize what had happened. Maybe a spring got caught in the mattress during the move and happened to release at that exact moment. And maybe the footsteps I heard were actually from upstairs. All I know is that from that point on, I was absolutely terrified to stay in the apartment at night without a lot of lights on. There was also a weird room or storage area attached to my son's room that gave me the absolute creeps, and I could never get the door to stay closed. I put a hook and eye lock at the top of the door, and almost every day I would go in and the lock would be off and the door would be open. We never used that room, and my son was only three at the time. Finding the door open always gave me anxiety, like that feeling you get right before something bad happens, which is such a weird thing to say about a random empty room, but it's true. Not one second from the time I moved into that apartment until I moved out a few months later did I ever feel comfortable. I always felt like I was being watched. After moving out, I met multiple people that lived in that house and every single one talked about all the weird and unexplainable things that happened while they lived there. This is the only place that I have ever lived that I've had weird, creepy, or otherwise unexplainable experiences. But that was the house that made me a believer. I had a creepy experience at the Lizzie Borden house and I thought I'd share. For the record, I don't believe in ghosts and I'm skeptical of all paranormal experiences, but I will certainly admit when something is creepy and can't be easily explained. I didn't go into this day expecting or hoping to have any kind of experience. We stayed in one of the attic rooms, the Knowlton room, which had a large toy chest in the corner. I had no issue with the room and found it cute and comfortable. But when I went to sleep, I had awful dreams all night. It was a hyper-realistic dream. I was lying in the very same bed that I was actually sleeping in, feeling terrified. I was trying to fall back to sleep, but it was difficult because of the strong sense of fear and because I was so thirsty. My throat felt like paper. I wanted to get up and get a drink of water from the bathroom but I was too afraid. I felt that if I opened my eyes, I would see somebody in the room. I lay there for what felt like hours trying to fall back to sleep so that morning would come. At one point, I heard what sounded like a ball go bouncing across the floor. I heard it a second time and I woke up my friend who was sleeping next to me to ask if she had heard it, but she hadn't and it didn't happen again. I assume that I dreamed this whole part because she doesn't remember me waking her up, but maybe she was just too tired to. Then at some point, I think I woke up for real because I was suddenly aware that I was lying in bed with my eyes open and the fear was suddenly lifted and the room felt completely normal. It was like a cloud had been lifted from my mind 
which I sometimes feel when I'm struggling to wake up and I finally pull out of it. I was still really thirsty though. I didn't think much of my bad dream until the tour guide started to mention experiences that other guests had had while sleeping in the house. When we went to the attic, the guide told us that a lot of people who sleep there hear the sound of children playing at night. I asked if anyone had ever reported hearing a ball bounce across the floor. She said, that's pretty common. Why do you ask? She also refused to go into the attic guest rooms. She let us explore, but despite having no issue with the murder room and the master bedroom, she would not go into Knowlton room. This could have just been an act to enhance the tour spookiness, but I don't know. I've also since learned that bad nightmares are very common in that room. For the record, I don't typically have dreams like this. I have no problem sleeping in strange places. I have stayed at many hotels and inns and friends' houses. And while I may have restless dreams, I don't have nightmares, especially not these vividly realistic ones where I'm just lying in bed feeling afraid. I've only had a dream like this once before, shortly after I had moved into my current apartment and was sleeping alone in my new room. No one ever lived in that part of the attic. It was open storage space and was only converted into guest rooms when the house became a bed and breakfast. So there's no reason for why there would be children's ghosts in the attic, let alone any ghosts at all. I know the tour guides claim that the attic is the most haunted part of the house, but there isn't really a logical reason for this. There were some children who were killed next door and they claim that those children come to visit, but I don't know. Maybe the atmosphere cultivates bad dreams. I did look at the toy chest before going to bed, so maybe that influenced my dream. But I didn't notice any balls in it, just dolls and stuffed animals. I know a bad dream isn't the most interesting thing, but the fact that many people have had bad dreams in this room is at least a little weird. It's the spookiest thing that I've ever experienced, for sure. I was hoping I might get another independent report of hearing a ball bouncing. I am too skeptical to believe anyone who says, me too, after hearing my story. But nonetheless, I find it neat that I dreamed of a ball bouncing. Despite only noticing dolls and not balls, and not being a person who's overly susceptible to creepy places, and that this fits with other people's reports of having heard children playing. What do you think? Have you ever had any strange experiences at the Lizzie Borden house? My parents rented a house in a remote upstate area and we moved in when I was 16. I lived there until I was 25. I'm now 31. Slowly, my sisters moved out later than I did, and my parents just moved out like six months ago. Here are a few of the encounters we've had. Every night, my sisters and I would hear footsteps coming up the stairs and going into the bathroom. Every time, we assumed it was one of my parents up for a late night bathroom run since the only bathroom was in the upstairs area, where the rest of the bedrooms were, and my parents' room was downstairs. We eventually realized it wasn't them. Then we'd get up to use the bathroom and wait forever before knocking, only to find out that the bathroom was empty. My dog, who slept in my bedroom, would wake up at the same time every night, always around 3 a.m., and stare and growl at the dark area in my bedroom. My little sister and I, who shared the bedroom, could feel a presence, but we were too scared to look at the shadow. So, while looking at the floor, we would slowly pick up our dog, place him under the covers with us, and just pray that it went away. The main encounters happened in my bedroom. It must have been where it lived, or maybe there were multiple entities. But one time, my younger sister and I redecorated our bedroom and placed a new shoe rack right in front of our bed and lined up our shoes. We both sat down on the bed to look at it from different angles and see if we liked the placement. And a shoe came flying off the rack directly at us. We both booked it and didn't come back for hours. It liked to hide stuff from me 
specifically me. I would be doing my makeup, and then after I used the foundation or lotion, I would go to put the cap back on, and it would just be gone from the vanity. It would happen right in front of me. Or I would spread out my outfit on the bed that I would plan to wear, shower, come to get dressed, and a piece of clothing from the outfit would be gone and nowhere to be found. Now I'm sure you'll think maybe a sister, right, since there were four of us. Well, I thought that too, except that it happened consistently for years. I got used to it. I'd leave a note sometimes in the bathroom for family before I went out, with, for example, my foundation uncapped that said, the elf took my cap, if you randomly find it, please put it back on. That's what I always called it, an elf because of how mischievous it was. Later, I learned to give it gifts. I would place out my outfit or my engagement ring in its box, or whatever else was really important that I wouldn't want to go missing. And I would loudly announce in my empty bedroom, I need this, please don't take it, but I've left you this, for example, an earring, for you to play with while I'm out or asleep or whatever it was. It worked. I read that online, by the way, as I tried to find ways of cohabitating, since financially we couldn't move out. One day, my sisters and I asked the landlord what was in the attic, since there was one that didn't have a ladder to go up to it. And he told us that he didn't know. He'd bought the house as is many years ago and had never been in the attic, so he had no idea what was there, if anything. So I got the bright idea of let's check it out. We got chairs, which we stacked on top of each other while my parents were out, and I was going to check while my sisters held the chairs for me to climb on. Well, I opened the attic door, and all I could see was pitch black. I wasn't even at eye level into the attic yet, just barely could see into it, as I'm pretty short. So my sisters got a flashlight. I turned it on, went to put it on the floor inside to climb in, and poof. It went out immediately. I figured, okay, the battery's dead. My other sister handed me a lit candle to put on the floor so that I could climb in while the other one went to get batteries. And as soon as I placed it on the floor, poof, it got blown out. At that moment, I flipped. I closed the attic as fast as I could, and none of us ever planned on checking again. These are just a few descriptions of our paranormal encounters. My parents either never believed us, or they didn't want to. They never heard anything downstairs and never noticed anything. Until, when we all moved out and they moved into my old bedroom, where my mom would swear that stuff disappeared on her all the time, that lights got turned on and off, the doors open and close and so on. Then the landlord lost the house to foreclosure, and my parents moved out into their own home about six months ago. The haunted house is now abandoned, as nobody has purchased it, and more haunted than ever, I'm sure. I wouldn't take any amount of money to go sleep there for one more night on my own. I'm pretty sure that the house I babysit at is haunted. The parents were going to a party and they were supposed to be home at around nine, but rang me saying that they wouldn't be back until midnight. So it was my job to put the kids to bed, which I had no problem with. They are the sweetest, most well-behaved kids I've ever met. It got to 9.30 and the kids brushed their teeth, got their books and went to bed. I tidied up, sat down, did a little homework, and then FaceTimed with my friend. This is a religious family, and there are crosses on some of their walls. I heard what sounded like someone knocking on the front door, but it was about 10.15, and the parents usually message me when they're almost home. And of course, they have keys, so I automatically suspected that it wasn't them. I checked, but there was nobody at the door. So, I just sat back down on the couch and got carried away talking to my friend again. Then, the same three knocks. 
They have guinea pigs, and I started to suspect that it was those guys nibbling on the cage or just messing around, so I went and checked. But they were in their little home things. I still believed it was them, but then, as I was leaving the room, I saw the wooden cross that was nailed at its head on the wall lift from the bottom and drop three times, knocking three times. It was as though some force was lifting the bottom half that wasn't nailed and dropping it like a door knocker. I just froze, and my friend was like, oh, what, what, what was that? I tiptoe ran back into the living room. I have no idea what caused that. I started to think maybe it was one of the kids jumping from upstairs, causing the walls to shake or something. But the cross is on the wall between the kitchen and the dining room, and directly above was the parents' room and the bathroom. So unless they were in their parents' room or the bathroom jumping up and down in sets of threes, it doesn't really make sense. Plus, they were asleep. Perhaps coincidentally, the homework that I was doing was philosophy, which can be very anti-religion and sometimes anti-God. In fact, I was actually writing an answer to the question, is the Western idea of God illogical? Probably not the most respectful homework to do in the house of religious people, but hey. I don't know what it was. A mocking? God showing me he was real? Maybe not. I can't explain it to this day. So this was when I was about 16. My family and I moved into a registered historic home that was 240 years old. It was dated around when our town was founded. When you first walked into the house, you felt it. It was like an ominous cloud that hung over everything. The first experience I ever had was in the parlor that used to hold wakes in it. I was sitting at the computer, we had converted it into an office, and I kept hearing loud noises directly above me. The room above me was my bedroom, and I was the only one home. I looked around to make sure the dogs were with me and that they weren't tearing anything apart. I initially ignored it and it subsided. After about an hour, it started up again, but with more violence. It sounded like somebody had moved my entire wardrobe across the bedroom floor. I ran up the staircase, but by the time I got to the second landing, the sound stopped. I barged into my room and it was completely silent. No furniture had been moved. The second event was a lot more terrifying. It was about 3 a.m. I woke up to the sound of grown men arguing outside of my bedroom door. The catch? The only male that lived with us was my 14-year-old brother. I jumped out of my bed and flung the door open, trying to catch it. Nothing. I got back in bed after I stupidly locked the door as if that was going to stop anything, and it started again. This time, I went to my grandmother's and brother's separate rooms. They were both asleep, and every TV was off. The toilet down the hall flushed itself, and I ran back to my room. The third event is when we decided to move. My brother was taking a shower upstairs. While he showered, a clear, perfect imprint of another set of feet appeared in front of him. Small things had happened in between those events, but these really stood out the most. I'm so glad we don't live there anymore. So I work for my local authority's cultural service. I can work in any one of the cultural buildings across the city. But one that I work in, I believe is definitely haunted. The building is 300 years old, used to be a farmhouse until the 1860s, and then an upper middle class family home. There have been a few occasions where I believe I've experienced paranormal activity there. One time, I was covering a Sunday shift. If I covered a Sunday shift, I always made sure we got in a tea break before we opened. So, three of us sat in the canteen, having a drink and a natter. No one else was in the building. I was the key holder, so anyone getting in before opening time had to get in through me. 
Something in the building went bang. A bang like something heavy falling over. It seemed to come from the corridor across from us, but nothing was out of place. The three of us heard it and the three of us searched the building to look for an explanation, but literally nothing was out of place. Another time, I was working on some admin in the office. I usually shared an office, but that day I had it to myself. The offices were the old servants' bedrooms. We had a volunteer working in the office opposite. She left to collect her things, ready to leave, just as her husband came up to collect her. I sent her husband back downstairs to meet her. Within a minute, I saw someone and presumed it was the volunteer come back up the stairs and go into the office. So I got up to tell her that I had literally just sent her husband back downstairs, but the office was empty. On a third occasion, I was in one room tidying something up. I heard footsteps walking toward me from the adjacent room. I was in the building by myself. Finally, again on my own, I was in what was essentially a gentleman's game room, polishing the glass cases. I had this overwhelming feeling that I couldn't explain the origin of, that I wasn't welcome in there, being a woman. Now whenever I go in there, I can't stop myself saying something like, I know, but I'm just doing some polishing and I'll be out, and the feeling subsides or doesn't come on at all. I'm not the only person that's come out of that room with an odd feeling. Two girls one evening while locking up went to switch the lights off, and they both at the same time came out feeling scared and crying, but they couldn't explain why. So this summer, my family and I stayed in a house in Germany for a week. It seemed nice enough, but right away, there was just a strange feeling throughout the whole house. I don't know how to explain it, but you know when it just doesn't feel right? So probably the first thing I should mention is that there were noises coming from everywhere. Footsteps, banging, that kind of thing. I should also mention that none of us talked about it being scary until we left and were in the car. So on the first day, when my mom and I were in my room and were hearing noises, neither of us mentioned it, even though we both knew that it was nothing, right? The first really scary thing happened on the second night. My room was opposite the conservatory, and every night there was a noise coming from there. But on this specific night, a chair freaking moved. Like, what the heck? On one of the other nights, and this is probably one of the scariest things, my mom thought she saw my brother running between his room and the bathroom. But when she asked my dad why my brother wasn't in bed, my dad walked out of the bathroom and said my brother was in bed. So who was that person running in between rooms? We all agreed that my brother's room felt the weirdest. Luckily, my brother is a complete lead box, so he was fine with sleeping in there. So, you can probably understand why my mom did not want to sleep in there when my brother went in with my dad on the last night. I needed to use the restroom so many times that night. I don't know why. And before I went for the last time, I thought I heard one of my parents getting up for the bathroom because I heard footsteps and things moving around in there. But then... I realized that my parents' door had never actually opened, and when I asked them about it the next day, they said neither of them had gotten up. That same night, my mom was in my brother's room. She had put her Garmin watch on a book. She heard a noise, and the watch was half off the book. She heard a shuffling noise, and a thump, and then the watch was on the floor, and the sensor light was flashing. She came into my room and slept in there because she was terrified. One more thing is that everybody woke up loads of times every night. Usually we all sleep pretty well. I really don't know what to make of it, but I'm pretty sure that house was haunted.
So my family and I have been living in my house for about 18 years now, and I've noticed a few weird things happening, but nothing evil and sinister. There are a few spirits in the house, and they usually appear randomly, so they come and go as they please. But there will be times that you'll randomly look to a particular spot in the room, and you can picture them in your head, or you'll see them from the corner of your eye. The spirits in my house are both young and old. There are two men. One is my grandfather, and the other is unknown. There is a female, and she's unknown also. So are the two young girls and the boy. The older spirits stay with me in my room. The unknown male lays beside me or sits next to me on the bed, and the woman sits on the edge of my bed or sometimes lays next to me. One of the little girls peeks around the cupboard in my kitchen, while the other sits with me on my bed alongside the little boy, who also stands in my doorway. But there have been three occurrences that I know of that have happened to me besides the spirits surrounding me on a daily basis. The first was the shadow figure in the laundry. I had just had a shower, and I opened the bathroom door. The laundry light suddenly turns on. There was a shadow figure that looked like my older brother, so I said his name. Then I take a step forward, and the figure rushes to the back door. I chicken out and run to my room to get dressed. Once I had done that, I told my dad, because my mom is a skeptic. The second was the shadow figure that was in my room. I was lying in bed watching some YouTube before I went to sleep, like I usually do. And I don't know about other people, but I always put my head under the covers because I don't like the dark. Anyway, I took my head out from under the covers, and I see a shadow run into my bedroom wall. I just put my laptop down on my bedside table and went to sleep. The third is the orb outside my front door. It was after dinner, and I was going to feed my dog. And as I was walking out of the dining room, I looked toward the front door, and there was a bright orange orb floating on the other side of it. I looked to my parents and back at the door, but the orb was gone. I don't really know what to make of these recent encounters. They're not like the other ones that I'm used to. What do you think? I've had a few interesting experiences since I started using my spare room three months ago. A little backstory about the spare room. When I first bought my home last year, there was a family of around 13 people living in it, six of which were adults. There were three small bedrooms and one sketchy annex in the garage. A year later and the neighborhood is still telling me stories about how awful these people were as neighbors. The annex room was initially shoddy framing and drywall work, presumably installed by that family. The walls were painted a weird green color, and the rug was a wrinkly stained mess. It became apparent that someone had been peeing in all four corners of the room. I figured it might just be pets, but there was a mirror that had, please help me, written on it in makeup, and the room locked from the outside. The day we got our keys, I called to respond to the Seattle riots with my National Guard unit, and I was gone for about a month. During that time, my wife and the in-laws began renovating the home to make it livable. I felt guilty being unable to help. My wife got together with my mom to convert that scary extra room into a man cave and jam room with all my musical equipment and memorabilia. It came out really nice, but I haven't found much time to use it in the past year. A couple of months ago, I built a gaming PC and decided to set it up in that room. Now that I've been going in there almost daily, things have started to feel a little strange around the house. I get the sensation that someone is standing directly behind me once or twice a day in the room. Our TV caught fire in the living room a few weeks ago our water main burst last weekend, causing us to dig our yard up over the course of three days. And my garage light keeps turning on and off. I can hear the light switch moving. 
This morning, I got out of the shower to find that my wife had already left for work. I'm coming down the hall and I hear her clearly say, Hey babe, from the spare room side of the house. I replied, You're still here? To which I got silence. I looked out the front window and sure enough her truck was gone. That's when I heard her again. Babe, come here. I grabbed my things and noped to work. Anyway, when I was pulling out of the driveway, I could hear what sounded like a girl screaming from outside, followed by a bang. I stopped before backing into the street, thinking, was that my phone? I waited for a second before continuing on my way, thinking it might just be the school across the street. I got about 50 feet down the road before I heard it again. This time it was faint, but it sounded like it was coming from inside the car. I paused at the stop sign and rolled down the windows to see if it would happen again, as it had sounded identical to the first one. Nothing. I roll up my windows and continue on my way to find that it happened several more times, almost like a recording. The same scream and the same bang, over and over, for another mile or so. Anyway, I'm weirded out for the day. I might sage and bang some pans later, I don't know. Update. So this could all be a coincidence, but we've had a string of bad luck events take place with the recent snow. The following events happened over the course of a week, starting on Christmas Eve. We had a crazy cold snap here in Whatcom County, bringing us to unheard of low temps for the area. As one could expect, our hot water line froze and separated, leaving us without hot water for almost the entire week. Why is it always water problems lately? I ended up spending a bunch of time in the attic installing new copper lines and stuff started going off around the home, with everything beginning from me using the spare room office more often. I'm not surprised that I might have once again disturbed the privacy of whatever entity is in our place. My wife keeps telling me that she's under the impression I've opened and closed the bathroom door when I hadn't been back there all day. This has happened pretty often since I originally told the story about this room. Maybe it's paranoia. The other night we woke up to a really loud sound from the spare room area. Our entire pantry rack system had come off the wall and was barely held up by one of the accordion doors. This could be explained by too much weight on the shelves, maybe, but what happened next made it odd. I got up early the same morning and booted my PC to play some Tarkov. I was in there from around 7 to 10 a.m. When I came out, I noticed that the closet next to our front door was wide open and all the coats inside were on the ground. After a closer look, I realized the plastic hangers were all broken off, like somebody had just ripped everything down. The cold cracked our truck windshield. We've been experiencing some relationship struggles that I don't even care to elaborate on. We had no hot water, couldn't work all that week because of inclement weather, and now this? It's just a lot of stuff in such a short period. Anyway, I don't know what you guys think this might be, but I thought you might enjoy the story. My uncle's house was constructed from zero, but the place where it is had been long abandoned before he started building. I have so many stories from there that, to me, prove that it is indeed haunted. But I'll begin with the oldest one I can remember, before there was even a house there. Right next to the house, there's a kindergarten. I studied there when I was a kid, just like my mom and her brothers before me. There was always a playground legend about a man in a military uniform who called the kids to go behind the school, and then they disappeared. Even as a kid, I remember being so afraid of going to that particular place behind the school, but as I grew, I stopped thinking about it. Fast forward a few years, and my uncle's house had just been finished. One night, when I was out doing laundry with my cousin, 
I decided that I wanted to see the kindergarten from above, as it had been years since I saw it on the inside. So we go into the balcony and get a really good view of the place. And after a few seconds, I notice somebody walking in between the classrooms and the back of the school. I couldn't see their face, but my whole body tensed as I saw this shadow go through the wall and then disappear behind the school. I remembered the story from my childhood, and I still wonder if that's the same man that the kids saw back then. Most of the paranormal experiences I've had have been with my cousin. I believe her when it comes to the paranormal things that she's told me has happened in my uncle's house. One of the scariest ones for her was a time when she had just come home from school and wanted to ask her aunt, let's call her Sarah, if they were going to eat at her grandparents' house or if they would be staying there. So she goes to the bottom of the stairs and yells, Aunt Sarah, are you here? To which Sarah's voice responded, Yes. Then my cousin yelled again, Are we going to go to Grandma's? But no one answered after that. After a few minutes without a response, my cousin went to the second floor and started looking for Sarah. But there was absolutely no one there. Not a single person. She then called her on the phone, only to find out that they had all gone to her grandparents' house and were waiting for her to go as well. She ran out of there and didn't come back for weeks as she was too afraid of the voice she had heard. I wasn't present when this happened, but it's important to the next story where I was present. After those things and a bunch of other paranormal things happened to her and our family, they decided that they would call in a priest to bless the house and invited everybody to pray and later hang out with them. My whole family was there, 20 plus people in the backyard as the priest blessed the house. We were all praying and singing, happy, united, when suddenly, just as the priest was going to climb the stairs to the second floor, a loud voice sounded as if it was coming from where we were standing. It just said, go away. My 14-year-old self was shaking with fear, but the lady that was directing the prayer yelled at us to pray louder and to take each other's hands. A lot of people were crying with horror at what we had just witnessed. That has to be one of the scariest things I've ever been through. And for that, I'm convinced that there's something horrible hiding in my uncle's house. So this isn't anything too crazy, but I do have a little story about my childhood home. It was the summer of 2012. Life was good, and I was up at 2 a.m. watching Teen Nick in my house's den. The whole house was always fascinating to me. One of the first houses built in our small town in Kansas during the Prohibition as a moonshiner's illegal party house. The whole house is a colonial style, full of Victorian features. From the outside, it looks like a two-story, but there are actually three floors and a half a basement. The architecture was always confusing as to how this was accomplished, but wedged between the top and main floor is a log cabin-themed room, our family room and den. It was a glorified bar room fitted with a monstrous fireplace an Alaskan moose head from about 1920, and a salvaged chandelier from the former Douglas Opera House. I always hated being in that room at night because I always got a weird sensation, like someone standing over me, when I would try to sleep on the couch after a long night of TV. My best friend and I also felt like this from time to time, sleeping in my own bed, which used to be the master suite. Never could get the cat or the dog to hang out in the den, though. Its door was an inch thick of solid wood and had a very complex lock that remained tucked inside its latch since no previous owners had the key. We never bothered to close it. It would get stuck in the frame because it was so heavy, designed to keep the police out if someone tipped off a booze party. There was a nursery on the top floor that shared a wall with this room. It was sold to us with no doorknob to the small 4x10 room. It became our home office. 
there was a brand new computer and an all-in-one printer and fax machine that remained unplugged, rarely used. My bedroom was right next to it and I always slept with my door open. In the middle of the night, I could often see the computer light up and paper would cycle through the printer. The unplugged printer. Could never get myself to check it out until the morning. Whenever I looked on the sheets, there was nothing on them and we would just load them back inside. It was my sister and I's favorite place to pirate scary movies. We would close the door so as not to disturb mom and dad since it didn't latch. But one night, she left me in the room to go get a snack. And when she came back, she couldn't open the door. I was trapped inside. My mom had to use a butter knife to force the handle. I was kind of shook given the timing. But back to the den. I'm minding my teen Nick business when out of the blue I get a call from my friend. She tells me that she's doing a Ouija board session, which I've always done my part to stay far away from. She says that her presence told her to call me. She informed me that I was wearing a black shirt, which I was and I only own one. I hung up the call and immediately went to my bedroom to wait out the next few hours to daylight. That same summer, my mom, grandma, sister, and I went on one of our late night drives where we would blast oldies cruising the back roads. As we were driving, an unidentifiable creature ran in front of our car and across the road. None of us agreed on what we saw. We thought that it was a very large white rabbit or cat or small dog. It was moving unthinkably fast for any of those animals though. It made it across the road in two hops. At the time, we joked about it and kept on our way. When we got home and stepped into the foyer, heavy work boots start down the upstairs hall and down the stairs. They stop at the den level. From the foyer, you can see the part of the staircase that leads to the den, and no one is there. We're all looking at each other, waiting for my father to continue his trip down the stairs. Then he comes up from the basement followed by our dog. The cat is chilling in a window on the main floor. We sent him upstairs to investigate. He checked everywhere, even the attic, and there was nothing. Could all be a coincidence. When we moved into an apartment that fall, nothing else strange seemed to happen though. I'm tempted to ask the family who lives there now if they've ever experienced anything. The original owners are buried in the morgue just down the street. And sometimes I think they make a trip to their old home. My mom bought a house when I was in the second grade. It was built in 1856 or 1857, I'm not entirely sure. The guy who built it was a prominent doctor. He had a few kids, but I don't know a whole lot about him. I do know that over the years, a couple of people died there, mostly him and his kids. But we got the house because the woman living there had lost her sister and she wanted to move into a nursing home. The house was not used to treat patients, so far as I know. There was a hospital built maybe 80 yards from us, where I'm fairly sure he did most of his work. I know that place is very haunted, but nothing malicious as far as I know. Anyway, I feel like that's enough background on the house. We lived there in the early 2000s. I was six or seven, and we moved out when I was 13. We didn't live there a very long time, the house just seemed to be bad luck. We had a dog named Snowball. He was an American Eskimo dog, 20 pounds, fluffy, and white as, well, snow. He would just stare in dark corners a lot, as would my cat. I'd hear my mom call for me a lot, but when I went to look for her, she wasn't even home from work yet or hadn't called me. A few times, we would be in the kitchen or the living room and we would hear something digging through my shoe boxes full of Polly Pockets. My bedroom was directly above the living room and the floor was thin. 
when we would go upstairs to look for the cat or the dog, they were usually right there in the living room with us. The cat liked to stay under the couch, but when we would investigate, all my dolls and accessories would be thrown about my room, and the door was closed. Snowball liked to chew on my dolls, as he had a gum disease, and I guess it felt good. But he really didn't like being alone, and his favorite spot was on the green couch, where he would look out and watch the street. He was also old, and only went upstairs when it was cold. And we would all sleep in one room, because he liked the heater. Otherwise, he was downstairs. My cat did the same thing. She was often very close to us. She liked the spot on the red couch where she could watch TV. None of the pets liked going upstairs unless we were there. I spent a lot of time outside, but I also liked to sit in the office. I would play Neopets, RuneScape, and watch videos on various sites. I'd feel like somebody was watching me all the time. I'd turn around, but I was alone. Sometimes when I was outside, I know that my mom was still at work, but in her bedroom, through the window, I would see a man looking down at me. I don't remember being afraid of him, just kind of got used to seeing him. My mom would always say, oh, that's just Dr. Green. I would wave to him and he would just vanish. One night, I woke up and somebody was sitting on my bed and it was freezing as they were pulling my blanket down. I woke up mad and then panicked because pulling at my blanket was the man in the window. Then I could smell it. Something was burning. I woke my mom up and we found that the microwave was shorting out and had burnt through the cable and was on the verge of catching fire. After that, I made my grandmom take me to his grave and I'd leave flowers for him there all the time. Dr. Green was a nice ghost. He would just appear, and he only woke me that one time to warn us. Then there was Luke. Luke was malicious. He terrorized the pets. It's why they wouldn't really go upstairs. He always appeared in dark corners, and I could never bring myself to walk past him. It felt like if I did, something bad would happen. He was more active, too. Cabinets would fly open, things would fall off shelves, and he would throw things at us. In the dead of night, you could hear heavy boots slowly climbing the stairs. Sometimes the TV would randomly flip channels. You'd hear groans, and he actually attacked us. I regularly had nightmares, and I would wake up with strange bruises and cuts and scratches. This was also happening to my mom. We know his name is Luke because my mom used to record QVC and this sewing channel on the VCR. I think it was QVC and they were doing some craft thing, but they asked the caller what their name was and very clearly in a masculine voice, someone says, Luke. Then the woman who was actually the caller and was live on the show goes on to say her name and go on about the product. We were only guessing that the friendly ghost was Dr. Green as the man always appeared in similar clothing to the photos that we had of him, very nice suits and a hat. Luke was dressed in ratty looking clothing and he wore huge boots with spurs. I can still hear his boots clanging up those squeaky steps. Lastly, there was the ghost dog. I love animals, but I hated this dog. It was huge, black, and made me feel sick to my stomach whenever it would appear and it appeared everywhere. Outside, the carport, downstairs, upstairs, and especially the cellar. I could hear its toenails clack on the hardwood, and I would hide under my blankets. The hair on my arms and neck would raise, and I could hear it sniffing me. It makes my skin crawl to think about that dog. If you looked at it, it would growl and vanish, but I only saw it twice. I heard it all the time, though. I would also have nightmares about this huge black dog following me around. It was a recurring dream that scared me so much as a kid. I'd be in the yard and there was a creek that ran through it. It went under the road and there were those huge steel cylinders that let the water pass. I could crouch and walk through them, but I'd see the dog there and it was guarding what looked like a kid's body. 
It would immediately wake me up. I never thought to look up and see if a child had died there. I was a kid, and it scared me to even think about it. But I still see that dream vividly. I own a big black lab, Great Dane Mix, and sometimes he gives me flashbacks to that dog. I could go on and on about the odd things that happened. More happened to my mom, and she has weird pictures, videos, even called a priest to cleanse the house, but I don't think it ever helped. It may have, but the people who live there now have fixed up the house a lot. I've been tempted to knock on the door and ask them, but I feel like that would be weird. I drive past the house every time I go visit my grandparents. Also, stepping back on the property makes me feel uneasy. When we were moving out, I was packing my things. Something knocked over my cork board, and I was frustrated because it broke. I told whatever it was to leave me alone, that I was leaving. I turned back to what I was packing, and then I heard a voice behind me very clearly say, if you come back, I'll kill you. I don't want to take my chances with the paranormal. With a threat like that, I don't want to mess with it, especially as this voice was very different from Luke's. It hissed. It made me feel sick and made the room very cold as well. Whatever this thing was, I don't want to get to know it. And I don't want to tempt fate. When I was between 2 and 14, I lived in a haunted house. Lights would turn on and off without any people in the room. My little brother, who was about 3, would point and scream and cry at the corner where the front door connected to the garage wall. The worst thing was, I used to get in trouble for wearing shoes in the house while people were asleep. The thing is, I didn't even wear shoes in the house. I would take them off the minute I got home and leave them by the door. Whenever I left my bedroom door open during the night, I'd see a very tall man in a sort of old-timey barbershop hat standing in my doorway. When I closed the door on him, I would hear him walk down the hall. I'm also fairly certain that there were two graves in the crawl space under the house. I mean, anthills aren't usually six feet long right? My family never really had money. My mom was a cleaning lady for the majority of my life, and occasionally cut hair on the side in our basement. My dad was the get-rich-quick type who never wanted someone like a boss to answer to, and his ego, unfortunately, got in the way of making a living. At times, he did make some big money, but it was always in lump sums, which he spent as quickly as he got. In 1998, he invented and patented this newly engineered golf club and partnered with a few investors, and money was coming in frequently. He was even doing interviews on the local news about it. It caught some major buzz locally, and then nationally within a couple of years. Finally, he was bringing an income into the household. We always rented. I lived in three houses I know of by the time I was eight years old. Around my 10th birthday in 2001, my mom and dad told us they were looking for houses in a nicer area to buy. About a week later, my mom brought my brother, two sisters, and I to see a house not far from the house that my parents rented. We pulled up, and it was huge. Well, huge for us. We walked into the front room, and it was wallpapered with, well, the only thing I could use for reference would be Snozberry's wallpaper from the Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory movie. The carpet was mint green and had two white French doors going into the dining room. The previous owner's son, who was a middle-aged graying man, 
didn't exactly greet us with a smile. He almost looked frustrated, like we were late, but we weren't. My siblings and I looked at each other as if my mom was crazy for wanting this weird-ass house. Then we saw it. He showed us into the kitchen. The kitchen was huge, with high ceilings. It was half of the first floor, and all knotty pine. The walls, the cupboards, the walk-in pantry, shelves that rounded the entire kitchen. That was the selling point. It was beautiful, and something you don't see much of in humble old colonial homes. Two small bedrooms upstairs with barely a hallway, both knotty pine as well. A little overkill, and also creepy for a bedroom that isn't in a cottage, but hey. My parents opted to make the whole semi-finished basement into their master bedroom. My mom was dead set on buying it, and persuaded my dad. We still talk about how all of us felt this pull into this house. We moved in a couple of months later at the end of summer. My job that afternoon was to attempt to put mine and my brother's bed frames together with the headboard. I didn't know what I was doing, so I started stacking all the nuts and bolts to see how high I could get them before my dad finally came in to do it for me. My mom promised my sisters, who were directly across the hall from me and my brothers, that if they got the smaller room, they could paint it. So my brother and I got the bigger room, with one built-in dresser and a little small door that went into a huge attic, which was another room in itself. I haven't dared to go into the attic, or even wanted to open the door, though. The door looked like it was meant for children, though. Almost like an entrance to a treehouse, or a door for a Keebler elf's hut, like on those cookies. I didn't like that, and I definitely didn't like that I had to sleep next to it. As I'm sitting there, stacking nuts and bolts, I hear a woman clearly say, No. I look into my sister's room thinking that it's one of them, or my mom, but it wasn't. I would have heard somebody coming up the stairs and hit the hallway. So I turn around in my sister's doorway, and I feel the air get thick, like I could almost feel the body heat from someone standing too close. I can only explain the feeling as almost like that feeling when you can't focus because someone keeps fidgeting and moving around. I ran down the stairs and out the back door, where my mom was smoking a cigarette, talking to our new neighbors. To them, I just looked like some kid running around the new house. But I was terrified. Fast forward to winter and we're all settled in. My godparents came over to give me a gift a couple of weeks before Christmas. I opened it and it was a lime green comforter that had football helmets of every NFL team cool if I ever cared about football at all. It was big and warm, so it quickly became my favorite thing in the world. They left late, and we were told since it's Saturday we can watch TV in our rooms until whenever. So I brought my new comforter to bed and turned on a nick at night, quickly falling asleep. I wake up, and the TV is still on. Mind you, mine and my brother's twin beds are right next to each other and both are against a wall with a gap in the middle to get out. I look over at my brother, and his back was to me. Then I go to look at the TV, which is directly in front of us on the built-in dresser, and I adjust my eyes. I see a woman sitting on the edge of my brother's bed, dark long hair, what looks like a dark purple cardigan, and a dark floral skirt. The only light source was from the TV and it was illuminating her features. I couldn't put into words or reference how she looked until recently when I watched the movie The Knowing, which is a horrible Nicolas Cage movie. But in the movie, you couldn't quite see all of the alien's face, just a silhouette of the light and darkness. That's the best way I could describe it. I see a ring that appears to be catching light on her finger. I have no clue if it was on her finger or if she was holding it. She just sat there on the edge of my brother's bed, head down, and admiring this ring that was catching the light off of my television screen. She didn't seem to notice me. I tried to sink into my mattress and slip my head under my new comforter, and I just laid there, in shock. 
I waited until I heard my mom start the coffee pot to run to the kitchen and tell her what had happened. I even drew her a picture. She believed me. My dad, not so much. Almost the exact same experience happened again two years later with my sister when we switched rooms because two teenage girls obviously need a bigger space. There was nothing paranormal that we noticed happening in between those experiences. It happened and we would never bring it up. My dad's new and improved golf club had one little problem. There was a defect. The head was flying off left and right on numerous orders. My dad was back to being broke. You'd think a mortgage, a wife, and four kids would give him a little pep in his step to get a steady job, at least in the interim, but nope. Back to the drawing boards and back to us kids helping clean banks with my mom on the weekends for extra money. The fighting started, the divorce happened, dad moved out and mom stayed in the house with us. By this time I'm 14, my first year of high school and finally I could go out with my friends, even the ones who had cars. My mom started drinking heavily on the weekends around this time and would frequently call whatever friend I was with that had a cell phone and spout out her Taco Bell order because she knew we would end up there at some point before I came home. My sisters worked doubles together at an Italian restaurant every weekend, so my mom would always be home by herself having a pity party and getting drunk. My mom calls my friend and I tell her not to answer. I told her that I would just get the regular Supreme burrito with no beans that she always orders. I get home and she's in the living room and she starts telling me about a man she was talking to. He looked like a young Elvis, she said, and he sat in the chair across from where she laid on the love seat. She was drunk. I didn't pay it any attention. She was just rambling about a dream, I was sure. The next day, the friend who my mom had called came over and told me that she wanted to play the voicemail that my mom had left her when she called the day before. My mom had said, hey, I just wanted to see what you guys were up to and if you go to Taco Bell, could you get me the regular thing I ask for? Then the phone stays connected. She never hangs up. At first you hear nothing, then a conversation between her and a man. At points, she interrupts him wondering who he is. You can't really tell what he's saying, only bits and pieces but my mom's voice is clear. Then he told her at the end, as clear as day, please lay on your side just in case you get ill. I got instant chills. My friend was visibly disturbed, even after already hearing it, and I felt sick. We played it for everyone, and they all had the same reaction. My mom remembers none of it. She doesn't remember telling me about the man, and she doesn't remember the incident. We forgot about it, and we never talked about it anymore. My dad got sick of living with his own mother, and the house was in his name, so he legally kicked my mom out, and at this point my older sister moved in with her fiancé, and my other sister moved with mom to a house that they rented a few minutes away. My brother and I stayed behind because my mom got a job as a caregiver for that winter in Florida. As soon as my dad moved back in, Things took a turn. He did not believe in ghosts. He was a huge skeptic. Until around 2007. He sat up in bed late at night and was smoking a cigarette. He had a big solid oak sleigh bed and it had a huge headboard. He started hearing knocks and felt the vibration on the headboard because his back was resting on it as he sat up. He stood up and it stopped. He sat down and relaxed his back, back up against the headboard. Something started knocking, then pounding hard on the headboard. He stood up and came to the basement stairs and called us down there so that we could witness this, trying to make us believe in something that we already knew was there. A couple of days later, Christmas lights flew across the room like somebody had yanked them. A couple of days after that, Loud sounds of what sounded like scraping metal across concrete came from the attic. A week later, my brother's sleeping and gets punched in the face. A couple of days after that, my dad's girlfriend sees a hand appear over him in bed. That upcoming weekend, the kitchen chair moved into the hallway while we were all in the living room watching movies. 
Coffee teaspoons and hairbrushes would disappear and reappear. Sounds of people going up the stairs. Friends who knew nothing about any of this would see what looked like someone walking back and forth from the upstairs bedroom. It got bad. We were all terrified. My dad was screaming into the void. He couldn't protect us or beat the ass of whoever was doing all of this. By this time, my dad was working, probably just to get out of the house, which meant he had to take plenty of business trips. While coming home from Virginia, fate had it that at the airport, he met Jason Hawes and Grant Wilson from the sci-fi show Ghost Hunters. They were coming to investigate a haunted prison for the show. My dad just started watching their show because of all the things happening in our house and only went over to them with the sole intention of getting help for what we were going through. They set him up with contacts to a paranormal group that they knew well for our area. They came, they saw, and they told us that it was definitely paranormal activity. The psychic said that there was a man who liked to hang out in the basement and the living room. A greaser type, with slick back hair and cigarettes rolled in his sleeve, kind of like a young Elvis. Also, he loved my dad's new car. A woman who was reserved and quiet who liked the attic and the naughty pine bedroom was there too. An impatient and angry old woman who paces around everywhere and likes the living room was also there. The team set up cameras, tripods, and microphones around the whole house before shutting off the lights. The only things eventful that happened the night of was a camera and a tripod were thrown to the ground in the attic, and everyone heard that metal against concrete scraping sound. It was so loud it sounded like it was in the middle of the room. They left, and when they came back a few days later, they had evidence. A woman's voice was caught saying no before the camera and tripod flew forward in the attic. The investigators, while bending down to go through the attic door to set up the tripod, said that one of the cameras in the naughty pine room caught a woman saying, crawl out, you have to crawl out. There were growls. There were snarky remarks said in the basement and a man's voice saying, where is she? The investigators did the whole spiel, you're dead, it's time to go to the other side. It was a lot to take in. My dad, who was raised Catholic, asked if they could set up a home blessing, which we got that afternoon and we all had to take part in. It did definitely settle down after that. There are a lot more things that went on in that house, but I'm writing a novel over here. This house somehow sticks with all of us in my family. My friends still talk about the house. I dream about it all the time. It sounds funny, but there's a definite trauma that lingers when you spend your adolescent years living in a place like that. I think it's so strange, like it still has a hold on all of us. Everyone's pins, passwords, and top secret codes are the numbers of that address, still, and we haven't lived there since 2010. The weird pull that we all have to this house telling each other when we happen to drive by it, the way we weirdly miss it. It's just strange. For the first few months after my kids and I moved into our house, the house seemed pretty normal. But then one night, my son came screaming down the stairs in what I would call a night terror. I assume he woke up from a nightmare and it just kept going. He finally took a breath and said, I was sleepwalking, I'm okay, and went back up to his room. Then the weirdness started. One night, I was down in the basement doing laundry and I heard a small child's voice behind me say, hi there. When I turned around, no one was there. At that point, we started finding toys in the basement in obscure places. My first thought was that the children who lived there before had hidden them in the crevices in the walls. Then one day, I noticed a box of old marbles appeared where I had just cleaned. None of the toys belonged to my kids. I also set up a cheap dollar store alarm system around the office area 
so that I knew when the kids would sneak into the office to try to find birthday and Christmas presents. Little stinkers. They did it often. One day, when I was in the bathroom, the alarm went off. I yelled from the bathroom, Hey, get out of my office! Since my son and I were the only ones home, I heard him yell from upstairs, I'm not in your office. As time went by, we could hear a piano playing at night that I thought might be the neighbors, and sometimes the lights and ceiling fan would go on and off. I blamed old lighting. The front door would sometimes open if not double locked. I told the woman who owned the home before the new landlords bought it as our kids were friends. She told me the reason why she put the double lock on the door is that somebody would open the door at night, and the reason she finally sold the house was because of all the weirdness surrounding it, including the piano. After that, we started looking for another place to live. It was during this time that really strange stuff started happening. My kids would feel like they were getting pushed up the stairs when going up. And then, one night, while my son was asleep in his room, he heard an old woman's raspy voice whisper from the closet, saying, I'm going to kill you. The kids would see shadows of figures going from our back porch area to a small building that belonged to the old house next door that was supposedly a candy store that burnt up inside years before but the outside remained undamaged. At this point, we moved. When I was pregnant, my kid's father and I stayed at his cousin's house for about a month before we moved into our apartment. It's an old farmhouse in a newly developed area of Warwick, Rhode Island. There are farms and woods in one direction and a small town in the other. We were told when we moved in that the house had been built in the 1840s, which to me was super interesting until my kid's father, I'll call him Brian, remarked at how the stairs seemed awfully dark and creepy for the middle of the day. And when I looked, he was right. It gave off such a sinister vibe. We slept in the living room, and at night, we could see through the kitchen, and it was as if the stairs became this dark, uncomfortable void. When we brought this up to Brian's cousin and his wife, they proceeded to laugh and tell us stories of people being pushed down the stairs. I don't think they really believed in ghosts, and the husband was an abusive drunk and drug addict, so they had enough problems. That house was chaotic. The husband and wife clearly had serious issues, emotionally and financially. They had a six-year-old son who was afraid to sleep upstairs by himself because of the shadows. Great. After being in the house alone a couple of times and seeing genuine human figures out of the corner of my eye, or even better, black dots on the floor with what looked like long, spindly legs running, I was a little on edge. Every time you would look at these things, they would disappear. A few times, I would see a figure out of the corner of my eye, and I would look and see one of the family members who I hadn't heard come in. I think that freaked me out the most, because how can you explain to yourself seeing a person, and sometimes nothing being there, but other times you expect it to disappear, and it would in fact be a person. It was so weird and unsettling. Brian would say how sitting in one chair in the living room, you would want to look over your shoulder into the doorway, as if someone was coming down a set of stairs that used to be there. This also freaked me out, considering that I slept right near the doorway, and would often get a feeling of someone coming toward me. One day, Brian and I were the only two in the entire house. Facing one another about two feet away, face to face, we were talking as we usually do. Directly in the middle of us, we heard a woman's voice say, Shh. I asked if he had said that, and he stared at me with huge eyes and said, No. Did you? Then we laughed it off, as we were clearly talking too loud for the inhabitants, apparently. We eventually brought this up to the family, who included a second cousin living upstairs, and they confirmed that they too saw and felt things. They told us they assumed that the black voids that ran on the floor 
were just one of their dogs and ignored it if it wasn't. The cousin who lived upstairs said that the curtains to his closet often moved, like they were being pushed by a breeze or something. He chalked it up to being stoned or tired. There was no breeze. The wife told me that when they first moved in there, her son would see a man in a hat, but assumed that it was just his imagination. How could you live in a house so clearly haunted and just pass it off? The front of the house at night was avoided by basically everybody, as it was right where it felt like somebody was walking by that door frame at you in the living room. One night I didn't feel like walking all the way around this huge house to the car, so I walked as fast as I could to the car through the front door. I heard a deep growling coming from the side of the house. They owned three dogs, one of which was a bull mastiff. Too freaked out to call for her, I ran in, and to my horror, all three dogs were inside the house. Needless to say, I didn't use that entrance again. It was such an emotionally depressing house, and maybe me being pregnant, I was just more aware of everything, I don't really know. There were other weird things, but one of the last conversations that I had with one of the roommates was really interesting. The roommate was renting a back bedroom. It was down a long hall at the very end, the only door in this isolated hallway. I told her about Brian and I hearing the shh directly in the middle of us. She explained that she hears the same exact thing in the hallway. If she and her son were getting too loud, they would hear a woman say, shh. They were sure that it was the owner's young son sneaking into the hallway, but I'm not so sure. My old house was unbelievably haunted. That's what we've always thought. But honestly, I believe in my heart that there's something attached to my family. I have a reason to believe that, but that's a story for another time. Back to the house. My brother and sister were home alone. They were downstairs watching a movie when they heard a door upstairs slam shut. They ran upstairs to see what it was, only to find out that it was my bedroom door that had slammed shut. They opened the door and no one was there. My closet doors started subtly moving. They opened the doors to find out that my cross, which was inside of a shadow box, was flipped upside down. In case you don't know what a shadow box is, it's something that you put inside of a case with a big piece of glass in front of it, meaning that you can't physically touch the item inside of the box. So as to how that cross flipped over, no one will ever know. My family has always been kind of religious, so in that moment, they were both like, we're leaving, we are not staying here tonight. They went into the laundry room to get some things. In this house, our laundry room was in the garage, so they went to go back inside and the door slammed in their face. It was locked. They opened the garage door and went around to the front door. It was also locked. They checked the patio door, and that door was locked as well. Not being able to get into the house, they made the choice to call a locksmith. The locksmith came, but you know, in our area at least, locksmiths drive big yellow vans. But this guy pulled up in some old car. He came to our door and unlocked it in seconds. And then he started hitting on my sister, asking her if she wanted to go out for drinks while he's on the job. So my brother calls the company to complain, and also this guy charged my brother way too much money, so he complains about that too. He calls the company and says that the locksmith you just sent was not following protocol, blah blah blah. And here's the scary thing. They responded and said, Sir, we haven't even sent a locksmith out to you yet. So who the hell was the guy that was just at our house? We never did find out. A 
Okay, so this is weird. I was a skeptic for most of my life until I was around 23. A group of friends had stayed in an old house in southern Louisiana that was said to be haunted. The house was very old and there was a family cemetery in the backyard. The room that was said to have the most activity was the uppermost room. The maids of the house were so spooked by that particular room that they refused to clean it, leaving the owner to tend to it. I really didn't believe in things like spirits or ghosts, so I didn't mind sleeping there. Well, things got weird, quickly. The first day, the only things that were off were the lights, flickering slightly, only in the upstairs room, and the alarm clock constantly having to be reset as it kept going back to noon, as if it kept getting turned off. We chalked that up to the house being built in the 1910s and having dodgy wiring. We went to sleep and slept well. The next day, we decided to check out the family cemetery, just a small plot of land with maybe five or six graves. We walked around a bit and that was that. Well, that night, I began to have the most realistic and haunting dreams I've ever had in my life. They were vivid, sexual, dark, and above all, terrifying. When I woke up, I kept passing out, as though something was blocking my airway. I'd lose, then regain consciousness, all while trying to get out of that room. There was a voice in my head telling me to get out, and that whatever was on me couldn't get me outside the room. I crawled on my hands and knees, while trying to stay conscious, to the front door and down the stairs. About a third of the way down the staircase, I felt this relief, a massive weight removed that had been squeezing my entire ribcage. I could think clearly, without interference. I stayed on the couch the rest of the trip. The next day, when I went to move my things out of the room, I would begin to get dizzy if I stayed there for too long. When I'd go back downstairs, the dizziness would leave. I'm 32 years old, and this hasn't happened anywhere else since. Every house I've ever lived in has been haunted. When I was three, I lived in an old trailer with my grandparents and my mom. I went into my bedroom, which was the computer room with a mattress on the floor, to get something. When I looked around, I saw a man in the mirror. He was quite tall, had on old Coke bottle glasses, and was in a dress shirt with suspenders. But my reflection wasn't in the mirror. I ran out of there so quick. I also had really weird dreams in that house. After a huge fight with my mom and my mama, we left to go live in my mom's childhood house. That house is where I've had the most ghost encounters and developed anxiety, so I absolutely loved this house. Anyway, I was around four when we moved and seven when I saw my first ghost in that house. I was upstairs, and from my bathroom mirror, you could see the shower. All of a sudden, I looked at the mirror, and I saw three fingers sliding down the shower door. I ran downstairs to my mom, and to this day, I don't go upstairs or take showers there. The second time, I was downstairs, and I heard a big crash in the bathroom, as though a bunch of pots and pans had fallen. But all over the house, nothing had moved. After that, I moved out with my mom. My mama still lives there. I still hear footsteps upstairs, and in the night, someone is watching me. Currently, I live in a different house with my mom and her boyfriend, and it's a little different. I haven't seen anything, but there's been more things happening to objects. My mom had a crown royal bag, and one day the strings got mysteriously cut. Also, the most recent, I had a friend over and we were about to go to sleep when I noticed on my Polaroid camera, it's an antique from the 70s, that the handle had been cut. This happened about two weeks ago. About a year ago, I was texting my now ex-boyfriend 
and all of a sudden an Avon compact that was sitting in the middle of my desk flew off onto the floor. It's still in our texts to this day. And that's all of my ghost stories. Except, of course, for the countless times that I've felt somebody watching me and other things like that. I'm not really sure what to make of it. When I was little, we used to live in a house where so many weird things happened. I know so many people probably won't believe me, but honestly, I saw so many things in that home. My dolls would move and talk to me at night. My brother was in the shower when all the tiles flew off the wall. I would see animals and weird objects move. And once, my brother and I even saw what we believed to be an alien. It was just insane. Anyway, I grew up and believed that it was all imaginary friends and stuff like that. My brother still remembers the alien, but for the most part, I thought we were just kids. Recently, my cousins, who lived two houses down, were telling us that the man who now lives there has gone insane and walks up and down the street at 3 a.m. saying things like, the devil is coming. He wasn't like that when he first moved in. I brought this up to my mum, and it turns out we moved because the house was haunted. My parents had experienced horrible things there too, and eventually did some digging to find out that the house was built over an old church and a bunch of other things. Anyway, it was so creepy. For a couple of days, I have been hearing footsteps in the middle of the night, loud enough to wake me up. When I wake up, they suddenly disappear. This could be an auditory hallucination, but I'm damn sure I heard it. Spots in my house also suddenly turn cold when I'm home alone, like the kitchen. Also, my television has occasionally been flickering on and off for a couple of days. My two dogs also keep barking at random spots in my house and they seem agitated a lot. I can't get them to stop, even if I offer them treats. There's also just a terribly weird feeling in my own house. I don't have any audio or video evidence. If I get some, I'll let you know. But it's so freaking scary. I can't live in my own home without fear anymore. I'm usually skeptical when it comes to spirits and demons, but this has really got me convinced that something very odd is going on. There's no past history of paranormal activity in my house. No one's messed around with a Ouija board. I'm just so scared. I can't sleep or go places in my house without turning the lights on. If you have any idea what's going on, please let me know. I was around four, living in a house with my mom and my mom's boyfriend. It was around three in the morning, I think, when I had woken up because I had to pee. I walked outside of my room to see a woman in white standing in the stairway. My room was on the second floor. I ran into my little sister's room to tell her. She went out of her room and saw her too. We both ran back into my room and hid under my covers, terrified. This was 10 years ago, and a couple of weeks ago, she said that my mom and her boyfriend, now ex-boyfriend, had seen her too. For them, it was around midnight. They were asleep, and my mom had woken up to see a woman standing in her closet. She thought it was nothing, and her imagination was just playing tricks on her, so she went back to sleep. The next day, when my mom's boyfriend got back from work, he went and asked my mom if around 12, she had seen anything that looked like a woman in the closet. She and her boyfriend started freaking out. Now we know that the house next to ours was actually a Civil War hospital, and many people had died in that house. 
Other things happened in that house, too. When my little sister was a baby, she would always point to the glass and say, Look, woman. No one could see her, but now we think it was probably the same person we've all seen. The other thing is, my mom's boyfriend and his cousin had gone into our attic with a camera and began to record. When they came downstairs and showed the tape to my mom, they could see tens of orbs floating around in there. Things like that happened all the time. And while it was interesting, I'm glad I don't live there anymore.